These are the best Am I the Jerk stories of 2023, starting with the most upvoted post of the year. Am I the Jerk for bringing up my brother's premature birth at Christmas dinner to get my parents to shut up? I am a nurse practitioner and I am the primary care provider for a lot of the low risk maternity cases at the practice where I work. I also work hand in hand with the doctors and midwives to create a healthy maternity, birth and postpartum situation. My fiance is completing her residency. We live together and have for a few years now. We aren't in any hurry to get married. We originally had plans to do so a couple of years ago, but then we got really busy for two years. It is driving my very religious parents crazy that their youngest son is living in sin. I don't really care. I'm an adult and I do what I want. We're getting married in June. So we are visiting my parents for Christmas. The way it came together is this year, everyone is at my parents' house. So that's my folks, my three siblings, myself and fiance, and seven grandchildren. So 17 people. At dinner, my mum starts going on about how she is so glad that we are finally getting married and she won't be embarrassed at church anymore. And my dad says how proud he is of his three older kids who all either waited to get married before moving in together or got married right away after moving in together. My fiance was getting embarrassed and I was getting mad over this stupid argument we've had too many times and a family dinner was the last straw. I have asked them repeatedly to just accept that they cannot control how I live my life. I refuse to stay with them when I visit, even if I come alone. Hotels are just easier. So I started talking about a premature baby I had been reading about. It was almost three months premature and weighed about 1.6 pounds. It was super strong and healthy for being born so little and the NICU had high hopes for the baby doing well. My mum and dad both got deer in the headlights looks on their faces. Too bad, shouldn't have screwed around with my fiance's feelings. So I asked about my oldest brother. He was born almost four months premature. Is there a chance that we could check out the family album where we keep all the records of family births and stuff? I already know my brother was over nine pounds and almost 23 inches long when he was born. My grandmother told me all about it the first time my parents tried to shame me. The subject gets changed very fast. After supper, my parents told me that I should not try to embarrass them with private things that are not my concern. I told them that if I heard anything about my living arrangements ever again for the rest of my life, I would make sure to keep bringing up the fact that my mum was in her second trimester when they got married. My parents are mad at me for telling them how to behave in their own home, but my fiance is happy that they seem to be off the subject for good. So, am I the jerk? And with over 60,000 upvotes, that is the most popular post on r slash am I the jerk for 2023. And I think this comment sums up my own feelings towards this post. You're not the jerk. That was beautifully handled. You didn't call them out and embarrass them, but you stood your ground. I did laugh out loud when you said where you got your blackmail information. Grandma had that in her pocket for a long time, I'm guessing. Yeah, you know she's been sitting on that, ready to use it when the time is right. And that time was then. Congratulations on your upcoming wedding. Merry Christmas. And I hope you have a great new year. Am I the jerk for getting up from my chair in the middle of Christmas dinner and shouting, shut the F up about my body in response to my husband's observation. So ever since I had my son months ago, my husband has started making indirect comments about my body. He never says any hurtful words, but I find his observations, as he calls it, hurtful. For example, he'd see me wearing an old top and say, oh, that top used to look good on you, but not anymore though. Or when he looks at my waist and says, wow, didn't know your waist could get this wide. Basically, passive stuff that I try to ignore till it extended to friends and family. FYI, this went on for months and months and months. We went to Christmas celebration at his family's home. My sister-in-law complimented my floral maxi dress and my husband said, I agree, it looks nice on you. Though I have to admit that your waist could get smaller than this. Awkward silence took over. I was absolutely fuming and this was my last straw. So I got up from my chair in the middle of dinner and shouted at the top of my lungs, shut the F up about my body. He was absolutely speechless as his family stared while some others tried to get me to calm down. But the situation got more tense and dinner ended up being cut short. And my husband stormed off to his friend's place to spend the night upon leaving a very nasty text saying I embarrassed him and made a scene over an observation he made. He called me childish and told me to get therapy for my insecurity 
authorities instead of verbally abusing him and scaring his family now I feel like an absolute idiot jerk and like I ruined christmas for him and everybody with my oversensitivity So am I in the wrong? Well first thing to say is it's very clear that you're not the jerk in this story Are you mad and secondly these are not observations from your husband. They're not even passive aggressive They're just horrible insults to me. This guy just seems emotionally abusive He probably knows exactly what he's doing and is trying to put you down for whatever reason and it's just a disgusting man why are you with him? Am I the jerk for silently getting up and walking out of the restaurant during New Year's Eve dinner after I was told to pay for everyone at the table by my in-laws? I am a 32-year-old woman and I recently inherited a good amount of money from my mum. I keep the money in a separate account as I still haven't decided what to do with it and I didn't want it to go to waste. I noticed my husband constantly bringing up the inheritance money and making countless suggestions as to how I should spend it. Another thing is that he expects me to pay for nearly everything the past couple of weeks. For New Year's Eve, my husband and I I met up with his family at a restaurant to celebrate it was going fine until i found out that i was expected to pay for everyone at the table my husband's mum joked about paying for dinner out of my inheritance pocket which made me livid but i showed no reaction just silently paid for my own food and drinks then i got up and made my way out of the restaurant they were shouting after me like a crowd and my husband tried to get me to come back but i drove home he got back at 3 a.m yelling at me saying i was pathetic to get up and walk out on him and his family after they relied on me to pay for their food and thought i was gracious enough to do it but they were wrong he said i humiliated him and the family and that what i did was an attempt to get back at them for not being able to help mum when she was sick not true is all i'm gonna say he is mad and saying that i caused a huge rift between his family and me when it wouldn't have hurt me to pay for the celebratory dinner so am i the jerk again like the first story you're obviously not in the wrong here it's your money it's your inheritance and once again your husband and his family are very very strange let me get this straight your mum dies from an illness and the thing that your in-laws and your husband say is great now you can take us to dinner and spend money on us that it's just weird am i the jerk for telling my parents that they ruined new year's celebration after they kicked my husband out over a joke i've been married to my second husband mike for four years now he's a jokester and loves to crack jokes all the time he especially likes a joke with my brother ethan and his wife ethan used to be okay with it until he started complaining about mike taking it too far with his jokes some context about ethan he and his wife couldn't have kids so they adopted a boy joey two years ago Mike has been making silly, light-hearted jokes involving Joey's bio parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. I already talked to Mike, and let me tell you, he 100% means no harm and is just trying to get them to react. So, fast forward to New Year's Eve. My parents hosted a big celebratory dinner and Ethan and his wife came. While we were eating dinner, Mike decided to tell a knock-knock joke to Ethan. He said, knock-knock. Ethan laughed and said, who's there? Mike replied, Joey's bio parents then burst out laughing. Sorry, I've got to just interrupt here. That has to be one of the worst jokes that I've ever heard in my entire life. Like how, how is that funny? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, to be fair, it's got me laughing, but that's just because it's so stupid. Silence took over and Ethan's facial expressions changed. His wife called Mike an idiot, to which Mike replied with, hey, relax, it was just a joke. An argument ensued and dinner was paused. My parents suddenly told Mike to leave, which I thought was too harsh. I tried to speak to them and get them to calm down, but mum insisted that Mike leave. We left and Mike was complaining the whole time about how they overreacted. I called mum later and she told me Mike was out of line with his hurtful jokes about this touchy topic and told me that I was wrong for defending him and saying he was just joking. She said he ruined New Year's for the family, but I told her it was her and dad who ruined the celebrations for escalating the situation and kicking him out. I told her he could talk to them, but again, they were the ones who ruined New Year's celebration. She called me delusional for the statement and hung up. We haven't talked to them for days. I tried contacting Ethan, but no response. It's kind of like when someone says a really terrible offensive joke and then says no offense at the end, and then they think it's okay because they've added the no offense. Except in this story, there was no offense at the end. It was just honestly one of the worst jokes I've ever heard. Like, where is the humor in that? I know I said it halfway through, but honestly, <laughs> what part of that is funny? It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's pretty obvious to say this, but yeah, just because you find something funny doesn't mean it's not offending someone else. It's not about how you find the joke you're telling. It's about, you know, if the person you're telling it to finds it funny. It's so weird. Genuinely the worst joke I've probably ever heard. And yeah, needless to say, in this story, your husband is obviously the jerk and so are you for defending him. Am I the jerk for putting parental controls on my TV and royally angering my father-in-law? 
I live with my wife. We have two kids, an eight-year-old boy and a six-year-old girl. My wife's parents are staying with us temporarily as their home is having some serious repairs after a freak accident. It wasn't their fault and luckily they had insurance. The repairs should be completed in two months from now. I don't really get along with my in-laws, especially my father-in-law, but I agreed to let them stay because I thought the time would fly by and it wouldn't be that bad. But I'm posting here, so I guess I was wrong. My mother-in-law doesn't have a job, and my father-in-law works late shifts until around 11 p.m. When he gets home, they'll watch YouTube in the living room and play music at a loud volume with our speaker system. It's not college house party bass tearing apart the walls loud, but it's still loud. My kids are not light sleepers, but this wakes them up. Then they go wake me up because they want me to make it stop. My kids need to be rested for school and I need to get up in the morning to drop them off and go to work. My wife works overnight shifts, so she doesn't witness this. I've tried to talk to my mother and father-in-law about it and ask that they please keep the noise down after my kids' bedtime, which is half past eight. I don't expect complete silence, but I really don't think they need to have the TV on loud late at night. My father-in-law argued with me and said that he doesn't finish work until 11 p.m., so I'm basically expecting him not to do the things that he enjoys after work. I told him he can do it before work or on his days off, or it's tough. He complained to my wife, who's now taking his side and saying that the kids need to learn how to sleep through a bit of everyday noise. I told her it's not everyday noise and that he and my mother-in-law are being excessively noisy and inconsiderate. She's just not there to see it. My father-in-law has been sending me links to buy earplugs for the kids. I've gotten really fed up with this. It's not my in-law's house and they're staying with us as guests and I think they're being really selfish. I decided to put parental controls on the TV so that my in-laws can't use it after half past eight until 6 a.m. the next day. Between those times, the TV cannot be used without putting in the password and only I know it. This doesn't affect my wife as she doesn't get off work until 6 a.m. and isn't normally home until 6.20ish. My father-in-law is now incredibly angry with me and said that I'm acting like a child and keeps pestering me, demanding the password. My wife is also mad at me for upsetting her dad. I'm just so annoyed at this whole situation and I'm sick of hearing about it. So I just want to know if I'm morally in the clear. OP, of course you're in the clear. As you said right from the beginning, it's your house. And that is as simple as it gets. They are guests in your home. I don't care if they're in-laws or not. They are still guests in your home and therefore they have to respect your rules. Saying that the kids should just get earplugs or sleep through a little bit of noise is crazy. Like that is ridiculous. I get it. A little bit of chat here and there is all right. The TV on a very low volume. Fair enough. But it is 11 o'clock on a school night for your kids in their home. That's not really fair. Ultimately, if they don't like the rules that you've set in your own house and they can go and stay in a motel or something like there's no need for them to be there, especially given that you're giving them the house for free, right? They're staying with you, I presume, for free. It's strange that your wife is backing them up this much when her own children are being affected by this. Overall, get them gone. You are not the jerk. Am I the jerk for snitching and causing my friend to lose her scholarship dream college acceptance? I, a 19-year-old woman, am a sophomore in college, and I have a friend, Tia, who is in high school and applying for colleges and scholarships. I helped her throughout the college process, and she ended up getting in early action to her top college, and she got a full scholarship. I was happy for her, until recently. I was talking to a mutual friend of ours and she started gushing about how Tia's essay was so heartfelt and beautiful. I asked to see it because I thought she'd just forgotten to show me. She showed me many of her essay drafts. But as I was reading it, I was completely taken aback. This essay was one of my college essay drafts, which I'd shown to Tia for reference on writing techniques only. I made this clear. I was livid. The essay was really personal and she barely even tweaked it up. It was almost entirely copied and pasted. I trusted her with it and this is what she did. In a fit of rage, I gathered all the evidence of me helping her with the college process, including evidence of me sending the specific essay to her and I showed it to the school. She not only lost her scholarship, but she also lost her seat at the school. Now people are calling me dramatic and shaming me for robbing her of her education. She's the only person in her family to get into college and receive an academic and athletic scholarship so everyone was rooting for her including me at one time and while i didn't expect the outcome to be so severe it was right now i feel bad i feel terrible i feel like she took advantage of me but i didn't want to be the cause of something so horrible i did myself a justice but at the cost of someone's dreams now i'm wondering if what i did was justified or not so am i the jerk 
Now, this one I think is actually quite a tough one. The easy answer here is just to quickly say, no, of course you're not. You're, you're in the right. She stole your essay. You trusted her and she betrayed your trust. She deserves all the punishment in the world. And I get that. I really do. However, does the punishment of her completely losing her dream spot, her scholarship, her education, etc., really justify the crime of copying one essay? I'm not entirely sure that it does. For me, it depends on the other stuff that she did. Was that all copied as well? How heavily was that referenced? How much was it her own work? Because if it was just this one essay that she copied, yes, for you op i understand that's a horrible situation and it would feel terrible and of course you need there to be some repercussions for your own sake but if it was just that one this does seem a little bit too far to me and of course you could never have known that this was going to happen and she was going to be kicked out so fair enough if you wanted to go ahead and do what you did i do get that from your personal point of view it just seems a little bit harsh for me. That's all. I mean, look, I'm not surprised. I'm just reading through the comments here. And the majority are saying that OP is not the jerk and that she plagiarized and, you know, you can't do that to get into college, etc., etc. It all makes sense to me. It does. I just think, come on, everyone's copied at some point, haven't they? Let's be honest with each other. Everyone's done it. It's only one thing. Is it really that bad? Am I the jerk for not defending my boyfriend when my brother asked him to leave? My boyfriend, Ryan, likes to help others. He's the type of guy who would give a coworker money for their rent or buy groceries for our neighbor. However, he can take it too far at times. He often tries to help people without asking if they need or want his help. Every year, my brother Paul and his wife, Lily, host a holiday dinner. This year, Ryan attended for the first time. Before we left for their house, I told Ryan that Lily was legally blind and had been her entire life. She knew what she could and could not do. I told Ryan to only help Lily if she asked for help. We arrived early so I could help Paul and Lily cook. While we were cooking, Ryan kept telling Lily things like, Lily, if you're looking for the soul, it's to your right. Or, Lily, don't put that there. It's too close to the edge. Lily and Paul both told him that while his commentary was somewhat helpful, it was completely unnecessary. Still, Ryan did not stop. However, things became tense when Lily went to go and chop vegetables. When she pulled out a knife, Ryan stopped her and asked if he could take over because he didn't want Lily to hurt herself. Lily said she'd be fine, but Ryan insisted that she give him the knife. Finally, Paul got annoyed and told Ryan to stop. Ryan did stop, but he kept hovering over Lily while she was chopping. I asked Ryan to sit down until dinner was ready, but Ryan insisted that he just wanted to help. Finally, Lily asked him and I to help set the table and greet people arriving. We did, but things were still tense. I did pull Ryan to the side and reminded him again to only help Lily if she asked for it. He agreed, but I could tell that he was still upset. Everything finally boiled over after dinner. My nieces, who are five and three years old, have a game they love to play with their mother. They will hand Lily something and Lily would have to guess what it is. Lily would sometimes make a couple of clearly outrageous guesses, like saying an egg is an elephant or a shoe to make her daughters laugh. After dinner, the eldest handed Lily the salt shaker. When Lily guessed it was a phone, Ryan piped up and said it was a salt shaker. Lily laughed it off and explained the game to Ryan, but I could see that she was annoyed. My niece then handed Lily a coin. When Lily guessed incorrectly, Ryan loudly told Lily it was a coin. This was apparently the last straw for Paul. Paul demanded that Ryan leave since he clearly couldn't respect Lily. Ryan insisted that he was trying to be helpful. However, Lily said it was probably best if Ryan and I left. I quickly gathered up our things and managed to convince Ryan to leave. Ryan is currently angry at me. He said I should have defended him, especially since I knew he was only being helpful. He also insisted that I should have stood up against Paul's overreaction. Those are Ryan's words. I'm now wondering if I should have defended Ryan. So, am I the jerk? No, you're definitely not in the wrong, but I would say that the thing that you are wrong about is calling Ryan helpful in the first place. I don't think this is helpful at all. This is the opposite of helpful. If you get someone that is so helpful that they do things that are just not helpful at all, and if anything are actually really offensive to someone else, then that is not helpful. And even when they're told multiple times to stop doing something and they continue to do it, then that is the opposite of helpful. That's not being too helpful. That is being unhelpful. I'm not sure what's going on here with Ryan and his personality, but I feel like he knows what he's doing, right? You can't be too helpful to the extent that you keep trying to do something and help out when you're being explicitly told stop doing that that doesn't make any sense to me like he sounds insufferable right he wasn't being nice at any point during this i mean maybe at the start fine when he didn't get it and even though you told him about lily being blind and being okay with what she can and can't do 
fine. Give him a little bit of leeway. After you tell him, he just becomes super patronizing. And I completely agree with Paul. Get him gone. Because Lily was clearly getting annoyed and it was just ruining the entire experience. Am I the jerk for laughing at my niece's gifts? My 12-year-old niece is really into arts and crafts and recently got into crocheting. Before Christmas, she told me that she had a surprise gift for me and seemed really excited about it. I told her I was really looking forward to it as well and I prepared her gift myself, which was actually art supplies. On Christmas, when we had our family gathering, she brought me her gift and was super excited for me to open it. When I opened it, I saw a crocheted animal, but if I'm being honest, it looked really, really bad. To give you an idea of what it looked like, imagine something from r slash bad taxidermy, but in crochet form. I couldn't help but burst out laughing, and I couldn't stop laughing no matter how hard I tried to suppress it. So I had to excuse myself to go to the washroom where I locked myself for nearly 10 minutes. When I came out, my niece was in tears with her parents trying to console her. And I apologized profusely and told her that I really liked her gift, but she kept crying and shouting at me, calling me a liar and that she sucked at art. My niece avoided me for the vast majority of the party after that. I tried to make her feel better by displaying her gift on my living room cabinet, but my wife pulled me aside later in the day and told me to take it down after the party because it was, in her words, really ugly and made her uncomfortable. Surprisingly, all the adults were very understanding of my situation, but I feel really bad because I feel like I destroyed my niece's confidence and I'm not sure how I can make it up to her. Yeah, you should feel bad and yeah, you did destroy her confidence. I don't think that any sane person in that situation would laugh, especially not for 10 minutes. If you can see the joy and excitement in a young person's face about giving you literally anything, let alone something that they've spent hard graft and time working on for you, even if it's completely so embarrassingly awful, you don't laugh. You say, wow, that's amazing. You accept it. And then maybe you joke about it later with the adults if you really want to. But you don't laugh right then and there in their face about something that they've gifted you. That is shocking form. Am I the jerk for leaving my babies inside by themselves? I am a 20 year old mother of triplets who are only two months old. I never expected ever in my life that I would be a mother to triplets. So when I first became pregnant, it was definitely the last thing on my mind. I'm home with my babies all day long and I had to even transfer my education to online. Sometimes I just need some fresh air, especially when I can't get them to stop crying and I find myself getting super frustrated to the point of tears. It's honestly so hard and the dad isn't here to help as he's either at work or at school. My fiance's parents rented us a main floor apartment. So when I step outside, I'm literally just sitting on the chair right beside the door Plus I have a baby monitor set up in their room and it has a camera on it I can literally see them and hear them So if anything happened, i'd be able to quickly get to them being able to step outside for a few minutes to take a breather Is really important to me because I start to have mini panic attacks when I can't get them to stop crying And I get really frustrated because I just feel super overwhelmed being able to go outside just gives me a chance to calm down. My fiance came home to me sitting outside while the babies were crying and freaked out on me, calling me a horrible mum and a bunch of other names that I'm not gonna list here. He thinks that I was being super neglectful and putting the babies in harm's way. And he even told his parents. And now everyone seems to be really against me. I grew up in the system. My fiance's family is the only family I've ever known. So it breaks my heart that they're so upset with me. But I really don't think I was doing anything wrong or putting my babies in harm's way. But they seem to think otherwise. So here I am wondering if I should apologize for my actions or if I'm the jerk in this situation. Okay, strong start. For me, no, you're not the jerk here. I kind of get it from your husband's perspective a little bit, but you have to be able to have at least one or two minutes rest. You can't just look after your children 24-7, like be in the same room as them 24-7 is what I'm trying to say. The truth is, you still got them on the baby monitor. You're right outside in case anything was to happen. Being in the room or being outside looking on a monitor doesn't really change anything. And as you've said, it's very important for your anxiety. You're having mini panic attacks. You need to sort something out. It's a lot of stress and you have a few minutes rest. That's okay with me. Am I the jerk for wanting hot food? Yesterday, I went ice skating with my girlfriend. Tuesday is one of her days for dinner, so she made chicken salad. When I saw the chicken salad, I admit I made a face. She was like, what? What's the problem? I said that we were outside in the cold all afternoon and I wasn't really in the mood for cold food. She said we're inside, the heat is set to 74 and we're both wearing warm, dry clothes. So it's plenty warm enough to eat salad. I said, sure, but I just wanted something warm to heat me up on the inside. She said that was ridiculous. 
because my internal temperature is in the 90s and my insides are plenty hot. At this point, we were going in circles. So I said I was just going to heat up some soup and told her to go ahead and start eating and I'd be back in a few minutes. When I came out of the kitchen with my soup, she was clearly upset and she asked how I would feel if she refused to eat what I made tomorrow, which is today. I said I wouldn't care and she said that was BS because it's rude to turn your nose up as something someone made for you. So was I the jerk for not wanting cold salad after being cold all day? Yeah, your girlfriend is completely right. Like, she's absolutely correct. If she did the same thing to you, you would be very annoyed. It's just a fact. And you saying that you wouldn't care is BS. She is correct once again. It doesn't matter what she makes, and it doesn't matter what you really like, to be honest. The fact that she's spent time making you food, and you just throw it back in her face and do your own thing, yeah, it's very rude, and you are the jerk. Simple as that. Am I the jerk for moving my son into a rental apartment after finding out that his dad's been cancelling his job applications? My son, Aiden, who is 23, moved back in with us upon graduating college as my husband wanted my husband's original plan was to have aiden live with us for free but stay home and help with his disabled younger brother who is 16. aiden started complaining about needing money and wanted to find a job my husband was against this and even offered to double his allowance but aiden was growing tired of staying at home so he began looking for jobs here and there for over a year but none of his job applications came through He just apply and they never got back to him. We were confused by this until recently. I found out that my husband was behind all the job applications being cancelled. He'd wait until Aiden applied, then he'd proceed to cancel the application by impersonating him and using his email. I blew up at him at this, but his justification is that he's just trying to make sure that our younger son is cared for by Aiden. And he said that Aiden has been a big help and him getting a job will affect his care for his brother. I went ahead and rented an apartment for Aiden and told him to stay there until he finds a job and starts paying for it himself. Aiden was hurt upon knowing what his dad did. My husband was livid when he found out. He called me unhinged and said that I was separating the boys and teaching Aiden to become selfish and care more about a job than family. He also said it was a huge decision for me to rent an apartment without even running it with him. He's been giving me hell about it and is calling me a terrible mother for encouraging Aiden to be selfish and self-centered. He said I needed to see and understand why he did what he did. To be honest, I don't even want to answer the question of are you the jerk here, really? Because the main thing is, your husband is very weird. Aiden's dad, that is. What's he doing? Seriously, what's he doing? Does he really think it's worth jeopardizing the future of one of his sons just for the other one? I get it. The 16-year-old is going to take a lot more care and obviously, you know, attention than the 23-year-old. But that shouldn't mean that you force a 23-year-old to not live their life just to look after his younger brother. The fact is, he's been doing it for a long time anyway. He's 23 now. He needs to go and live his own life. And ultimately, a 16-year-old has two parents that can look after him, I'm sure. I don't think you should force Aiden to not move out, not get a job. Simple as that. Am I the jerk for pulling my pants down and showing my husband my underwear after he insisted that I was on my period when I wasn't? My husband has a bad habit of blaming my behavior or reactions on my period. For example, when we argue, he'd say, I won't argue anymore since you tend to act crazy when you're on your period. Or even say, I know you didn't mean to do or say that, but couldn't help it since it's that time of the month for you. It's so irritating and it prevents me from being allowed to express myself. It happened again last night at the dinner table. We had an argument about him forgetting to fill my car with gas after he used it. And when I expressed my frustration, he said, we're not going to talk about this now since you appear to be on your period. I said that I was not on my period and that this was just me feeling frustrated with him. But he insisted that he won't talk about this then and insisted he won't hear what I had to say since you must be on your period since you're being irrational during this argument. I snapped. I'd had enough. So I got up, stood in front of him while he was still eating and pulled down my pants to show him my underwear. He made a grossed out face and shouted, Frick, that's nasty. I'm eating my dang dinner. We had a full-blown argument and he said I acted horribly and ruined his appetite by putting that nasty move. He told me to grow up and stop being spiteful over nothing. He keeps saying I grossed him out during dinner and made him go to bed hungry. So, am I the jerk? Did I overreact? Once again, I'm not entirely sure what's going on in this episode, but we just seem to have a lot of strange men. Maybe that's men in general. What can I say? Uh, But in all seriousness... This guy's very weird. Doesn't even matter if you're the jerk or not in this spot. Get rid of him. Like the weirdest guy ever. I don't understand. Like, how do you actually marry someone that says, oh, I can't have an argument with you because you're on your period? Like, if I was a girl, I wouldn't marry someone who said that. I'd be like, I wouldn't even, they wouldn't even be my boyfriend or girl. Like, you know, 
I just wouldn't be with them. You know, maybe it's great in bed. I don't know. Just seems very odd and I would definitely sack him off. Am I the jerk for showing up to my husband's doctor's appointment? My husband has been dealing with some health issues the past few weeks and has been frequently visiting the doctor. I asked if I could go with him, but he refused, saying it wouldn't be necessary. When I asked why he wouldn't want me with him, he said he felt more comfortable having privacy with his doctor. I jokingly asked if his doctor was a woman and he glanced at me. I anticipated his next doctor's appointment and decided to go and meet him there. He went and 10 minutes later, I entered the office. I identified myself as his wife and he was shocked when he saw me. I greeted his doctor, a man, lol, and we talked, but my husband refused to even look my way and refused to speak as well. We left the office together and he went off on me in the car, saying I shouldn't have followed him and came into the doctor's office after he asked me for some privacy. I said it was all right. I'm his wife. I already know what his issues are and I just wanted to show support. He said I overstepped his one boundary and refused to respect his wish and made him more stressed than he already is in these hard times that he's going through. I thought he overreacted, but am I the jerk? Finally, a woman in the wrong. It's good to see because I was getting a little bit worried there about all the men doing terrible things. The one thing that your husband has said to you is please do not come to my doctor's appointment. And also your health is literally the most private thing, right? And I get it. He's your husband, but he's genuinely said to you this one thing I would like to do privately and you've disrespected him. So yes, you're the jerk. Like, what are you even going there for? I don't really understand. Like, what's the point? Just you said afterwards that you speak to him about it and you know what the issue is. So if you know what the issue is, why are you then going to the doctor's appointment to speak to his doctor? It just sounds like you're very insecure, to be honest, because you're saying, oh, is the doctor a girl? I mean, maybe that's the main reason because your husband's telling everything anyway. Very odd behavior. You're the jerk. Am I the jerk for prioritizing my son's dog over my wife's pregnancy. When my son, who is now 14, was eight years old, we got a dog. He's half Great Dane and half some dog my friend's dog met during an unauthorized absence. My son loves this dog and does all the care for him, except vet stuff, and is a very responsible dog owner. This dog is pretty much his best friend. My wife is 12 weeks pregnant, and ever since we confirmed the pregnancy, she's been acting weird around the dog. She avoids him, puts her hand over her stomach when he's around, and jolts whenever he makes noise. Today, she told me she wants to rehome the dog. I asked her what she was talking about. She said she's been having anxiety that he will jump on her. This is completely unreasonable. He doesn't jump on people. We train him not to jump on people or run into people very young because he's half Great Dane. And I felt this was important for all dogs, but especially one who could possibly grow to such a large size, which he did. There is no reason for her to think the dog will jump on her. She said there's no way to know for sure that the dog won't jump on her. And if he does, our baby could be hurt. This dog has never so much as growled at her. She said that even if the dog doesn't jump on her, her anxiety about it is bad for her health. She said she needs the dog elsewhere for her safety and the babies. I told her that there was no way. My son got this dog right after he lost his mum and imprinted on him hard. Sometimes I think he loves the dog more than me. I'm not taking his dog. The dog didn't do anything. My wife said that I am prioritizing the dog over her pregnancy. The dog isn't a threat to her pregnancy. If this were any other unreasonable request, I would do it just because she's pregnant. I just can't break my son's heart over a fear she has that makes no sense. So am I being a jerk? Now, I think the title of this one, Am I the Jerk for Prioritizing My Son's Dog Over My Wife's Pregnancy, is a little bit, you know, cheeky because it sounds way worse than it actually is. You're not really prioritizing your son's dog over your wife's pregnancy. Yes, in in literal senses you are, but in reality, you're prioritizing your son and the amazing bond that he has with this dog, your dog, who is your best friend, the dog who's done nothing wrong over your wife's pregnancy. And that's a difference. But for your wife, fair enough. I I get it. Maybe she has just got a little bit anxious because there's a dog roaming around and she's pregnant. And that is absolutely completely fair, by the way. For me, it doesn't necessarily even matter if the dog has never done anything like that in the past before, because you said like, yeah, it is unreasonable to think that they will do that. But unreasonable thoughts are sometimes justified. And if it's going to make her more comfortable, I get why she's thinking that way. I don't know about rehoming though. That seems very unfair. However, what I will say is that she is jeopardizing your son and his future and his mental well-being. Now, does she think that's fair? Because I certainly don't. And if it's all right, realistically as it is, then there's no reason to change anything. You've got to think of the damage that that could do to your son if you were to take away his best friend. Uh, You know what? I've actually just seen a great point in the comments, by the way. Not the jerk. Has she stopped driving? Has she started using a wheelchair so she won't fall? Is she refusing to use the stairs? If you kind of get what this comment is saying, is she doing lots of other things to protect the baby? No, 
it's very unlikely. So why has she just changed her mind on the dog? I don't know. Maybe something's gone wrong there. Again, I genuinely don't mind her thinking this way because look, she's pregnant. She's literally raising a child inside of her. If you want to, you know, take precautions, fine. But it is weird that she's just having this one thing about the dog and seemingly nothing else in her life. Am I the jerk for calling my boyfriend dumb for boiling salmon? So this happened yesterday. I came home from work in the evening and saw something cooking on the stove. I asked my boyfriend and he said he was boiling salmon. I was taken aback, like completely. I asked him to repeat what he said and he so casually said it again. I was like, ooh, who boils salmon? He made a face and didn't reply. I told him it wasn't right and that I'd never heard of salmon being boiled, like egg and water type of boiling. He said it was all right and he likes it cooked that way. I called him dumb for this, to which he reacted by snapping and saying, who the frick says I can't boil salmon? I said, um, common sense? He replied, screw common sense. I bet it's no longer common sense to eat an apple from an apple tree in this time and age. We had an argument and he started ignoring me, saying he felt hurt and disrespected when I called him dumb and is now waiting for an apology. So, am I the jerk? Now look, as you can probably tell by looking at me or listening to me, I am a very, very accomplished chef. Let's just say that. And even I would never boil salmon. How stupid is that? Said no one ever. Like, who cares? You know, who actually cares how you cook salmon? I don't know if you can boil salmon. I haven't done it personally. However, if it actually cooks the food and it's edible, then you can do it. Maybe it doesn't taste great. I don't know. Any budding chefs in the comments, let me know. For me, I don't know why you'd even care. Like, why, why do you care that a salmon's being boiled? If it tastes nice, it tastes nice. Simple as that. Would I be the jerk if I didn't let my husband attend the baby shower or birth of our child? My husband and I have a three-year-old daughter. He was happy when I told him she was a girl. We're having another and when I had my ultrasound, I was told it was another girl. Again, my husband was happy. It turns out though that I was told wrong and it's actually a boy we're having and my husband has now freaked out in excitement. His reaction to us having a boy was nothing like either of his reactions to having a girl. He was actually jumping around and yelling. He immediately called all his friends and family. He kept hugging and swinging our daughter around telling her she's getting a brother. I confronted him about not being this excited about having girls. And he said, because I wanted a boy. I got so angry. I don't want him at the baby shower. I guess it's not really a baby shower as we're not asking for anything, but still, or the birth. He thought I was kidding at first, but once he realized I was serious, he got really upset and started an argument over it. So would I be the jerk if I didn't let him attend the baby shower or birth? Well then, I think we've come to our most unreasonable jerk of this episode so far. You can't come to the birth of our baby because you showed excitement at its gender. Does that make any sense? Now, I would understand it if he'd been very disappointed at having a girl and was always like, oh, I wanted a boy. I didn't want a girl in the first place, etc., etc." However, having a preference between a boy and a girl, I think is completely fine. Like, let's be honest, it's natural. You're probably going to lean one way or the other. Like, if we're being completely honest, if you really thought about it, you're probably like, uh, I don't really mind, but maybe 51% a boy, maybe 51% a girl, you know, up to you. However, he loves your daughter. He was very happy at having another girl, but a little bit more happy at having a boy. He's already got a girl as well. Remember that. So maybe that makes a difference. I don't know. I mean, I'm so excited. I've just, I've just chinned my mic. Get me an invite to the baby shower. That's all I'll say. Am I the jerk for showing up at my ex's wedding in a pretty dress? My ex and I had a peaceful divorce. We co-parent our three children together and there haven't really been many issues. My ex is getting married to stephanie i like stephanie she's been great with my kids and makes my ex happy my ex invited me to their wedding and i was happy for him it was my day with the kids so it made sense for me to come was his reasoning when i arrived at the wedding though stephanie thanked me for dropping the kids off and then brushed me off we'd never had any issues before i explained that i was going to stay for the reception and she was very upset I was confused because I assumed she knew I'd be in attendance. It turned out she didn't consider that I'd actually accept the invitation. I told her that I was invited, and since I took the two-hour drive, I'd be staying for the entire duration. She didn't like this response. Stephanie asked me to leave, and I stood my ground. She went on to complain about my dress upstaging hers. My ex and former mother-in-law helped her to calm down, and the wedding shortly began. I thought that was the end of it, but later, in private, Stephanie accused me of trying to ruin her special day. She's convinced that I wanted to show off and make the wedding about my divorce. She said it was rude for me to not leave after the bride requested it because it was her special day. I told her that I'm not responsible for her insecurities and once again reminded her that I have no interest in stealing my ex back. You know what? It is great to end an Am I the Jerk episode with a jerk. It just doesn't get any better than that. It's the whole point of the subreddit and this is why I love posts like this. How can you ever think that you're in the right here? You're just not. 
It's as simple as that. And I keep saying simple as that because it really is. Okay, apparently OP is actually posted. Just reading the comments here. She's actually posted the dress that she wore on her profile. Just going to get it up right here. Oh, a red wedding dress. I wonder why there was a problem. I mean, honestly, why do people say, oh, I didn't know what I did wrong. And then you look at what they actually wore and it's a vat. Obviously, there's going to be a problem here. It says beach wedding dress in the title. Only thing that we can do at this moment, guys, me and you together, I'll buy one, you buy the other. There's only two left in stock. Let's stop this from happening ever again. Am I the jerk for refusing to forgive my dad for breaking our deal? When I, a 17 year old man, was eight, my parents bought me a piano and signed me up for lessons. I was super excited because I love music. Over time, I kind of became known as the piano guy at school. I play at school concerts, accompany the school jazz choir, and play once a week for the residents at a couple of retirement homes in our town. When I was 15, I started to talk about quitting lessons, and my parents quickly tried to guilt me out of it. I told them I wanted to try other things, and that between piano and studying, I didn't have much time left for other extracurriculars. My dad proposed a deal. If if I kept playing and taking lessons until I reached level 10 RCM, Royal Conservatory of Music, and continued to keep my grades up at school, he would buy me a new car of my choice. I jumped at it and we shook hands on the deal. I should explain that my family is well off financially. I have a very privileged life, but I wouldn't say I've been spoiled. If I ever want a luxury item like a new phone or games console, I have to buy it myself with money that I've saved from summer and after school jobs. I should also explain that my dad's big on loopholes. When we compete, he always finds a way to win. And when I do, it doesn't count because of some loophole. It drives me nuts, but he thinks it's hilarious. Whenever I complain about him not playing fair, his answer is always the same. Life isn't fair. So because of our deal, I kept up with my lessons. I spent about one to two hours a day on piano while keeping my grades up. Last summer, I took my level nine RCM exams and passed, fulfilling my part of the deal. I told my dad I'd chosen the BMW X5 plug-in hybrid SUV. A couple of months ago, on my birthday, I came downstairs for breakfast and my dad told me there was a surprise waiting for me in the garage. I ran out and sitting in the middle of the floor was a 124th scale toy BMW X5. My dad burst out laughing and said, A deal's a deal. So as promised, here is your brand new BMW. My heart absolutely broke. I asked if he was being serious and he said I couldn't seriously have expected him to buy a 17 year old, a real brand new BMW and that we could discuss getting me a reasonably priced used car. I said we had a deal and I fulfilled my end of it. He said he did too, since I never said that the car had to be full size and drivable. I said he wasn't being fair. His response, life isn't fair. Ever since this happened, I've been distant with my dad. I honestly feel like he betrayed my trust and that he deliberately made a fool out of me. He keeps bringing up the idea of a used car, but I told him I'm not interested, which I admit is kind of petty. I have enough money saved that I can buy a cheap used car myself. And I just feel like if I accept one from him now, it's like saying that breaking his promise didn't matter and that he didn't do anything wrong. So, am I the jerk? No, absolutely not. That's not even up for discussion. A promise is a promise. It doesn't matter what he said. If that man, your father, cannot keep his word, then he doesn't deserve your respect. It's as simple as that, in my opinion. How about this? One day when you're older and he wants you to come home for Christmas or something like that, you say, sure, I'll be there. Then just mail him a picture of you and say, oh, there I am. Uh, you didn't specify that I didn't actually have to be there physically. I'm there in spirit in a photo frame. It's a weird analogy. But that's kind of what's going on here, right? Like you said you'd do something and you use some stupid loophole to get away with it when in reality, you're just being an idiot. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that is an expensive car for a 17 year old, but it is also what you said. So how about just don't say it in the first place and don't make empty promises. Am I the jerk for calling my sister cruel for her tattoo idea? My sister is 28 and I'm a 26 year old man. My sister, Nikki, has always had a strange relationship with our parents, especially my mum. I'm clearly not privy to the reasons because things are fine with me and my parents. When Nikki went to college, she met her creative writing professor as a freshman and they got close immediately. They would do a lot together and work closely on a few different writing projects. Nikki never specifically said this, but it was obvious to anyone who saw them interact that they had a substitute mother-daughter type relationship which hurt my mum a lot to see. I always thought she'd grow out of it or that the prof would move on, but 10 years later, they were still very close. 
About a month ago, the professor died unexpectedly and it devastated Nikki. She was really depressed over the holidays, which of course was all in front of my mum and was a difficult reminder that Nikki loved the prof as a mother way more than she ever loved my mum as a mother. She still talks to my parents and stuff and they don't fight or anything, but Nikki is very distant and doesn't tell them anything about her life beyond the bare minimum. My mum tried to comfort Nikki, but Nikki was doing her distant thing and didn't want comfort. Something unfortunate that happened to Nikki is that when she got the call that she died, she was brewing tea and in the shock of the news she spilled boiling water on her arm which burned her kind of badly on her wrist i think the burn was like on the borderline of second and third degree and definitely still looked pretty rough during the holidays nikki said it was especially hard because in addition to the physical pain every time she looks at it she's reminded of the moment she found out the prof died which i totally get I was on FaceTime with Nikki and she said she talked to her tattoo artist friend who said that the burn should be able to heal well enough to get a tattoo over it. Nikki then excitedly told me about her idea, which is a type of flower that the prof gave her a bouquet of for her undergrad graduation. My mum was so embarrassed that day because she didn't get Nikki flowers, but the prof did. And Nikki was parading them around so happy and it was a reminder of their connection. I guess Nikki and the prof exchanged these flowers for every special occasion, like birthdays, etc. So now she wants to get a decent size tattoo and a highly visible spot of something that will remind everyone of the prof i told nikki that this seemed really cruel to my mum, who already feels cast aside and like she's in exile from nikki and that's without the constant permanent reminder nikki kind of scoffed and said i can't believe you think you have the right to tell me not to do this she called me a jerk and hung up and is still not talking to me except for a very brief text saying congrats for a promotion i just got my parents aren't commenting my dad said i should have just kept quiet even though he agrees and my mum made no comment but seemed grateful that i stood up for her i feel like i was just being protective of my mum, but am i the jerk all right i just had a look at the comments on reddit for this one because you know i'm always interested to see what people on reddit are saying before i give my opinion and i think we differ slightly a lot of the comments are saying that op you are the jerk in this situation and i get it i really do however i think that's a little bit too strong to actually call you the jerk i don't think you're in the wrong for this really i think in reality you're just misunderstanding your sister's situation because from your perspective i get it you feel like your sister is favoring someone else and that's unfair on your mum, who you have a good relationship and you don't quite understand it perhaps Perhaps, but in reality, you have to understand that your sister and your mum do not have anywhere near the same sort of relationship that you and your mum have. And in actuality, your sister has been very lucky in her life to have someone come in and replace her mum for that role because her mum, for whatever reason, hasn't been able to do it. Nonetheless, it's clear that this person played a massive role in your sister's life and getting a tattoo in that exact area, the timing of when you heard that person had died. Yeah, terrible, but yeah, a great thing to do. And I definitely wouldn't say that she shouldn't do that. Look, I get it from your perspective. It's nice to stick up for your mum and you probably don't get it. But from her point of view, that is probably maybe even the most important person in her life that's gone and she wants to remember them. Am I the jerk for not giving my daughter her education fund money? I am a 54-year-old man and I have two children, a 23-year-old daughter and 21-year-old son with my wife. When the kids were young, my parents set up education funds for both of them, which was very generous. My wife and I always expected our kids to attend college and then graduate school, as we'd done. I have a PhD, my wife has a master's. Because of this, we decided not to use the funds for our kids' undergrad degrees and didn't tell them about the money. My daughter has always been more into the liberal arts, while my son is more of a STEM guy. My wife and I worried about her ability to find a job, but she insisted on studying music and film in college. She was accepted to some top schools and chose to attend a rather expensive one, but she had scholarships to cover almost all of her tuition. Everything else, plus living expenses, was her responsibility. She lived in a very small apartment shared with friends in a not-so-nice area far from campus, but she was fine and learned how to budget effectively. After graduating, she luckily found a job that doesn't pay extremely well, but she enjoys and scrapped the idea of grad school. My son decided to do engineering and he also expressed that he had no interest in grad school. My wife and I were disappointed, but accepted it since at this point, he's already all set up with a very good job when he completes school. Since he did not receive as many scholarships as his sister, we decided to use his education fund to cover his tuition and living expenses. He was able to get a large and nice apartment of his own close to the school, which is important since his classes are so demanding and he needs a comfortable space to work. My daughter was confused and asked how he could afford this and he told her about the education fund. She called us and asked why she didn't have one and we told her she did, we just didn't use it because we hoped she would attend grad school. She seemed hurt by this and asked if there was any way she could have the money now. 
We explain that there would be a fee to simply withdraw the money for non-education uses, and if we chose to do that, it would belong to her grandparents, so they could put it towards their own use. She's been quiet and short when answering our texts, and hasn't answered our calls at all since then. I know that it seems unfair to her, but it's not really her money in the first place, and she's no longer in college. Plus, her brother only received it for educational purposes, and it wouldn't be right for her to just have it to spend now. So, am I the jerk? Now, I think it's pretty obvious in this spot that yes, OP, you are. However, OP has given us a couple of updates which we'll get to first before I give my overarching opinion. Update one. I understand the consensus is that my wife and I are the jerks. I texted my daughter to ask if she wanted us to withdraw the money for her and what she wanted to do. This was her response. I don't care. Maybe they can transfer it to their other grandchild, who is five, by the way, if the fee is seriously too much. I don't know about grad school. I haven't thought about it much recently. If I do apply, it wouldn't be for another couple years and i hadn't been counting on having any financial help in the first place so it really doesn't even matter thanks for asking though update two my wife and i are discussing our daughter's response and our next actions to resolve this situation for context my wife has always had a strained relationship with my daughter and did not approve of many of her life choices she believes we should take our daughter's words at face value and assume she no longer wants the money from some of the responses here, I fear that my daughter's response was out of resentment and I suggested taking out as much money as her brother was given so at least they received the same amount. Yes, that is the obvious thing to do here. She could use it responsibly towards rent, groceries, transportation, etc. or in some other way to further her career so it would still be for educational purposes in a sense. My wife, though, is standing firm in her opinion, and we will continue talking it through tomorrow. Many have asked about where my parents stand on this. At this point, they're not mentally aware enough to really participate in the discussion. They did know about our grad school stipulation, and they thought it was fine. They also knew that we took out some money for our son once we were certain he was not pursuing an advanced degree, and they were fine with that as well. They said it was our decision as parents what to do with our daughter's fund, and they would support whatever we decided for her. It wouldn't be useful to ask them what to do with it now, but I've always said that whatever is unused will go back to their care. I've tried to call my daughter with no luck, which is why I sent the text. Despite what many have said here, I hope this does not end our relationship. Well, mate, unless you fix up pretty quickly, there's a lot of danger that it might. I just don't understand how it took you such a long time to arrive at that conclusion that, yes, you should have at least given your daughter the same amount as you gave your son. I'll have to have a look back through it, but from what I could kind of gauge the first time reading it, it didn't even seem as if your son was fully using the money on education. He didn't go to grad school same as your daughter i don't really understand why there's a difference there okay looking back now fair enough you used it to cover his tuition but you also used it to cover his living expenses but you didn't use your daughter's education fund to cover her living expenses like off the rip that just doesn't seem fair to me i don't care if she's got scholarships for her tuition fees like she's clearly clever why would you punish that clever and hard working i must say you don't just get scholarships by being clever that's for sure imagine hearing that your parents could have financially helped you and then they just chose not to like that is brutal i'm sorry and yeah the more i think about it if you want to have any relationship ongoing with your daughter you need to at least just send her the money right now probably all of it I and mean, just send it to her and then hopefully she'll give you some form of forgiveness am i the jerk for posting the reasons that i excluded some people from my child free wedding my sister got married last summer she had a very elegant and beautiful wedding and reception planned it was child free she sent gracious notes to everyone who sent their regrets and thanked them for understanding her desires for her wedding and respect them enough to rsvp in the negative she also invited them to a party later that summer at her home if they wanted to take pictures with her and her wedding party in their fancy clothes i thought it was well handled and classy several people didn't understand the meaning of child free and brought their kids anyway one screamed through the ceremony and the mum would not leave the chapel because she did not want to cause a fuss. There were no extra places for them at the reception, so their parents had to share their food with them. The worst was the kid that wanted a cupcake off the table the wedding cake was on. He lost control and tipped the wedding cake onto the floor. My dad saved it, but there was a handprint on the lowest tier and a lot of cupcakes at the floor. All in all, it was four families that brought uninvited children. My wedding invitations just went out over Christmas. We're getting married in May. I know this is a long time, but we have a lot of out of town, country, and even continent guests we hope will come. We did not invite these four families to our wedding. We have a Facebook group for the wedding for people to share pictures and memories that we might put in the wedding video. They found out about the group and posted to my personal page about being excluded and asked why we're not having them. I messaged them privately and asked them to take down their posts and explain that my wedding was smaller and I wasn't having as many guests as my sister. They went public again and complained about me excluding them for no good reason. So I posted the receipts. 
I also posted a video my cousin sent me of the kid crying during the ceremony and the parents doing nothing. The video of the kid freaking out because he had to share trout for supper. The before and after pictures of the wedding cake table. And I also asked if they knew in advance that they were not supposed to bring their kids to the wedding. Then everyone started piling on. To them. I guess there was a lot of stuff I missed. Including one of them changing a kid on the table with the guest book because the closest bathroom didn't have a baby station. Now they're calling me a jerk for embarrassing them for having children and wanting to be part of family events. I said that they could not understand why rules were in place and that is why they were not invited. My uncle posted about how embarrassed he was that his daughter was one of these entitled jerks and offered to pay my sister for the cake that got wrecked. He'd been unable to attend and hadn't heard about the cake. So, am I the jerk? Absolutely not. Very simple one here. And to be honest, I'm kind of just getting a bit angry thinking about this. If your sister has gone through all that trouble to really politely say, look guys, you're our good friends. We do not want your children here. It's my wedding. It's our day. I've made this decision. Yeah, it sucks for you because your kids can't be here, but I've made this decision on one of the most important days of my life. Do not bring your kids. And she said this in a lovely way. And then four different families bring their children. How angry would you be? Especially given the fact that they then seem to ruin the event. I mean, the handprint on the cake, the cupcakes on the floor. It just sounds devastating. It's a real shame. So I completely get why you did what you did. And, and you do not want these people there. It's as simple as that. Ultimately, it's your wedding day. You decide who goes. And now for our final Am I the Jerk post of this episode. Am I the jerk for telling her to get over herself? I got a dog two years ago, a corgi, and she's very much so my sidekick. I've been with my fiance for five years. My fiance does like the dog, but she is currently pregnant and experiencing massive migraines and has been snapping at everything. So every morning when I get up, I find my fiance already awake and at the table relaxing. As soon as I get out of bed, my dog goes nuts. It's like super energy where she's running side Sideways, barking up a storm, jumping from the bed to the floor a million times, causing the apartment to shake because it's old as anything, etc. And I'll just sit there and sing made up songs to her and just screw around with her. It's pretty noisy and I can be loud. It's just my way of interacting with my pets. I also have ADHD, so I'm fully aware that I can be ridiculously loud and sometimes I simply forget to tone it down. My fiance has complained about it a few times and I will absolutely try to tone it down for a while. But as screwed up as it sounds, the second she stops complaining and it's out of sight, out of mind, I start doing it again. If I catch myself, I apologize immediately, but sometimes I don't even catch myself doing it. So she's been getting up earlier than normal because she says she needs peace and quiet away from you and the dog because she can't hear herself think when we get up. And then she starts getting migraines and being overall annoyed. But now she's complaining because I can sense her not in the bed anymore, probably after 20 minutes of her being gone and her warmth no longer being there. And then I'm wide awake and the dog senses it and you know. So she's now getting angry because she thinks I'm purposely not letting her have space and purposely annoying her with my behaviors. I'm not, truly, but it seems like it, I guess. I've tried just laying in bed for a while so she can relax, but I get stir crazy. And I also don't feel like I should have to stay in bed so she can be alone when I live here too. But she flipped this morning. I felt her sneaking out of bed this morning at 5 a.m. and tiptoe out of the room. I watched her sit at the table with her book. Well, the dog saw me awake and immediately goes ballistic, jumping on the bed, whining, barking, etc. She comes in and says, Will you guys calm down so I can have time to myself for once? I just side-eyed her because I'm getting annoyed at this point with her demands. She says, Well, I tell her to get over herself. Just because she's pregnant doesn't mean I have to change who I am or change how the household works or change my dynamic with my dog. She immediately left after telling me to go screw myself and won't answer my calls. She's been gone for six hours. Well then, a very interesting one to end, I've got to say, because up until that last little point, I genuinely didn't think that you were necessarily being a massive jerk, OP. It felt to me more like just a kind of conflict of character, and I was questioning more whether you two should be together in the first place, which, when you have a baby on the way, is a pretty crazy thing to say, but but uh, yeah, that was the opinion that I was kind of leaning towards. But after seeing what you said at the end, you're definitely the jerk. Like, you just didn't need to say any of that. Are you joking? You wouldn't change how you are or how you live because of your pregnancy girlfriend wife whoever she is that is very selfish surely when somebody is pregnant you have to concede some things and probably yeah not be as crazy loud around them give them their time etc whatever they want really uh, it's a bit weird to say that but overall i would say the main thing is you guys just 
don't really seem that compatible. You just seem completely different. Maybe it worked for you before and maybe it will work for you again in the future, but you need to find some sort of resolution and definitely give her the credit she deserves and favor her, especially during this time when she's pregnant. Like, are you nuts? Actually, to be honest, the more I think about it, the more that you really could do so much about this. Like, surely get up and then just leave the house. Go on a very long walk with your dog. Like, if you really cared and you were less selfish, you would find so many ways to get around this and you could find a very easy solution to come to, which would enable your girlfriend, your wife to, to have the time to herself and you to go and be loud and be crazy and your dog to go and, you know, exercise. Surely that's the solution. Train your dog, go on a dog walk. I don't know. Am I the jerk for telling my girlfriend that she needs to learn when to shut the frick up? I am a 24 year old man and I've been dating my girlfriend for about five months. Every other month, my grandmother hosts a large family dinner with all my close relatives. She encouraged me to invite my girlfriend over for the dinner yesterday. For some context, my entire family and I are black and my girlfriend is from a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant family. I was at the dinner yesterday and I went to go and hang out with my niece, who is seven, who I'm very fond of, and the rest of the kids to play Monopoly. My girlfriend tagged along. My niece was counting the play money to pass out to everyone and one of the other kids said something about how he wanted to be rich and get all the 500 bills my niece out of nowhere blurted out that she couldn't be rich because she's an n-word i was totally taken aback and i asked her who told her that apparently some bully at school said that to her on career day when they were sharing dream jobs and she said she wanted to be a rich president i told her that wasn't true at all and i hugged her and she started crying then my girlfriend jumped in and told my niece that it's really important to forgive the boy who said that because he probably wasn't trying to be mean and was just confused. I was totally shocked and I told her she needs to stop trying to justify what happened. She then tried to hush me and started baby talking my niece and said that she should also try to be nicer to all the kids at school because kindness goes both ways i was totally livid at this point and i pulled my girlfriend aside and quietly but angrily told her she needs to learn when to shut the frick up she started getting riled up at me and started rambling about how statistics are on her side i don't know what the heck she meant i wasn't really processing what she was saying but i told her to get out of my grandma's home and just leave already she drove me here in her car and i was planning to hitch a ride home with my brother this morning i got multiple calls from my girlfriend's sisters calling me an abusive and trashy idiot i know my words were harsh but i thought my girlfriend was talking in a disgusting manner to my niece so am i the jerk Okay then, an interesting start to the episode. Now look, don't get me wrong. You could have said this in a more polite way, of course. However, given the circumstances, I think you did the right thing. I mean, you're just right, aren't you? What on earth is she going on about? Someone has literally been racially abused at school, a kid, and you're saying, just be nice to everyone. Pretty much saying that it's their fault for getting bullied. Like, what is that logic? Also, if anything, the fact that you're saying this has happened more than once, not in this exact context, but you know, has happened like this before. Maybe she needs a strong reaction. Maybe she needs to be told to just shut the F up so that she'll listen once and for all and stop giving her stupid opinion when it's really not warranted and just not needed. Final question. Why is she your girlfriend? If my girlfriend did this, I'd be like, you are just so brain dead. We're done instantly. So maybe that's a step too far from, from my perspective, but that's just what I'm thinking here. Anyway, let's carry on. Am I the jerk for making our 17-year-old daughter clean our horse's stools against her will? We recently got two horses. My younger daughter, who was 13, wanted them as she's been learning to ride. My older daughter, the 17-year-old, was against them. She's much more princessy and didn't want to deal with the mess and chores that come with horses, but we told her it wouldn't be something she'd have to deal with and that her younger sister promised to take care of all of it. Well, recently, Recently, the older daughter has been disrespectful at home and staying out too late and her grades have been slipping We warned her to shape up but last week when we heard that she'd been needlessly insulting to her younger sister while I was out running errands I told her that she'd be cleaning out the stable each day for the next week as punishment and that her sister would get a break She got really upset and offended and said we promised she'd never have to go in there or have to scoop horse poop I said I promised it wouldn't be one of your chores of course But obviously a punishment is supposed to be something out Outside of your normal chores and something you won't like and I thought it was perfectly fair here She's been doing it three days now But seems to be very resentful of our broken promise acting very disgusted and she keeps begging to get out of the rest of it But I said I thought it's very fair and that she is overreacting. So am I the jerk? 
And there we go, guys, our first jerk of the episode. In my opinion, of course, feel free to disagree with me in the comments down below if you have different feelings. But for me, there are so many different punishments that you could give your daughter, like literally anything. You could keep her in her room. You could make her cook everything, you know, like genuinely anything you could do. However, what you've done here, despite giving her a punishment that you know, without context seems fair. It's just gone back on literally a promise that you told her. It's just going against your very word that you said to her back in the day. So that is just, it's just going to cause way more problems than just giving her another random punishment, which would have had the same effect. The more I think about it, it is a little bit crazy. You bought two horses for your younger daughter, promising the older daughter she would never have to even be involved in their care whatsoever. Yet, you broke your promises and now she's involved in their care. Yeah, something tells me that there might be a favorite child here anyway, and that maybe the oldest child is acting the way they're holding because they're resenting your parenting and the fact that they're not getting favored. I don't know. Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions there once again. Let me know if you agree down below. Am I the jerk for moving out when my parents asked me to pay rent? I am a 23 year old and I'm the oldest of five siblings, a full time student. I also have a part time job in my field, but when I complete my degree, my employer will take me on full time. I make enough from part time to pay for school and put money aside. My siblings range from 10 to 20 years old. Both of our parents work full time. I've taken on a lot of the responsibilities for keeping everything running in the house. I do the grocery shopping, the laundry, as well as making suppers and doing meal prep so everyone has lunches ready to take every day. I also get all my siblings to do their part with regards to household chores. For example, my youngest brother is responsible for feeding and walking the dogs. So I make sure that there is dog food in the storage and poop bags on the leash. My dad works very long hours and my mum works nine to five at a hard job. Over Christmas, I had a chance to buy a PS5 for myself, so I did. The rest of my family is still using a shared PS4. I keep mine in my room and I do not share. My parents started fielding complaints from my oldest brother about how I made so much money and I don't share the things I buy for myself. Totally true, by the way. So they had a talk with me where they brought this up. I pointed out how much of the household work I did and they said it wasn't fair that I was earning so much money without contributing. They told me how much they expected from me. I went to my room and did the math. If I gave them what they wanted, I would have about $800 a month left over. If I dropped a couple of classes next semester, I could go to almost full-time hours with my employer and it would only be one more year until I graduated with my second degree. But I could afford my own place and I would have way more free time and disposable income. So I packed up and moved out. Everything I owned fit in my car. I stayed at an Airbnb for two weeks until I could get everything sorted with an apartment, school and work it was great. I'm not gonna lie, I may have gone a little overboard on Tinder. I couldn't have women over to my parents' house. I just moved into my own apartment. I'm staying part-time until I finish this semester. I will work full-time over the summer and go to a lighter class load and then have higher work hours in the fall. My oldest brother has now been tasked by my parents to do everything I used to do. His chores have been split up with the other three. They're all fuming at me for moving out. My parents are upset that I left them in the lurch. My siblings are mad that they all have more chores. My oldest brother is especially salty because he has no free time to see his girlfriend and she isn't allowed in the house when my parents aren't home. I'm enjoying my free time. I bought myself a plant from Ikea. I feel bad for screwing them all over, but it didn't make sense for me to do all that work and pay rent on top. Yeah, definitely not the jerk for me. The fact that you left them in the lurch should clearly be a sign to them to show them how much you were contributing. I don't understand. Like the things you've listed as to you doing in the house, on top of everything else that you're doing, studying, working part time, how do they not realize how much you were contributing? I don't really get that. Like, this might be a little bit crazy as a statement, but to me, it just sounds like they're a bit angry that they lost their slave. <laughs> you were doing so much stuff, like an insane amount of stuff. Good for you for knowing your worth and, and saying, you know what, actually, I could probably get a better deal out of this. I am, let me just check, 23. I'm pretty okay with moving out now and having a lot more free time and making a lot more money. Goodbye. Am I the jerk for pulling my daughter from a water park trip because her teacher made her stay with a kid she doesn't like? My daughter, Bryn, who is nine, is going on a trip to a nearby water park with her class next week. She loves water and has been talking about it for months. So I was a bit thrown off when she came home crying a few days ago, telling me she doesn't want to go. I asked her why and she wouldn't tell me because she thought I would think she's a bad person. When I finally coaxed her out of her, she said her teacher, Miss N, has forced her to be the buddy of her classmate Ben for the entirety of the trip. She was to ride the bus with Ben to and from the trip, eat lunch with him, and go on all the rides with him instead of spending time with her friends. 
She then said that nobody likes Ben because he whines whenever they have to do work and picks his nose and wipes boogers everywhere. I was horrified. Not only because Mrs. N had made Bryn do such a thing, but also because she'd made her believe she was a bad person for not wanting to. Unfortunately, this wasn't my first experience with Miss N, as she frequently used my soft-spoken, intelligent older daughter as a behavior buffer for the naughty boys until I threatened to report her to the superintendent. It's clear to me that Miss N is still too comfortable with enforcing archaic gender roles on her kids and forcing girls to do unpaid emotional labor for the sake of the boys. I immediately sent Miss N an email condemning her actions. She sent me back an email with a bunch of BS that basically ended with, if Bryn goes on the trip, she has to be Ben's buddy. Fine. I informed her Bryn wouldn't be attending then. I immediately booked VIP tickets the same day her class was going so she could still go to the park and see her friends. Genius idea. What happened next, I wasn't expecting. Bryn is quite popular, so I've gotten to know a lot of the mums in her class. When I let them know what Miss N did, some of them were so horrified that they also pulled their kids out of the trip. In total, eight kids out of a class of 20 are either not going or going with us. Today, I got an email from Mrs. N saying that because almost half of the class isn't going, they either have to raise the cost for the other students or not go at all. She practically begged me to let Bryn go and tell all the other parents to let their kids go, promising she wouldn't make Bryn do anything she didn't want to do. I told her she should have thought about that before she tried to make my daughter do her job. My husband said that I was being a bit petty and that Miss N clearly feels bad about what she did. And I should let Bryn go as I've already got on my way. He asked me if I really wanted to deprive my children of what they've been waiting for all year. The thing is, if this wasn't Miss N's first offense, I probably would have agreed. But she has a pattern of this type of behavior, and hopefully this will put a stop to it. Plus, if she has to explain this to her superiors, I have receipts. Is my husband right, or am I justified? Well, as I said while reading there, an absolutely genius plan right there. And I really hope you went through with it. If anything, you should all still go on your own without Miss N and the rest of the students. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit unfair on the rest of the students. I understand. But you're so right. Miss N is literally using your daughter to do her job. It is literally her job to take control of the class and make sure that the boys are behaving well the fact that she can't do that without using your daughter and you're right this is emotional slavery if anything is nuts and she's clearly bad at her job if anything it seems to me that the teacher isn't actually feeling that bad about what she did and how she acted and how she used Bryn. she's more worried about the repercussions of not going on the school trip probably with her superiors and getting in trouble there which is just not a very good sign but hey well done for sticking up for your daughter though am i the jerk for not inviting my unsupportive sister to my wedding i a 24 year old woman got engaged to Derek, a 30-year-old man, one month ago. Prior to that, we'd known each other for six months. I know that's not a long time, but when you know, you know. We're madly in love and ready to commit ourselves to each other fully. My sister, though, has a problem with that. She was supportive of my relationship with Derek before we got engaged. When I sent her a text telling her we were engaged, she responded by saying congratulations. But then when I saw her the week after that, she got all serious and said I should strongly consider the marriage. She told me I was young and could meet people I loved more. That was offensive to me because I love Derek more than anything and she's basically saying my love isn't that important. She also told me that Derek and I could date for longer before we got married. But we're already fully committed to each other, so we might as well get married and be recognized as soulmates in the eyes of the law. Anyway, the conversation was so hurtful to me. I eventually asked her very directly, do you support me marrying Derek? She said no. So I stood up, told her she shouldn't be at the wedding if she didn't want us to get married and left. I haven't talked to her since, although she has texted me multiple times asking to talk. Derek and I were working on the wedding guest list yesterday and we both agreed my sister should not come if she doesn't support us. So we're planning not to invite her. I mentioned this to my friend yesterday and she pointed out that it may be a little rude of me not to invite her. So, am I the jerk for not inviting my unsupportive sister to my wedding? Yeah, uh, six months at the age of 24. I mean, that's just obvious. Like, what are you doing? You have to be in a relationship for more than six months with the person. Anything could change after six months. Six months is like, uh, do you even really fully know someone after six months? I would argue, probably not. Maybe after a, a year, still, that'd be pretty soon. But after a year, you could say, okay, I know them pretty well. Let's get married. But that's still, like, uh, in, my, in my head, I'm thinking at least a couple of years, at the very minimum. Ideally, three, four, five. There's no rush either. 
Like, it seems to me that maybe it's the age gap, but you are 24 and Derek is 30. There is literally no need for you to rush and your sister is completely right. Also, it just seems like she has your best interest at heart. I don't really agree when she says that you could find someone that you love more. That's not a nice thing to say because who knows, Derek literally could be your soulmate, but saying wait a bit there's no rush is completely fair advice and the way that you've gone about acting with that information is just not very nice am i the jerk for telling a girl to stop wasting food i am a 21 year old woman and i usually always sit with the same group of people in my university's dining area there's this girl who i've talked to a few times but i'm not really friends with her she's kind of quiet but when she finally talks, she seems normal. I sat across from her a few times and noticed how she was eating because it was weird to me. She eats maybe half of her food. Keep in mind, you control the amount of food. It's cooked by the cafeteria staff, buffet style. She could easily take less and she kind of plays with it with her fork when she's done, AKA eating half of it, sometimes even less. I didn't say anything for a while, but a few weeks ago, I had to ask her why she always only ate half her food. She seemed embarrassed, but she answered that she thought she was more hungry and laughed it off. I then asked her why she made this mistake every time we ate and that she must have learned by now. She didn't really answer. I don't actually remember, but it wasn't actually an explanation and left pretty quickly. She doesn't really show up that much anymore, but when she does, she still eats like this and I couldn't hold it in anymore. I asked her once again and I also asked her if her parents never told her not to play with her food. It was a genuine question. Some people are raised in households where manners aren't important, but obviously they are for most people. She got really mad at me and told me to stop commenting on her eating habits and that it was none of my business. I told her that it absolutely was since she was sitting at our table and obviously wasting food. She told me to go screw myself and left and threw out the rest of her food again. After she left, one of my friends told me to leave her alone as she seemed like she was having a hard time and maybe she had some sort of issue with food. Yeah, obviously she has an issue with food. She keeps wasting it. She hasn't shown up again. I'm assuming she buys her own food now, which might teach her not to waste it, so that's good. The same friend who told me to leave her alone keeps pestering me to apologize to her, but I think she should apologize to me. She's unnecessarily rude when being asked the most basic and obvious questions. And also, she told me to go and screw myself. That is way more harsh than anything I've ever told her. Keep in mind that I care a lot about food waste and the environment. So, am I the jerk for telling a girl to stop wasting food? Ah, uh, this is a tough one. I mean, it's not really. It's just, it's just not your business ultimately. She could have an eating disorder. She could have anything going on in her life. There's no real need to get at her, especially after the first time. I think asking once, maybe it's a little bit too much anyway, but asking once and just saying, look, do you need to do that? It's probably just about okay. I still wouldn't necessarily advise it. But then going again, and after seeing that, you know, she's not coming in anymore, she might have some problems, whatever it may be. It's just not really your business as much as you care about not wasting food and the environment, which fair enough. I, I completely get that. Am I the jerk for yelling at my girlfriend to stop freaking eating? I am a 28 year old man and my 23 year old sister runs a bakery business and she's been struggling lately to keep up with orders because she's been short staffed. She does a lot of orders for wedding cakes that require custard or marmalade fillings. And I offered to help her out by making these fillings at home and bringing them to her so she has less work to do. Unfortunately, the past four times I've made these fillings, my girlfriend has literally dipped her fingers into the filling jars and contaminated them. Because, in her words, she just wanted to try some. I've tried explaining to her that she can't dip her fingers in and contaminate the entire batch because then I have to remake it. I said she should use a spoon and take some out of it if she wants to try so bad. But she just pouts and says that she likes using her fingers because it takes her back to her childhood. Today, I was trying to finish some chocolate custard to send over to my sister really quickly because she was running late on a wedding cake order for an important client. I told my girlfriend beforehand to not eat the custard and if she really wanted to to please use a spoon I get out of the shower and what do I see? She has her fingers in it again I totally lost it because this is the fifth time that she's blatantly disregarded what I said And I yelled at her and told her to stop freaking eating the food i'm making because it's not for her and she is contaminating it. She started crying and got mad at me for fat shaming her, even though I made no comment on her weight and she has no history of weight issues or eating disorders. Look, I know I was harsh, but she kept pushing my limits. So, am I the jerk? No, what is she doing? The point that she's making about it feeling like she's going back to her childhood. Okay, sure, but we did a lot of things when we were children that you're not allowed to do as adults. For example, um, peeing on the 
floor. No, I never did that as a child. Another example would have been better there, but you know what I mean? And yeah, it's not fat shaming. It's just saying, please, can you not eat out of something that's going to contaminate it for my sister? Like, how obvious is that? What a weird woman. Am I the jerk for demanding my girlfriend tells me her author's pen name? I am a 32-year-old man, and I've been dating Siobhan, who is also 32, for six months now. She's always been very vague about what she does for a living. She'd say things like writing, and she'd work from home writing. But recently, one of her friends mentioned something, and I finally dragged it out of her. She's an author. She writes self-published romance and erotica stories and novels. And while not rich, she's able to make a living out of it. I googled her name and couldn't find anything, so I confronted her about this. She said she's writing under a pen name, so I demanded she gives it to me so I know what she does. She refuses, saying she doesn't want it to be leaked, even by accident, and that nobody knows. I accused her of not trusting me, and she still refused, which was really annoying. I tried a nicer approach, and I told her that I want to know her fantasies so I can try it out with her. And she told me that what she writes aren't her fantasies, but her readers, and she's still not going to tell me. At night, I tried to check her laptop for her pen name, but she changed her passwords before bed. I was annoyed and told her that clearly she doesn't trust me and it's not fair because I have a right to know what she writes, especially since it's a sensitive topic and I don't know her if I don't know her pen name. She was furious that I tried to look at her laptop and told me to go home. Before leaving, I told her when she calls to apologize, I expect to get her pen name with the apology. She called me a jerk on my way out. I thought she'd call by now, but she hasn't. My sister told me that I was the jerk and that I should apologize, but I just don't see it or the need to. Second opinion then, was I the jerk? And this is why she probably has a pen name in the first place to avoid annoying harassment from people like you. I will say though, it is a little bit strange that you don't know or didn't know what she did for work for six months of dating. Like that is odd. Normally that's something you establish pretty much instantly at least on a first date. I mean, that's been my experience. Who knows? Maybe I'm getting it all wrong, guys. Who knows? Maybe I have to just wait for six months and then ask them. However, the fact of the matter is you are being very controlling. It's not up to you to know. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, you probably should know given that you're her boyfriend. But still, it's not up for you to know. It's it's up for her entirely to tell you when she wants or never at all. So unfortunately, yeah, you are being the jerk. Your sister is correct. Am I the jerk for asking my parents for their entire estate if they want me to be my sister's guardian? I am a 23 year old woman and i've been told my entire life that if anything happens to my parents I will be my sister's guardian. She is 33 and has some disabilities She's currently living in a group home. The government pays for a good portion of the cost, but not all My parents have made sure that they have access every resource available for her to make sure she has as good a life as she can We were visiting her last weekend when they brought it up again Now, my parents are both reasonably healthy, but they both have had health scares in the last couple of years. They once again said that I would be her guardian. I'll be giving this a fair bit of thought. I have two older brothers. They're both married and established in their careers. They would be better choices than I. I want to go and see the world. I'm lucky enough that my job can be done from anywhere that I can access the internet. When we went to sort dinner, I brought it up and said that I had three ideas. One, they make all three of us her guardians so that we can split the responsibilities and duties. Two, they leave their entire estate to my sister in a trust that will oversee her care. And three, they leave me the entire estate with the proviso that I become her sole guardian and take full responsibility. Minus sentimental stuff for the rest of my family, obviously. I thought that was fair, since it's not like they're rich and their estate will mostly consist of their house and the insurance policies they took out when they realized the long-term cost of care for my sister. But they said that I'm trying to shirk my responsibility to my sister and that I'm greedy for trying to get everything. I had one last suggestion and they really hated it. I said that they were welcome to cut me completely out of their will, but that had to include guardianship of my sister. They could leave everything to her and my brothers, but that meant that I would be completely free of responsibility for her care. My dad got really angry and my mum was crying when I left. My brothers both called me to say I was being a jerk, springing this on my parents, and that I was being greedy, trying to keep them and their families from getting anything when our parents pass away. I asked both of them if they wanted 100% responsibility for our sister in return for the entire estate. I volunteered to sign away everything to them, Neither one of them took me up on the offer. 
interesting one here i'm not entirely sure what's going on why you're the one that's being singled out over your brothers why they continue to keep telling you every time they see you it seems by the way you are going to be the one that is going to be their guardian when we die her guardian your sister's guardian when we die it's a bit morbid isn't it like if they're in good health yeah they had health scares fair enough but if they're overall in good health and the fact is you're 23 you have a sister who's 33 they can't be that old right i mean the oldest they can possibly be as in both of them would be maybe in their 70s but even that's not it's not too old by the by the current standards of age i don't know it is a weird one comment down below what do you think's really going on here i've got no idea clearly maybe it's a sexist thing that's what some of the comments are saying it's pretty obvious your brothers are like oh what are you doing that's so bad do you not care okay you do it then oh no we actually don't want to do it there you go it's as simple as that maybe it is sexism i don't know one thing's for sure you're not the jerk am i the jerk for screaming at my pregnant fiance for not helping me find my dog who would run off my fiance who is a 28 year old woman is currently five months pregnant and has been both fatigued and nauseous lately i get why she didn't want to help me look for the dog but i can't get over the lack of empathy and bordering on selfish behavior of this either my dog is a six-year-old healer corgi mix and she runs off at least once a week usually my fiance will help me find her but it's not without protest i honestly didn't even know how she was getting out of our fence yard so i installed cameras and found that she was scaling the eight foot fence i ended up attaching spinners to the top of the fence thinking that would solve the issue but it didn't i brought her out today and was playing with her when my phone rang i was inside just long enough to grab my phone and my dog had gotten out i immediately went in search for her thinking that she couldn't have gotten far but I couldn't find her anywhere. So I went back to the house and asked my fiance, who was curled up on the sofa, to come and help me. She immediately said no. She said that she was tired of chasing the dog, that she isn't dealing with it anymore, and that I should have been out there watching her. I explained to her that I had been watching her, and that I simply stepped away for two seconds to grab my phone, just inside the sliding door, and then she escaped. But she said again that it wasn't her problem and she's not exhausting herself anymore to search for my dog I won't even say it was unexpected because as I said in the past She's always had a problem with helping me search, but she's never just said no She's just complained about it at first. I went and searched myself after maybe half an hour I came back and asked her again to come help me and she snapped I said no. I'm so tired of chasing that dog around multiple times a week when I'm already exhausted and throwing up constantly. I was panicked and unleashed some yelling, which involved me telling her that she was a female dog who lacked empathy and that I was thoroughly disappointed with my decision to be with someone so heartless. It was out of pure fear and panic on my part, and I did apologize later after I found my dog. But she said, go freak yourself, and she won't talk to me. So am I the jerk? Everyone is on my side except my sister, who says that I'm a freaking idiot because it's not my pregnant fiance's responsibility to chase around your freaking mutts. And she said that she would have left immediately if her boyfriend ever said what I did to my fiance. Oof, we have another jerk. Guys and girls, by a clear mile. I'm, I'm sorry. Like The fact is she's helped you out so many times before. Now she's in a terrible spot with her own health. She's not going to want to jump up and help you, is she? I say terrible spot. She's pregnant but you know what i mean like she's nauseous she feels ill she's not going to want to keep doing this every other day it seems like running around after your dog that you just can't keep within the confines of your own home now if anything it's on you to train your dog i'm sorry if they keep escaping you're not doing enough and ultimately that's unfair on the dog as well because it can't be that fun for the dog to keep escaping and then being worried about where they are and you've got to go and keep chasing it it escapes after two seconds of you going inside that's just a training thing right if a dog is well trained and you leave them alone for two seconds they're not going to look to jump over the fence yeah you need to train your dog and let your pregnant fiance rest am i the jerk for not cancelling my plans after my boyfriend learned about his diagnosis i am a 25 year old woman and i work in event planning so i always get invites or tickets to go to high-end events there was a huge event coming up that i was really excited to go to i asked my boyfriend who was 27 three days before the event to accompany me and he said yes so originally the plan was my boyfriend my stepsister and myself on the day of the event he said he had a doctor's appointment so he isn't sure if he could still attend i said no problem and i waited for him to return home a couple of hours later he texted me and said he has something to tell me i got worried and called him immediately i asked him if everything was okay and he said he was diagnosed with anemia so will have to take supplements i expressed how sorry i was and spoke to him for about two hours gave him pep talks told him i'm here if he needs me reassured him that i will always love him etc 
I then asked if he would still like to attend the event with me to take his mind off of things to which he responded that he doesn't like the artist performing So he'd rather go to another event. I said no problem. I'll go with my stepsister alone He got upset and hung up. I called him back But he started an argument about how i'm selfish for going out while he's going through something I told him that I already made the plans with my stepsister and I can't back out now if she's depending on me I also don't drink so I have to be the sober driver and if I didn't go then she couldn't I told him that this event is the only event my sister really wants to attend and I promised her that I would take her months prior I even told him i'll see him the next day and he said be safe and hung up I got to the event at around 11 and spent the entire event alone just sitting down and watching the show by myself having food and drinks when i returned home at around 2 a.m i called him and he was awake playing video games his first words were look who cares about me again i said i'm too tired for this and he responded by saying that of course i'm tired i went out without him knowing he's upset but i love partying and meeting new people so much that i didn't think to stay with him on the phone I told him he's being ridiculous and I would have stayed if it were just us who planned to go He said my priorities are off and i'm an ignorant jerk Keep in mind. I don't attend parties unless it's with my family and I only attend events a few times a year So am I the jerk for not staying on the phone with him and attending the event instead? Now i'll be honest guys when I read the title of this post I was thinking cancer Like that is just where my mind went instantly and then I was thinking well Yeah, maybe you are the jerk if you haven't cancelled your plans after your boyfriend has learned that he might have terminal cancer Or even just cancer in general. Yeah, maybe you are however anemia is I don't want to say not that serious But it's not life-threatening. That's for sure It also can be completely controlled with supplements and you can have a full quality of life most of the time if you deal with it correctly it's not 100 percent serious I'm, I'm saying all this with the with the knowledge that i don't want to you know like be patronizing you get what i'm saying it's not it's no cancer i mean also we can just judge from what the doctor said right they've sent you home straight away with supplements and that's it from what i can gauge there's no other need to do anything else so take the supplements you'll be okay that's the general line of thinking so no way you the jerk especially given all the other stuff about your sister and the fact that you don't do this too often and it's been planned and the designated driver etc etc for me no not the jerk and now for our final post of this episode am i the jerk for telling my fiance that my friend's trauma is more important than her comforts my best friend lost a parent a year and a half ago which led him to a mental health crisis Our friend group has been picking up the pieces ever since he's doing much better now that he's in therapy But he's definitely gone through it. What has complicated matters worse is my fiance It goes without saying that I love her but she is the definition of a busybody sometimes My best friend is a very private person now. She knows that something happened with him But she doesn't know the details of what that something is. She probably never will But because she's around me and my friends often as my fiance and I live in the same house She hears bits and pieces of the story and presses for more information I try to circumvent this as best as I can For example, I step out of the room for specific phone conversations But still it's hard to limit the discussion about it sometimes if it's necessary to bring up and she's around in person We'll refer to the nolan situation without giving specifics Nolan will also stop by my place at night when he can't sleep Now this doesn't happen all that often maybe twice a month he'll text me or call me saying he's outside i'll go and sit with him and maybe smoke a little bit and then he'll head home i'll wait up until i know he's got home safely then i go back to sleep my fiance hates this she claims the phone calls always wake her up they don't she just sometimes happens to wake up for the bathroom while i'm outside and that me not being in bed is alarming this brings us to last night nolan stopped by and when i came back inside my fiance said she was putting a stop to it she said all the sneaking around is making her paranoid she doesn't feel like she can properly trust me or be a part of my friend group without knowing the details and that nolan needs to stop relying on me so much i told her that no matter whether we're married dating whatever she will never have any ownership over my friend's trauma and that she was never going to be able to order me around in regards to it I also said her comfort was less important than someone's actual physical well-being She was obviously hurt by this and went to stay with her mum after work today. So am I the jerk? Okay, now i'll be honest with this one My mind changed during the reading of it because the title suggests that yes, you know Friends trauma is obviously more important than than your fiance's comfort. I agree with that wholeheartedly However, it's not really about that the more I read there the more I was thinking you and your friendship group 
yeah, fine. It's a completely private matter. I get that. But what you're doing is you're just completely alienating and isolating your fiance, who should be the person that, you know, you talk to the most and confide in the most. Not saying that you need to tell your fiance all about the ins and outs and the details of Nolan's trauma. That is not what you need to do. However, speaking in code to your friends whenever she's in the room and saying, no, 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 you can't hear about this. Like pretty much just saying, you're not allowed to hear this. Go to another room and let us talk about it. During a period of time over years, that is going to be very annoying. And therefore I understand why she's like, you know what? I'm done with this. It's not even about the fact that it's waking her up in the middle of the night and the sneaking around sort of stuff. It is just what she's saying there. How can she properly trust you and your friendship group when she has no idea what's really going on and none of you even want to speak to her about it at all, even give her any sort of inclination. That's kind of what I'm thinking there. I don't know about that one though. It is a little bit of a dubious one, but I quite like ending these episodes on dubious ones because then you lot can get in the comments and tell me right from wrong. Please do. There's one thing that I was gonna make mentioned but i wasn't really sure about but i will anyway is the fact that nolan uh, it is i don't know if it's too harsh to say it kind of feels like nolan is now using this trauma slightly as some form of emotional leverage like showing up to your apartment twice a month and just like staying over look you're a great friend for letting him do that but i feel like you know it's it's been a year and a half now at some point that's gonna get a bit weird for the fiance so fair enough I don't know. That, that is a contentious one. Comment down below, guys. I don't want to offend, so I'm going to leave it there. But look, you lot let me know. Am I the jerk for removing my daughter's bedroom door because she won't stop slamming it? I am a 40-year-old woman and I have three kids. Maggie, who is 14, Levi, who is 12, and Charlie, who is 10. Levi and Charlie share a bedroom and Maggie has her own room as the oldest and also only girl. Maggie is a great kid. She does her homework, helps with chores without too much complaints, and doesn't bug her brothers too much. The issue is that she will not stop slamming her bedroom door. When she gets up to use the bathroom at night, she slams her bedroom door on her way out and back in. When she gets up in the morning or goes to bed at night, she slams it. Pretty much any time she enters or exits her room, the door gets slammed. And it's only her door, none of the other doors in the house. It shakes the walls and frequently wakes up everyone else. Her brother's room shares a wall with hers and our bedroom is directly above theirs. We've talked to her about it and asked her very politely to please be more mindful about it because it's disturbing the rest of us, but it's in one ear and out the other. We try being more forceful about it, saying that if she continues to slam her door, there will start to be consequences. Still, nothing changes. It all came to a head the other night when she got up to use the bathroom and all four of us were woken up by the slamming. I have to be up at 5 a.m. for work and I've had enough of the broken sleep and came downstairs and knocked on the door. She opened it and said, what? With such attitude, it took a lot of self-control not to start yelling. I told her as calmly as I could that if she slammed that door one more time, she was going to come home and find it gone. She proceeded to yell at me to leave her alone and then slammed it five times as hard as she could. Well, the next day, Friday, she went to school and my husband and I both had the day off. So we took the door off the frame and installed a curtain rod with a nice heavy curtain over the door instead. She came home and freaked the F out. She said we're being emotionally abusive and taking away her right to privacy. She sulked all weekend and won't talk to us now. My mother says that I'm the jerk here because I overreacted, but she doesn't have to deal with the house shaking. I want to add that we completely respect each other's privacy in our house, which is why we hung up a heavy curtain and made sure that we couldn't see through it or around it. We even put little Velcro pieces on the walls and curtain sides so it stays in place. She still has her physical privacy, which she is absolutely entitled to, but can't slam a piece of fabric. We also have never and still don't just go into her room unannounced and we still knock on the wall to ask permission to enter. We've told her we'll happily put her door back on once she agrees to respect the no slamming rule. So am I the jerk? Now, when I first saw the title of this one, I immediately agreed with your daughter that this was emotional abuse and you were completely destroying her privacy that she is entitled to. But obviously, when you read it, it becomes pretty apparent that she's just being a horrible little whiny teen and she deserves this. And that as soon as she says, yeah, I'm not going to slam it anymore, the door will be back. It's not that hard. Just don't slam your door. I mean, she is literally interrupting everyone's sleep. Just take away the thing that is interrupting the sleep and yeah, she'll have to change. 
Simple as that. All that to say, you're definitely not the jerk. Let's move on. Am I the jerk for refusing to help my daughter with her car payments because she is a stripper? I am a 47 year old man and I have a 22 year old daughter. She's in college and lives on campus. I agreed to help her make car payments since she was in school. I was recently informed by a young man I work with that my daughter strips at a club about 40 minutes away. I confronted her on this and she said she didn't plan to do it after she graduated and that she needed some money. I told her then work at McDonald's. Don't use your body. We got into an argument and I asked her to quit stripping and get a decent job then But she refused and said that stripping was easy money So basically I said there was no need for me to pay her car payment anymore since she's making money so easily She got upset and said that that wasn't fair and that she doesn't make enough for that I told her to figure it out She told my wife about what happened and my wife is upset by her job of choice But says it's unfair for me to stop supporting her so suddenly over an argument I think it's perfectly fair It's my money and my decision when to cut it off So, okay, interesting one here. It's one thing not being happy with the line of work that your daughter has chosen to pursue. I completely understand that. Look, as a as a parent, I think that you should, in theory, I mean, I'm not one, so I don't know how hard it is, but I think that in theory, you should let your child do what they, they want to in terms of their life, as long as it's all legal. However, I'll put my hands up. I get it. It's not the ideal job for your daughter to have. Yes, fine. Have your own annoyances about that. But when you're immediately, therefore, deciding to take away support from her that you've given her for a while and that you don't know how she's going to react when you just suddenly take it away, I think you're being the jerk there, no matter what she does for work. The fact of the matter is that you agree to help her make car payments as she is in school and now you've gone against your word for a condition that you hadn't aforementioned that's on you however i will say that the biggest jerk of all in this instance is your co-worker a young man you work with who told you that your daughter strips at a club like what sort of guy first of all is he and second of all does that that's the guy that's really interesting i'll be honest i mean what sort of a man is he also it's 40 minutes away like there's just a lot to unpack there that i don't really want to unpack but also do yeah you're the jerk give your daughter the money that you owed her and you agreed to but that other geezer weird let's carry on am i the jerk for not letting my miracle baby niece be my flower girl at my wedding i am a 27 year old woman and my older brother and sister-in-law both in their mid-30s just welcomed their first child a year and a half ago after years of trying after many failed attempts my sister-in-law was told that she wouldn't be able to conceive due to a medical condition she has but they finally got pregnant since having my niece the baby has been the center of attention at every family event we've had since she was born birthdays weddings family get-togethers you name it now don't get me wrong i love my niece but it can get to be a little too much when my sister-in-law goes on and on about how long they try to conceive complications they've had miscarriages they've had etc like a little too much info many family members have commented on how it's a little bit excessive but no one has said anything because they don't want to sound like a jerk anyway i'm getting married in the spring and my brother and sister-in-law approached me last weekend about having my niece be the flower girl now my fiance who is 35 has two children a 10 year old boy and a six year old girl from his previous marriage his son is one of his groomsmen while his daughter had asked to be our flower girl when we told him the news that we were getting married a year ago that's something she's always wanted to do so of course we said yes i explained this to my sister-in-law when she asked me about my niece she asked if my stepdaughter can just carry my niece with her i said i don't think she'd be comfortable with that considering she is six she then asked why i can't give that role to my niece and allow herself to carry my niece down as the flower girl I said no because I already promised my stepdaughter. She then started going off about how my lack of effort to incorporate my niece is disgusting to her. I should honor her in some way since I know how long and hard they tried for my niece. Now, I may sound like a jerk for this, but I kind of got fed up and snapped and said, incorporate my niece how? By the time my wedding comes around, she'll be two years old. The entire family already knows your story about how long and hard you guys tried for her. What more do you expect me to do to honor her? She started crying and said that clearly I don't love my one and only niece and I'm letting her down. I said, of course I love my niece and obviously she's going to be involved in pictures and stuff, but I'm not going to let my stepdaughter down by giving my niece a role she's too young to remember anyway. Well, now my sister-in-law and my brother are fuming with me for not letting my niece be the flower girl and are running around telling the rest of the family that I don't love my niece. 
My mum had been trying to stay neutral, but she now thinks that my stepdaughter would understand if I explained to her that I need to give that role to my niece. What? I'm firm in my decision though, and my fiance is thankful that I didn't let his daughter down. So, am I the jerk for not allowing my niece to be the flower girl? I mean, look, sorry to be harsh here, guys, but we get it. You had a miracle baby. Like, how many times do you want to tell me? I'm even getting annoyed, and I'm just reading the story. I'm not related to you. We get it. Amazing thing. No one's taken away from that fact. But come on, you're now just intruding on what it sounds like everyone's lives, let alone someone's wedding. Especially given the fact that you've been explicitly told by OP here that no, my stepdaughter has always wanted to do this. But hang on a second, we had a miracle baby, guys. And therefore, what I say goes, because it's a miracle. The clue's in the name. You absolute idiot. Like, I'm sorry, maybe I'm being a bit harsh there, but it's not your day. And it's definitely not your miracle baby's day who yes as op said is never gonna remember this she's gonna be two like what's the point you're just doing this for your own ego and i'm sorry op you're definitely not the jerk but uh yeah your sister-in-law she is am i the jerk for not wanting to change my first dance song because of my stepsister's association with it we've chosen our first dance song my stepsister is not at all happy because she and her ex-husband also had this at their wedding and she said she has a lot of memories with this particular song she asked if i could change it i told her i get it but this is what we want and i don't want to change it she said she understood but she's acting different around me and i could tell that she was mad and upset most people who know about this don't think i'm doing anything wrong but i have my sister and one of my friends tell me that I am being selfish and not understanding here. So, am I the jerk? All right, a little quick one there. Now, I think we need some context for it because if you, for your entire life, you and your partner, your fiance, had always wanted this song to be your song, your first dance song for as long as you've known each other and, and the first day you met, you talked about having this song at your wedding. Yeah, it's a little bit far, but you get what I'm saying. If this was always the plan to have that song, then I get why you'd have your reservations and you wouldn't want to change it. However, from the sounds of it, it just sounds like you just want to have this song, this particular song. And if that is the case, is there not one other song in the entire world that you could possibly use instead? Because after all, this is going to be a very troubling period for your stepsister seeing you do this and hearing that song you know it's just it's just not nice and there are so many songs i don't know it's a tough one but you could just do the nice thing and change it then again it is your day it is your wedding you can't you know concede to everyone but it is just a song oh my god sorry okay i've just noticed that op has left an edit in the comments that i actually have to include this is mental and changes everything right let's put this up on screen right now yes a few months after they got married he was in a wreck. He thankfully survived, but has a severe TBI, among other things. And he lives in a specialized nursing home. They got divorced, but my sister still goes on about how she loves him and visits him occasionally. He doesn't remember who she is most of the time, but my stepsister says she apparently sang this song to him and he looks like he remembers her. Her words. Oh my God. Come what may from the movie Moulin Rouge. My sister sees it as their song. She and her ex first met at the movies when they both went to watch it. This is what I'm saying. This is the context that we needed. Then apparently the restaurant they went to for their first date was also playing it. So they took it as a sign. And as I said, they also played it at their wedding. She also sings it to him sometimes now. I think it's a really nice song and I'd like to play it too. I don't want to have to change it. Yeah. So this is actually the opposite of what I said. For your stepsister, this was the amazing song. For you, it's a nice song and I'd like to play it. Nah, you got to change that. I'm sorry especially given the trauma that she's gone through my word change it immediately you are the jerk am i the jerk for making my 16 year old son and my 14 year old daughter share a bedroom my husband unexpectedly passed away a few months ago and i became a single mother to three kids a 16 year old boy 14 year old girl and another two-year-old girl due to the significant decrease in income i was no longer able to continue renting where we were and all i can afford is a one-bedroom apartment currently i'm sleeping in the living room with my youngest i get the bedroom to my 16 year old boy and 14 year old girl and i ask them to share in the meanwhile i tried adding a privacy screen in the middle so they feel like they have their own space but they're telling me that this isn't acceptable each of my kids used to have their own rooms so this is a massive change for them i've been looking for a better paying job for months and so far i've had no luck i can't get a second job because i can't afford to pay someone to care for my two-year-old daughter outside of daycare hours neither of my kids are willing to help and they say my youngest is not their responsibility i know the situation isn't ideal but i don't know what else i can do for the past month i've not been eating anything for two days a week and just telling the kids that i'm trying out this fasting trend for weight loss purposes 
But the truth is, I can't afford to feed us all, and I've been using the food bank. Prior to this, I'd never had to use food bank services before, and I'm so thankful that it exists. I'm both thankful and deeply ashamed though at the same time. Would I be the jerk for telling my teens that they must share a bedroom? Would it be better if I suggested my son sleep in the living room with me and have both my female kids share the bedroom instead? I don't live in the US, but it's not common for teenagers of opposite sex to share a bedroom. That is something I do absolutely recognize. Now, before I even give my opinion on this one, I need to say there is an update to this post which gives a lot more information. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the updates. I had a chat with my kids after work. I still don't want to put an adult problem onto my kids, so I only gave them a brief overview of the dire financial issues we're having after my husband and their father passed away. Us downsizing to a one-bedroom apartment was not by choice. I also told them the truth about how I couldn't afford to feed us all and why I didn't eat two days of the week. I was afraid of how they take that news, but it's gone better than I expected. My kids will be coming with me to the food bank for the next trip to help out. In terms of the rooming situation, both my older kids agree that they did not want to share a room with my youngest, the two-year-old, because she frequently wakes up at night and also has accidents. They also don't want to share with me because I get up much earlier than them to work and it would disrupt their sleep. They'd rather share the room with each other while I continue to sleep in the living room with my youngest. They both told me that their friends were saying that no kid should ever have to watch their sibling because they didn't create them. They've been told by their friends that it's parentification to be asked to babysit for even an hour and it's never okay in any circumstance. That was why they kept calling me a jerk when I asked if they could help with childcare so I could get a second job. But now that they know how bad the situation is, my son said he wants to find a part-time job to help contribute. My daughter apologized and said it wasn't that she hated me or her sister. Both my son and daughter said they are willing to help take care of the youngest so that I can get a second job. Hopefully, I can find something soon and be able to move to a larger space. Okay, there we go. Now, that is what I was going to say before I even read the update. What it is here is just the lack of information. Your kids are just being typical kids. I picture myself as a 16 year old boy if i was asked to share a room with my sister who actually is a few years younger than me and i was 16 and i had no context as to why we had to do this or the financial trouble my family was in i honestly would have the same reaction i'd be like well i'm used to having my own room back in the old house why are we living in a one bedroom apartment and why do i have to share a room that would be my natural reaction however as expected when you give your kids the actual information and the reasons behind all of this, then of course they concede and they want to help and they're being nice kids. That is what you have to do the entire time. And I'm very glad you did this. Look, honestly, I can understand this. You don't want to be completely transparent with what's going on. It's a horrible situation. Nobody wants to say to their kids, guys, look, we have to go to a food bank. I can't afford to be in a nicer house. I need you guys to give me some babysitting help while I go and get a second job to support us financially. That's not a position you want to be in. But sometimes honesty is the best policy. And look, here, clearly it's worked. Well done. So, suffice to say that you're not the jerk in all of this, but still, going with this honesty was the best play. Congrats. Am I the jerk for refusing to miss some of my kids' events when my ex-wife's husband asked? I share two kids, Indy, a 10-year-old boy, and Colby, an 8-year-old girl, with my ex-wife, Thora. We've remained very close, and she and I don't follow a strict parenting plan. We do our best to have the kids see us both as much as possible. We celebrate every birthday, every Christmas together, and we show up to support our kids together as much as we can make work with our jobs. Our families are also still very tight. The kids love it. Sometimes it will be my parenting time, but they want Thora, and so they spend the day with her, or vice versa. It just works so well for the kids. Thora married Michael in November 2021. He and I got along in the beginning. He clearly loved Thora and was great with the kids, which is what Thora and I cared most about. But then this past summer, some things changed with Michael. An example is Indy was singing and playing an instrument at this little talent show his summer camp set up. Thora and I both went, so did Michael, who took the day off work. Michael did not look happy to see me. And once Thora was not within earshot or sightline, he was visibly tense and I swear he groaned at some point near me. Then Thora had to go out of state to see a friend of hers who was very sick. The kids chose to stay with me and I don't believe Michael was happy about that. I tried to ask him about it, but he swore things were fine. In November, Indy and Colby had a busy month with different standout things within extracurriculars and school. I was lucky enough to attend 9 out of 10 of them, with Thora attending 8 out of 10. Michael got to attend just 3. 
all three were ones that I could attend, and it felt very much like he didn't want me there. Late last month, when Michael and I were the ones attending a school function for the kids, he asked me to show up to less of the kids' events and let him and Thora do some of that stuff with the kids as a family. I told him they already do. He said, not when I'm around, that I'm getting in the way of him being a parental figure for the kids. I told him he was a parental figure and the kids love him. He said they'll never consider us equal until they see him instead of me at some of these events. He said it's important for the more stable family unit of four. I told him I was not willing to miss the kids' events. He did not take it well and he accused me of interfering and alienating their chances of a family unit. He texted me after the event with things he wanted me to miss, including Indy's elementary school graduation in May. I told him that was not happening. He told me Thora wanted this too. But of course, Thora knew nothing of this and told me the kids would be so upset if we did what Michael wanted, which I knew also. She was angry at Michael. Michael's angry at me, still. He called me a jerk. I don't want to believe I'm in the wrong, but I know this is not the norm for every divorced parent situation, and it makes me ask if I am in the wrong for not letting them have some of those events, just them. And there we go, an interesting one to end this episode. For me, I can understand from michael's perspective why this is annoying him i can i honestly can i think he should be a little bit more understanding however i i kind of get it right he doesn't like that you're still about and as the man of the family i can i can understand that he's just like yeah well you're the old guy i'm the new guy i want to have a relationship with the kids and you can have your own thing when you go and see them and when they're with you but for me, I want to feel like I'm their dad. I'm their stepdad at least. And I don't want to feel like someone is always treading on my toes. Now, I wonder who of you right now are getting in the comments saying, I completely disagree. Because let me tell you, that is just what Michael thinks. And I'm saying that from his perspective, devil's advocate. Because in reality, when you sign up to be with a woman who has children and is clearly very close with their ex, you know in fact, you must have known that this was always going to be the case. No matter what you wanted at first, you had to be okay with this in your head, surely, to go ahead with this with this marriage, right? You know how close they are. You know how much the dad is still in your kids' lives. Their kids' lives, sorry. Not your kids. Let's just make that completely clear. Therefore, you can't be too like, oh, what? You can't come and see the kids. Especially on their graduation. Like... Are you dumb? Who are you to pick and choose what your stepkid's actual dad can do with them and what events he can go to? It's just not the one. And also, in terms of having your own thing and building your own rapport with the family and, and, and you know, feeling like a unit, that, by the way, I do understand. Like, you're allowed to, you know, be yourself and try and integrate into a family. That's fine. And I think that is something you should do. Fine. But you can do that on your own terms at non-familial events that a dad would want to be there for right as in go to the aquarium with your wife and her two children as a family would do go to a theme park maybe the kids are a little bit too young to go on the rides maybe that's not the best idea i'm not a father right that's on you big mike you can decide what to do what i'm pretty much saying is don't first of all try and steal the family and secondly don't tell the actual dad what he can and can't do with them it's just not your job Especially given that throughout all of this, Thora is the one that is very accepting and wants this relationship to continue with OP, and it's just the way things are. Yeah, I agree, guys. That was a convoluted little bit of commentary. But you're still watching, so it must have worked wonders. Am I the jerk for demolishing my daughter's room after she moved out? My 18-year-old daughter, Meg, is in college. She moved in with her boyfriend a few months ago, which left her old bedroom empty. Her bedroom used to be right next to our tiny living room. To make our tiny living room into a normal-sized living room, we knocked out my daughter's room's wall, refloored the space, and fixed the walls. Now it looks like the bedroom was never there and we have a spacious living room. When my daughter came home to visit and saw that her room is gone, she made a huge deal about it. She got all emotional and said if we never wanted to let her move back, we should have just said so instead of completely demolishing her room. I told her that if anything happens and she needs to move back, we will welcome her and she could sleep on the couch as long as she wants. But she accused us of wanting to get rid of her forever and for her to never visit us since we got rid of her room so fast, only a few months after she moved out and we should have waited longer. So am I the jerk for not waiting longer with the renovation? Now you can probably see why this is pretty pertinent to me in this situation. Now, I'll be honest, I have already been to university and then I moved back in after I came back and now I've moved out of my parents' home. But if my parents had done this without asking me, 
when I moved to college, university, which is a temporary thing, right? After college, uni, you don't have a home. Where are you going to go? For me, I always knew I was going to at least move back in for a period of time. I didn't know how long, but I was always going to move back in. But for them to do this without asking you and not to change around your room, to completely destroy it is crazy. The only way this would ever have been fine is if they'd specifically asked you and you had said 100% yes after having a long time to think about it. Not a couple of months, a significant amount of time because now if you ever wanna move back in, you're done. And the fact that they didn't even ask you in the first place is nuts. So for a bit of context with me, now that I have properly moved out, I've said to my family and they've said, we're gonna do it up, you know, change it. Cause I had like a black wall and black shelves and black curtains that they don't really want. It's not the most welcoming thing, I'd argue. Fair enough. And they're saying, yeah, we're going to change it up, going to redecorate it because it needs to be redecorated anyway. And I don't live there permanently anymore. And I do have an official permanent new flat. So that's completely fine. And also it will still kind of be my room. Like if I want to go back and sleep there at any time, yeah, the colors might be different, but it's still my room. Whereas in this spot, you have no room anymore. Your room is now a bigger living room. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe it benefits the entire house. But to go through all of that without talking to your daughter about it is mental am i the jerk for suing my parents for my college money my great aunt set up savings accounts for all of her female relatives in our culture education for women is not really valued and she thought that that was bs she lived with her father in london where she was educated she went on to attend university and became a doctor she married a british man they moved to america and had a great life she funded the education of as many of her nieces and grandnieces as she could when she passed away she left money for every girl relative that she could my parents managed to access the accounts that were set up for my sister and i they used it to pay for my brother's wedding my sister didn't care because she got married two years out of high school and had no intention of going to college but when i graduated i went to the bank to get money for school and it was almost all gone there was like thirteen thousand dollars left i asked my parents about it and they said they'd needed the money i finally found out where the money went i was furious I got student loans and moved out. I am a great source of shame to them and I don't give two Fs. I'm currently suing them for the money that was left for me. My entire family is against me. They all think I'm a complete jerk for airing private family business in public and that I'm putting money ahead of family. My friends are all on my side, but they're all Americans and don't really get my culture. Neither do I, to be honest. My brother called me up and offered to pay for my university if I dropped the lawsuits. I agreed as long as we had a legally binding contract. He said I was being a jerk for not trusting him. I said he should not have accepted my money for his wedding. It's causing all kinds of embarrassment in our community. I am somewhat ashamed to be doing this, but I don't wanna have this debt that I should not have. OP, I completely agree with you. You're right. Why would you want to incur debt that literally should not be yours? Your great aunt did this for a reason, so you didn't have to do this. And the fact of the matter is that your parents don't deserve this money it's not theirs and they've got it in a roundabout way that isn't really fair so yeah absolutely i would sue no more comments really you're definitely not the jerk and they definitely are the only problems you might have are the legalities of it all and i can't really comment on that too much as i don't really know but you definitely have to go through the process and see where you end up ultimately that is your money and you need to get it am i the jerk for calling my sister stupid and her and her husband trashy parents from the start because of what they want to name their kid okay so just a little context because this topic is incredibly touchy for me I am a man who was given a woman's name at birth. A good example is naming your son Alice. It's not what my name was, but it's close. My parents are hippies and gave their oldest son a girl's name to stick it to the man and I will never forgive them for it. That name caused me to be bullied and damaged my professional life in ways I cannot describe. My sister is pregnant with her first child, a girl. She and her husband are ecstatic. It just sucks that she inherited my parents' stupid propensity to see their children as fashion statements. Last night, she revealed to the family the name of her daughter. It's Crystal. Now guys, this is spelt K-R-X-S-T-X-L. She wants to name her daughter K-R-X-S-T-X-L. Confused, the name is pronounced Crystal. I already don't like the name, but it's at least appropriate. I was not surprised to learn that my mum helped come up with the name. When she told me, I told her it was a terrible idea. If she wants to name her Crystal, name her Crystal, spelt properly. She tried to explain to me why the X's are there, and I just told her it does not matter. 
She's naming a human, not a dog. I don't care what kind of fashion statement she's trying to make. This is a person who will have to live with that name until they die or have it changed. She and my mum brushed me off as just complaining because I was never able to accept my name. I told my sister that she was being either selfish, stupid, or an incredibly strong combination of the two if she thinks her daughter will want a stupid name like K-R-X-S-T-X-L. We got into an argument and I told her I already see her and her husband as trashy parents for using their kid to be off-brand with her name and then I left right after. My sister is not taking it well at all and my mum is furious with me. I'm starting to wonder if I was too harsh. I won't change my opinion on that incredibly stupid name but i'm wondering if branding her as a trashy parent was too far i mean let's be honest with each other guys parenting begins when you decide on your child's name that is a massive massive factor imagine being a guy and being called alice like op i mean come on that is criminal absolutely criminal nothing you can do will stop you from being bullied about that name that is an absolute joke and likewise being called krx stxl like it literally sounds like a website domain she is going to get Caned. And that's not her fault. That's her parents' fault. Ultimately, if you're doing something to your child, which is causing them to be bullied at school, which is, let's be honest, what is going to happen, then that's bad parenting. Simple as that. And therefore, OP, you're completely correct. Am I the jerk for accidentally ruining my girlfriend's career? I'm in a tough spot right now, and I'm not sure if I'm the jerk or not. My girlfriend, who is 27, let's call her Sarah, and I, I'm 26, have been together for three years. She's always been passionate about her job as a teacher and has worked really hard to build up her career. However, a few weeks ago, I accidentally stumbled upon some photos of Sarah on Instagram that I'd never seen before. They were pictures of her in some very revealing clothing, and some of them were even nude. I was shocked and confronted her about it. And she told me that she used to be a lingerie model before becoming a teacher. She said she stopped doing it because she didn't want it to affect her career and she thought I knew about it already. I didn't know how to react at first, but eventually I told a few of my friends about it. One of my friends is a gossip and ended up telling someone who works at the school where Sarah teaches. Long story short, the photo somehow got into the hands of the school board and Sarah was fired for unprofessional behavior. Sarah is devastated and blames me for ruining her career. She says that I should have kept my mouth shut and that I betrayed her trust. I feel terrible about what happened, but I didn't know that it would lead to this. So am I the jerk for accidentally ruining my girlfriend's career? Uh, yeah, obviously. Why is that even a question? Why are you telling people about these Instagram photos? You've been told this in confidence. Look, I will concede that she should have done everything she can to try and take them down if she thought that this was ever going to compromise her career, which realistically it clearly was going to at some point or would have done if it was leaked. But you're the one that's leaked them to your friends. What are you doing? Like, put yourself in that spot. I put myself in that spot right now, to be fair. If my girlfriend or wife or partner revealed to me that she had uncompromising photos on the internet that were gonna potentially ruin her career i wouldn't say to my mates oh by the way look at these cool photos of my girlfriend like are you dumb they're nudes yeah not ideal them being there in the first place but still why tell people Obviously, you're the jerk. Am I the jerk for selling the house my brother and his family live in? A few years ago, my brother needed help. I let him move into one of my rental properties and we did it all legally. Lease agreement and everything. Because I was renting to him at a break-even point, we agreed that he was responsible for all the maintenance of the house and yard. Well, he has four kids and the hot water tank isn't enough for his family and he wants a new one. I told him to go ahead. He then proceeded to take the cost of the hot water tank and insulation off of that month's rent. I reminded him of our agreements. He said he wasn't making improvements to my property for free. I said that the old hot water tank was fine and he made the decision to replace it. Big argument and I didn't want to fight, so I said that he wasn't allowed to make any further changes to the house without my explicit agreement. So he stopped doing maintenance as a protest. The house itself is not pretty, but it is solid. It's old and the wiring in it was not meant for all the modern electronics we have. He wanted to add a new breaker box and run more outlets. I said, no thanks. I cannot afford that since I'm not making any money on the house. He started complaining about it and the rent started getting paid late. I tried talking to him, but he said that he had to buy some stuff for the house and he was low on cash. So I sold the house. While the house itself isn't great, it is in an older part of the city and the property itself is a quarter of an acre. Every time a house sells in the neighborhood, it is snapped up by developers and turned into multifamily units. 
or one guy built a McMansion on his land. I know a lot of the developers and I didn't even need to list the house to have it sold in less than a week. My brother found out when he was served with an eviction notice. He called me to ask, what the frick? So I told him that the house was causing me headaches and I had an opportunity to make some money and I took it. He said I should have offered him a chance to buy it. I said that he was having trouble making rent. How was he going to qualify for a mortgage? He said I'm a jerk and that he has the money. He was waiting to make me an offer. I asked him if he had money, why was he late on his rent? He started bad mouthing me to all our family. A few of them took his side and tried to say I was being a jerk. So I offered all of them a chance to clear his debt to me if they wanted to share their opinion. None of them took me up on the offer. My parents are on my side and they said I shouldn't have rented to him in the first place. I feel bad for my sister-in-law and the kids, but I'm not going to spend the rest of my life subsidizing his. You know what? I don't think you're in the wrong here at all because although this is your brother and his family, the fact of the matter is that it's your house. You can do whatever you want with it. Just full stop. Yes, that gives you license to be mean, but you haven't been mean here. You've given your brother and his fam the benefit of the doubt. You give them lots of chances to pay rent. You know, they've been late for a while. They're doing things that you've asked them not to do. They're taking money off the rent, etc., etc. At what stage do you just say, you know what? No, that's enough. Like you clearly are not good tenants. I'm done with this. I'm going to sell the gaff and take the money. And that's what you did. And I think, unfortunately, for your brother's family, that is completely fair. You've actually explicitly said in this as well that you're not making any money out of this. Therefore, I presume that you've rented to him at a pretty cheap price, maybe a family price, given that he is your brother. So it sounds to me as if you're doing him a favor in the first place. And you do seem quite accommodating as a landlord. But yeah, he's clearly just taking the mick. Get him gone. Am I the jerk for having a dry wedding and serving only water for drinks? Okay, so basically, my husband and I are getting married later this year. Each of our sides of the family are fairly big. It will be around 100 to 150 people total. My husband and I are paying for this all ourselves, as well as my grandma, who said she doesn't care one way or the other on this issue. She just loves weddings. We have a lot of kids in our family, so we decided against making it child free, but we did decide to make it dry. So there will be no alcohol of any kind at our wedding. Honestly, this doesn't have anything to do with there being kids there, but due to the fact that my fiance and I don't drink, nothing against people who do, it's just not for us and we don't want to. On top of that, we only really drink water. We rarely, if ever, drink soda. So most of the time, it's only water with the occasional juice and milk. We don't even drink coffee. So obviously the food, which is a part my grandma is not paying for, is going to be expensive for that many people. We're having our wedding catered, so everyone will have a good choice of food to choose from. But to drink, only water will be provided. We don't want to have to pay for alcohol or soda. It's just a large added expense when we can just do filtered water for a much cheaper cost. Well, when family and friends found out, everyone got angry. Some didn't really care, but some are really upset about it, saying that I could just have an open bar so I don't have to pay for drinks. We could, but still have to pay for the bartender and we just really don't want to bother with alcohol there. Or we should at least have soda because how can we expect everyone to drink only water? The kids will be upset. The wedding will be boring. That this is not how weddings work, etc. So, am I the jerk? I didn't think that this would be a problem. It's only water. I mean, don't most people drink water every day anyway? Should we pay the extra to have soda to make the family happy? Okay, let's get one thing completely straight. There is no doubt in my mind that you do not have to serve alcohol at your wedding if you don't want to for any reason. You don't have to accommodate people. It's your decision if you want to serve alcohol or not. I, and I completely back it. Look, I would argue that it's fun to have alcohol at a wedding, but if the bride and groom don't want alcohol there, that's tough. And you got to accept that. What I can't accept though, is there only being water? That is where I think you are the jerk because no, most people don't drink water every day. I mean, a lot of people do, of course, but not most people. To force everyone there to drink just water is harsh. It's meant to be fun, right? Fun, to me, is having more options on a menu than just filtered water. Yeah, chuck some juices in there. Chuck some soda in there. I mean, if I'm a kid going to a wedding and there's only water, not gonna lie, I'm throwing hands. I am throwing hands. I'm fuming. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put some real pressure on the groom to get me a Diet Coke immediately because that is an absolute farce. So yeah, as I, as I say, nothing wrong with not serving alcohol. That's your decision. Only serving water? Nah. 
That is very controlling. And again, as someone sensible mentioned, just make it a bar that you have to pay for. You don't have to pay for it yourself. And how much is a bartender for a few hours? I mean, come on. Compared to the cost of an entire wedding, that is not expensive. Do the right thing. Give the people the drinks they want. Am I the jerk for asking my girlfriend to watch my favorite movies with me? Last weekend was my 28th birthday. My girlfriend, who was 25, had asked what I wanted to do. And I said I wanted to watch my favorite movie trilogy, Lord of the Rings. I don't think my girlfriend was thrilled, but she didn't say anything and agreed. She has seen them before, and I don't think she really likes them very much, but she knows I love them. So she doesn't really say anything besides they aren't really her thing. But I really wanted to make a date of watching them. And I went over to her house because she has a really big, comfortable couch. About 10 minutes into the first movie and I look over and she is browsing on her phone I was a little miffed but didn't say anything She basically scrolled through her phone the entire movie When we started the second movie She opened a bottle of wine and proceeded to drink the whole thing while still sitting on her phone I was pretty irritated at this point because she wasn't even paying attention at all The third movie started and by then she'd opened another bottle of wine and was asleep within the first 20 minutes I was really mad at that point and just left and went home a few hours later I got a text asking where I went I told her I was mad that she couldn't pay attention to my favorite movies on my birthday She told me I was a jerk and to grow the hell up I've texted her a couple of times, but she hasn't responded. So am I in the wrong? Wow, there we go back to back jerks in my opinion to end this episode What do you expect? In this situation your girlfriend has explicitly said to you she doesn't like these films yet you are forcing her well i mean look it's, it's a tough one isn't it she's doing a great thing in my opinion by actually just sitting there with you how long is the lord of the rings trilogy by the way you know what i'm gonna look this up on the fly lord of the rings trilogy overall runtime now my guess is about 10 hours it's 11.2 hours you're expecting your girlfriend who doesn't like these films and by the way i sympathize with her because i don't really like them either i know it's controversial but it's true I actually have never actually properly watched them So maybe you should have invited me to your birthday party And not your girlfriend and we could have watched them together But yeah, you're asking your girlfriend to sit on the couch And focus on something that she has said she doesn't like For 11.2 hours Now if that's me, I'm also turning to the wine And you can't blame me Come on. The fact of the matter is, she's been nice by even doing it in the first place. She's explicitly doing something she doesn't like. And I'm explicitly saying explicitly a lot here. That's how explicit her reaction could have been. Crazy, I know. But yeah, uh, sorry. Doing something that you like on your birthday that you know someone else doesn't like as much, but it's going to come along and do it anyway. That's fine because it's your day. I get that. But forcing someone to sit on the sofa and focus for 11.2 hours is not fine. I'm sorry. It's just not. And yeah, you are the jerk. Am I the jerk for going off on my wife for commenting about our three-week-old daughter's looks? My daughter, our second child, is three weeks old. Pre-pregnancy, my wife was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder and depression. And in the days since birthing our baby girl, is most definitely experiencing postpartum depression. Our first child, our son, looks very much so like her. In fact, you look at baby photos of my wife, they look almost exactly like our son's baby photos. And my wife is a looker, so my son is dang cute. Thank you very much. Our daughter got a bit more of my size gene pool. Her hairline kind of has a widow's peak, which I've had since I was a baby. Her lips are relatively thin, like me. Her nose is a little larger than our son's was. I have a Middle Eastern classic hook nose. Nearly every day in my daughter's 21 days on this earth, my wife has made a comment to baby girl about how she's so sad she got daddy's features Just some of the things my wife has said to our baby girl are Don't worry, I'll get you a nose job as soon as you're old enough I wish you'd gotten more of my features My family is beautiful and all the women are timeless Your dad's family, not so much Your brother has the beautiful pouty lips and you got stuck with those pencil lips Oh, it's really tough being a girl Up until yesterday, I was taking a softer approach With comments like, okay, be nice And okay, chillax But today, I had enough And I just snapped and I yelled at her for like five minutes straight and I cursed quite a bit too The gist of my statements were I don't care if she can't yet understand what you're saying Stop putting that trash out into the universe Our son can understand you so stop this garbage I can understand you so stop putting this trash in my head and making me listen to it Yeah, life on girls is tough in this world Especially when their mum is trashing all over their appearance She's freaking three weeks old and is still perfect and noble and hasn't hurt a goddamn soul. Stop projecting onto her. 
And finally, you regularly tell me how your mum screwed up your psyche with all her comments about your appearance. So why the heck are you doing the same to our baby girl? Anyways, she was understandably hurt by my comments and we haven't really talked about it or debriefed since. I do recognize that part of her comments stem from her anxiety and depression as well as her postpartum depression. And I also recognize there are a lot of this that stems from her mum's influence on her psyche. Also, I know that yelling and berating people is rarely the right thing. So am I the jerk here? Okay, first things first, OP, you're definitely not the jerk here. I mean, that's not even up for debate. You have to call her out on this. This is ridiculous. However, what I think is more important is less the question of whether you're in the right or the wrong for how you responded. It's more why this woman is doing this to her own daughter. That's what I think is more compelling like she must know herself right because as you mentioned here the fact of the matter is that her mum did the same thing to her and she doesn't like it and she knows the effect that it's had on her so then why is she doing that onto her own daughter i don't think if she was switched on logically she would do that knowing how it affected her so maybe there's some underlying thing going on here as you said you recognize that a lot of this stems from her mum's influence so i think instead of you know shouting at her and going off on her maybe the thing to do i mean look I'm not saying you did the wrong thing here because I would have done the same, but going down the line, maybe the thing to do is have a conversation with her and try and work out what's really going on here and explain clearly why this is such a bad thing to be doing at such an early age in someone's life and also how it affects everyone else around you in the family. Am I the jerk for lighting a match at night and scaring my boyfriend's dad so badly he woke up the whole house? My boyfriend and I are staying at his parents' house. It's been going really well, but his dad is very particular. He has moments every day where he corrects or instructs the other people in the house on how he wants us to behave. Now, I don't really have a problem with it, but he has a few rules that do make me a little uncomfortable. I don't need to get into why, but I always get diarrhea here. I've been visiting them a few times a year for almost a decade, and it just is what it is. My boyfriend and I used to stay in a room downstairs with a bathroom, and it wasn't a problem but his brother moved back home and now we don't have our own bathroom. I don't want to advertise the fact that I have diarrhea to everyone in the house and I'm not allowed to use the bathroom fan at night, so I usually use poo pourri or just a drop. When we got home the last time, my boyfriend got a text from his dad asking him to ask me to stop using strong essential oils as it was making him feel sick. I was so embarrassed and I honestly have been kind of dreading coming here again. I was talking to my mum about this and she suggested that I bring some paper matches because that's what she used to do. I got some paper matches and they actually work pretty well. Tonight, I woke up from my sleep because I had diarrhea. I lit a match when I was done, ran it underwater and folded it up into some aluminium before throwing it in the garbage. I fell back asleep and was woken up a while later by a big commotion. My boyfriend's dad smelled burning and thought the house was on fire. So he woke everyone up in a panic and searched the house to see what was burning. I didn't immediately equate a match with a house fire and I didn't smell anything when I woke up. So I didn't bring up that I'd lit a match. It wasn't even clicking for me that the match was what he smelled until my boyfriend asked me if I smelled anything when I got up earlier to use the bathroom. Long story short, I just got chewed out by his dad for lighting matches at night or lighting matches in general as a guest in their home and even his mum was upset because i could have started a fire and nobody would know i apologized and everyone went back to bed but then my boyfriend lectured me for like 50 minutes about embarrassing him and playing dumb about not knowing what his dad smelled and not using common sense and then he told me to go to sleep and Try not to wake everyone up again. I'm honestly fuming. My boyfriend is sleeping soundly and I'm just lying here getting madder and madder. I want to wake him up so he can leave because I feel so uncomfortable. I really don't want to face everyone in the morning. I don't feel like I did anything wrong, but I don't know if I'm thinking rationally because I'm tired and I can't fall back asleep. So what do you think? Am I the jerk? Now guys, I'll tell you what's scary. Lighting a match just sends shivers down my spine. What an absolute load of rubbish. One of the most ridiculous stories I've ever read. This family just sounds a little bit weird and controlling and it kind of sounds like you've walked into a cult here. I'm not even joking. I'm getting cult vibes. Like they're locking you into things that you can and can't do. You can't have the bathroom fan on at night even for a couple of seconds. Seriously? It's a bit ridiculous. What, you'd rather the rooms just stink? It's it's a horrible thing, isn't it? Because it's going to make OP feel extremely insecure and, as you said, uncomfortable in your boyfriend's home. And the fact that your boyfriend is sticking up, not for you, 
But for his family and his dad, absolutely ridiculous, given that he knows exactly what you're going through and the reasons why you had to like the match in the first place. You're trying your hardest. He's saying, just go to sleep, jerk. Am I the jerk for interrupting my son's dates so he could pick up his little sister? I am a single father to two children, Max, a 17-year-old boy, and Lisa, an 8-year-old girl. I usually have Lisa in after-school clubs so that I'm able to pick her up after work. However, yesterday evening, I was given some work that had me working overtime. I did try my best to negotiate out of it, but my manager told me that the assignment was to be completed by that night, so I just did. It was nearing towards 6 p.m. and I just knew I wouldn't be able to make it to Lisa. So I called Max and asked him to pick her up. He responded by saying that he couldn't because he was on a date with his girlfriend for their sixth month anniversary. I told him that I understood, but that I really needed him to get Lisa and that I'd make it up to him for interrupting. He just angrily turned off the phone and I thought that while he was mad, he just decided to pick her up. But 30 minutes later, I receive a call from Lisa's school as to where I was, as the school was close to closing down and nobody was there. Luckily, one of Lisa's friend's mothers said they'd drop her off and that was all good. However, I don't really like it when Lisa goes with that particular friend. Not because of the friend, but because of the mother. She has this habit of asking maths questions in the car that she knows Lisa is unable to answer and then she criticizes her over it. It's all just very mean. I called Max and asked him where he was and that he was in big trouble when he got home. He just told me that he was busy and to leave him the hell alone. He came home at around 9 p.m. I told him he was grounded and that he was not allowed to use the car for a good three weeks. At that, he got all mad and said that it wasn't his fault. I was failing as a parent and unable to afford someone to collect Lisa. I just want some insight on this situation. Was I being too harsh? And am I the jerk for interrupting his dates? Now, this is an interesting one because from my point of view, if I put myself in your son Max's position, there is nothing I can think of that is worse than my date with my girlfriend being interrupted by my dad. Fair enough, from Max's perspective, that is just not something that you want to have happen. And I completely understand that. However, from your point of view, the stuff that he is saying to you is absolutely mental. I'm sorry, it is. The fact that he's saying you failed as a parent because you're unable to afford to collect your daughter is crazy. And for that alone, like, yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. He has to be grounded. Simple as that. Less so the fact that he didn't pick your daughter up when you asked, more because of this complete disrespect. I'm going to be honest, he really should have gone and picked her up. Like, that is the least he could do. But I I wouldn't hold a grudge against him if he was really angry in doing so. And like you said, you thought he just turned the phone off and went and did it and was angry, and that was okay. However, that, and then on top of that, the stuff he said to you, no, you're definitely not the jerk. It's just it's just a tough situation for him, but you can't react like that. That is absolutely disgraceful. Now, interestingly, OP has actually added some more info. Max and Lisa's mother. By the way, I know it's probably Liza, but I called her Lisa off the rip, so I'm going to stick with Lisa. Max and Lisa's mother is not present in their lives. And no, he doesn't like socializing with parents at Lisa's school. Fair enough. He works a lot of the time hasn't found time outside of the yearly parent meetings. Completely fair enough. And then also he says, OP this is, that this is the third time that he's asked Max to pick up his sister in the span of a year and a half. So it's not a regular thing. And again, some people are asking why they don't have a nanny. Money is tight. Fair enough. You're doing all you can. It's not as if you're like, you know, slinking off and doing what you want to do. You're working hard. Your boss has got you locked in at work. It's a tough one. It really is. And I do feel for Max a little bit. But once again, you can't be saying those sort of things to your father. Am I the jerk for giving my mum the wrong start time for my birthday lunch so she'd be on time? I am a 22 year old woman and my mum who's in her mid 40s is one of those people who is always late to everything I'm talking family get-togethers birthdays graduations weddings. You name it. She's showing up late at first growing up I just thought it was because she's bad with time But as i've gotten older, I genuinely believe she likes making an entrance I personally find it one rude and two embarrassing as it's not like it happens once in a while It literally happens at every single function she's invited to that has a set time Many family members have complained about this, but nothing ever changes It's gone to the point that whenever my grandma has family lunches or dinners She'll tell my mum it starts an hour earlier than it actually does So she'll be there on time My mum doesn't know that my grandma does this. It's a joke between my grandma and me. This past weekend was my 22nd birthday. My grandma wanted to do a lunch for me at her place with our immediate family. 
The lunch was to start at 2 p.m. But we told my mum 1 p.m. I had plans later that evening to go out for dinner with my boyfriend So I wanted to leave my grandma's house at around 5 at the absolute latest because I needed to go home and get all ready Well, of course my mum was late We called her at about 2 30 p.m. To see where she was because you know, it's her daughter's birthday She just left her house at 2 30 p.m. And still had to pick up her boyfriend on her way to my grandma's which is 30 to 35 minutes away Way. So none of us were expecting her to arrive until about half past three She finally arrives two and a half hours late from the time we told her and makes her little entrance We question her about it. She tells us she thought the lunch started at two We asked her where she heard this from and she said my aunt who was present at the lunch told her We questioned my aunt and she said that she felt bad lying to my mum. Everyone is pretty annoyed, but we all move on Fast forward an hour later at half past four and I have to start leaving My mum starts getting all annoyed with me that i'm leaving so soon and that she barely got to see me for my birthday I told her that my life doesn't revolve around her and that she should have been there sooner She started giving me attitude and listing all these excuses as to why she's late I couldn't be bothered to hear them and I left later that night She messaged me saying that I was acting like a jerk towards her and it was rude of me to lie to her about the time the lunch started My mum and my aunt think i'm the jerk for lying to her My grandma doesn't think it's a big deal and that they're overreacting I came here for some outside opinions now the reason I picked this story out in the first place is because it's very pertinent to me Or at least I thought it was going to be I am someone that massively struggles with time issues time management It's something that i've tried to work on. I'm still just naturally very bad at it Call it laziness call it lack of you know, whatever you want. I don't care but The truth is I do struggle with it However, when there is a set time for something to start like an event or you know You go to the the cinema or the theater or something and you know that it starts at this certain time or someone's birthday Officially starts at a certain time. I'm not gonna go late then and make an entrance Like who does that? Sorry, that's just strange. Like yeah, look I hold my hands up Sometimes I do happen to be a little bit late, but i'm not choosing to do that nor am I coming in making a big entrance I'm coming in sheepishly and saying yeah, sorry i'm late. Um, but i'm here now You know, that's it. I'm not doing this. This is ridiculous. And also the fact that she's then saying to you on your birthday Oh, why have we only seen you for just a couple of hours? I want to see you for longer No, everyone else saw you for quite a few hours, you know a good birthday celebration You came late and that is why you clown once again for the fourth time this video so far No You're not the jerk. Tell you what, we're on a good little streak here. Am I the jerk for becoming that parent by causing a stink at my daughter's school? My daughter, Cleo, who is 11, is very active outside of school. She plays soccer, takes swim lessons, and will play outside a lot with neighborhood kids. She's very social. Most of her friends are from outside of school. At school, however, she struggles making friends. Cleo has ADHD and was bullied in third and fourth grade for some of that. While it was brought under control by the fifth, her current grade, These kids still don't play with her and pretty much ice her out. While I don't think that they have to play with her, it also means that she doesn't socialize a lot at school. She's okay with this. Her teacher says our daughter often plays alone at recess or reads. My wife and I were not very concerned and explained she's very social and active afterwards. Cleo is a huge reader. She's currently reading her way through my wife's collection of books from her childhood. She loves them and treasures them knowing they were her mama's and wants to take great care of them She came home on tuesday very upset and worried her mum would be upset with her I asked why and she said her teacher took her book away and won't give it back until tomorrow When pressed for more information, she said she was reading at recess Her teacher walked over took the book and told her to go play My daughter begged for her book back and the teacher Refused I quickly assured Cleo that she wasn't in any trouble and even called my wife at work to have her back me up It was quite concerning that she was so afraid as my wife isn't one to fly off the handle She's always gentle with Cleo as suspected My wife assured her she wasn't upset and that Cleo did zero wrong the next day I brought Cleo to school early and walked her to class. No one but the teacher was there I told the teacher to give me the book. She obliged and tried to defend herself I told her to save it and she had no right There is no rule that cleo has to do physical activity at recess and we expressed no concern The teacher said that she was allowed to set boundaries for her class But I pointed out that recess was free time. It's not like cleo is reading during math 
We went back and forth and finally I said i'd be reaching out to the principal the issue was resolved quickly I don't know the particulars except the principal told me that cleo is allowed to read at recess And unless she is actively harming someone or reading during a non-designated time She wouldn't have any more books confiscated My wife and I were pleased Cleo even more so. My cousin is a teacher at this school, just a different grade. And she says what I did is hot gossip in the teacher's lounge and that I've been marked as one of those parents. She says the teacher isn't paid enough and I should have just accepted the rule. When I pointed out we only have two more months left at this school, Cleo is our only and starts junior high in August, that's not a concern. My wife and I feel justified, but we're wondering if I'm a jerk. See, I think this is actually incredibly harsh that you've been labeled as one of those parents in the staff room because we all know what one of those parents means, right? It's someone that's just pretty much a Karen, right? Someone that just complains about every little thing, thinks their child is above other children, is just an absolute angel, whatever. And you no, know, you know, they always say like, no, you need to be doing this with my child, do this with my child, give special treatment, etc., etc. We all know what that means. Now, This is the complete opposite of that. You're complaining because your child has not been allowed to read a book in their free time, something that is educational anyway. That is extremely strange, first of all. And second of all, yes, absolutely you should be allowed to complain about this. And the fact of the matter is that the issue was resolved and the principal got involved and took your side, right? They don't have to do that just because you're a parent. They could have easily said, listen, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but this is how we run the school. If you were saying something ridiculous, But the fact of the matter is they know that what you're saying is right and therefore it's been changed I don't know how you've now become one of those parents. That's ridiculous And and just to make it completely clear. No, of course you are not the jerk I also have no idea how a teacher's pay has anything to do with her overstepping boundaries I don't care how much money you get or how little money you get Don't tell someone on recess to not read a book strange behavior All right, let's see if we can make it through this entire episode without actually coming across a jerk maybe for the first time ever am i the jerk for asking for more money for my car so i a 28 year old man offered to sell my rav4 that has a hundred thousand miles on it in january to my brother and his wife they have a baby and a beat up honda civic as well as a scion with way too many miles on it they shared they'd be car hunting this year i offered to sell it to them for what carvana offered which was fourteen and a half thousand dollars and they agreed to it right away The problem is that my wife and I still haven't picked out our replacement car. So they check in every week or so, but we weren't ready. In the end, we decided to hold on to the car until our trip to Disney this past week. I checked Carvana again and they'd offered me more. This time, $16,500. I texted my brother telling him that he could have it, but he would need to match Carvana's new offer. He responded saying that they're not haggling and they've been put off buying a car for months as they thought we had an agreement and they were just waiting on us. They called me a jerk for stringing them along for three months and then asking for $2,000 more. I'm just trying to do what is right by my two kids and one on the way. So am I in the wrong? Well, it was all going so well and now it's all fallen off a cliff. That is a real shame. I thought for the first time ever we might have a clean sweep, but alas, this is r slash am I the jerk and we were bound to find one eventually and, and I'm sorry to say here we did and this one isn't really up for debate. It's pretty clear. Maybe I get it like you're a bit annoyed that the price has changed and you would have made more money, but the fact is you literally have said to somebody you can have it for this price and it's your brother as well. I mean, come on. You can't then change your mind and go back on that and I agree. You have been stringing them along for a few months. That's on you. I think off the rip you should have just done it quickly or at least set a date for this transaction to actually take place and for you to transfer over the keys because this was just a mess right from the off and the fact that you're charging your own brother and his family that you know need this car very much more money than you did at first yeah it's very ludicrous and i'm I'm sorry to say that we have ended today's episode with a jerk unless you disagree of course guys i mean maybe you disagree on on the previous five stories but for me it was all going so well five ops in the right and then bang hit by this absolute idiot. A little bit strong, but I think that's kind of fair. Asking for more money from your own brother for something you've already agreed on. That is disgraceful. And what else is disgraceful, you ask? Not subscribing. Am I the jerk for stealing my cat? So I, a 21-year-old woman, have a beautiful brown cat, Mitch. She's still a baby and is 10 months old. I found her outside of my work when she was about two to three months old and I immediately fell in love with her. We've had the best time together and her being my first pet since moving out makes me even happier. My cousin, Tanya, who is 15, visits me a lot since we live in the same city and I enjoy having her. She also really likes cats 
but since her father is allergic they don't have any at home she really loves coming over to see midge and i'm glad to be able to provide her with midge's presence School recently started and before I go back to full-time student I've been having to work almost 45 hours a week to afford my lifestyle for the next couple of months Since I was busy I let her have the responsibility of taking care of mitch such as feeding her cleaning her litter box, etc It was going really well now one time I didn't have the chance to take tanya home since I was going to be at work So I gave her my spare key to lock up and I scheduled an uber to take her to her house When I came home eight hours later midge was gone I called tanya and she swore that midge was home when she left But after a couple of hours my brother called asking when I gave midge to tanya I was confused and he sent me a screenshot of tanya kissing midge on her instagram story I knew then that she'd blocked me from being able to see her and was shocked that she would do this to me as well as lie to me I had a spare key to their house and I went right over and took midge back when they weren't home When I got home tanya called screaming at me over the phone telling me I broke into their house and stole her property I laughed and I asked how midge was hers. She told me since she took care of her She deserved her since I wasn't home and she had to save midge Her parents were also pretty upset since I did go into their home without permission And they told me that I didn't deserve midge from what tanya told them They told me they decided my uncle is going to take allergy medication and so that midge can stay there and i needed to give her back of course i said no tanya ended up calling my mum, lying to her that i abused midge my mum called angry asking me how i could do this to midge and if i don't give her to tanya and her family she will disown me tanya texted me this weekend saying that if i apologize she might forgive me Her parents have been texting me all weekend that they're gonna press charges since I did go into their home and they're gonna take Midge. I just don't know what to do. I love Midge so much and my mum gave my aunt and uncle permission to go to my apartment and take her. I know this because Tanya texted me this. I'm assuming to scare me. And I am scared. I'm so scared that one of these days I'm gonna come home and Midge is gonna be gone again. My brother and dad think I'm a jerk since I did go into their home without permission and I acted out without trying to solve it maturely. So am I the jerk for stealing my own cats? Now guys, good news. There is actually an update to this r slash am I the jerk post. But first of all, I wanna give my opinion and there is no way that you're in the wrong here. Now, funnily enough, I have a story myself which is quite comparable. My dad back in the day had his bike stolen, right? A tough thing. Not as bad as a cat, of course, but a tough story nonetheless. However, he was walking about in the local streets of wherever he lived and he saw it in the front garden of a house it was unmistakably his so what did he do well he jumped the fence got the bike and left now is that stealing is my question it's his own bike that was stolen from him and he then technically stole it back from someone else's property is that illegal i don't think it is and let's bring it back to this example if you're stealing an animal stealing an animal that is yours then it's not stealing is it it was stolen from you you're just getting it back one it's not stealing and two It's definitely not immoral. In fact, it's the right thing to do. You're just rehousing your pets. Actually, before we jump into the update, which was posted just a few days later, first of all, some edits. OP has said, they called and left a voicemail to their landlord, giving a brief explanation of the situation. OP is upset since they asked for him to change the locks, but the landlord refused. Legally, he was able to since as a college student, OP's mum's name is on the lease and he needed her permission. Of course, he called and she refused. I've got to say, Opie's parents' role in this is very interesting. The fact that they're believing Opie's cousin rather than their daughter is a little bit weird, but hey. Nonetheless, Opie has said that she is scared that Tanya is going to come tomorrow and take the cat back, but Opie does have a friend who can take Midge for the day before work. Okay, interesting stuff. Next edit is that Opie has said that they've set up an appointment for Midge to get microchipped this Saturday on their day off. Well, that seems like a great idea to me. They've also ordered a small security camera that covers the whole living room and front door. They're still requesting their landlord to change the locks, but he still has his foot down. And OP cannot move out since where she lives, it is pretty hard to get a place. And basically everything requires credits, which OP does not have. Oh, now, how about this? This is an interesting turn of events. OP says, The only negative side is that Tanya has been posting pictures of Midge on Instagram claiming that I stole her and have received lots of messages from her friends and classmates from school trying to cancel and dox me. 
Now that I don't really care about. Now Tanya's parents have called me giving me a second chance to reconsider before they press charges, which I highly doubt they would actually do. In regards to my mum, we're not talking and I don't want to go no contact with her since I love my mum very much. I'm sure after all of this resolves, we're going to have a mature conversation about how she acted and what was wrong. Now, here we go. Let's get into the updates. I took a lot of people's advice and I got Midge microchip yesterday. As well, I had a conversation with my mum that we resolved together. My landlord still refuses to change my logs. But despite all of this, today, this morning, Midge was taken. I called my aunt and uncle and they just laughed and told me, try, we can hire a good lawyer. I called the police and I explained the situation, showing proof I had ownership of Midge. When we went to my relative's house, police asked for her back, but of course they refused. What made me even angrier was that my cousin was inside the house, door open, holding Midge with a poop eating grin. That is awful. Even though I had all this evidence, my relatives slammed the door demanding a warrant. The police suggested I press charges and take it to small claims court, which I am doing, but they couldn't do anything right there. Going home without Midge was so upsetting. I had to pull over because I started crying. I contacted an attorney and my cousin keeps posting photos of Midge on her Instagram. I took the situation to the family group chat in anger and good news at least, everyone hates them now. My grandmother wrote my uncle and his family off the will. And of course, they're calling me, threatening me with Midge and then make sure that I go to jail for all of this. Now, I'm fairly confident in myself, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned about Midge. I just want my baby back and i've been crying all day screw you tanya but guys the story doesn't end there five weeks later we got this final update hi everyone i'll be honest i forgot about this post for a bit after everything i just want to also say thank you to those specific people you know who you are who reached out to me across reddit to help with finances as attorneys are expensive and i'm only a student how amazing is that by the way that is the power of the internet But yes, I just want to say Midge is home. Small claims court came around and my attorney was very confident and helped me out so much. She was very helpful and knew from the start that we would win. I provided the judge everything. Yes, everything you guys commented as proof that I own her. Photos of her as a baby, proof I've paid for all the vet bills since she was a baby, and proof that I had Midge chipped. My landlord also helped. Although a lot of people were upset with him and telling me to move out, he was remorseful that his decision had consequences. I've forgiven him as his apology came with security footage of my aunt and uncle going into my apartment and taking Midge. Well, that could have been the most important piece of evidence of them all. We've been no contact since the case, and they've been silent, most likely embarrassed. To end this on a good note, I wish I could have taken a picture of Tanya's face when she handed Midge back to me. And there we go. I'm absolutely delighted for you, OP, that that story has a happy ending. Now, look, I've never really owned a pet that, let's just say, now I don't want to sound harsh. I don't want to sound harsh on my previous pets and Marty, my current snake. But look, there's a difference, isn't there, between having a snake as a pet and having a dog or a cat as a pet. A snake just, I'll be honest, kind of just chills out the whole day. Now, look, I'm not going to say that me and Marty don't have a great brotherly bond because trust me we do but it's not the same it's not the same as having a dog or a cat so i can only imagine what this what this period of your life was like op to have your own cousin your 15 year old cousin steal your cat yeah guys you know cat owners dog owners maybe you have a closer bond than i do with my with my pet and i'm being harsh i don't know maybe i am marty's been in the videos before and i don't want to put bad words on his snake skin i really don't but you know you must kind of get where i'm coming from guys so look if you own a dog or a cat comment down below how would you feel in this situation i'm interested to hear your thoughts and yeah maybe i'd feel the same i don't know thankfully i've never been in this spot let's move on am i the jerk for blowing up on my husband over chicken alfredo i a 38 year old woman am married to my husband who is 42 we've been together since our early 20s and have three small children who are all under 10. He is a mechanic and works anywhere from 60 to 80 hours a week while I work as a hostess three days a week at a restaurant while the kids are at school. I do the majority of the housework and childcare and I don't mind as I understand that he has a hard job and works a lot. 
He gets the kids on the bus every morning as he leaves for work about 10 minutes afterwards All I ask of him apart from that is to do his own laundry as his clothes are covered in oil and grime and need to go in by themselves and pick up after himself because the kids destroy the house enough a couple of times a week he'll help with dinner and clean up at the end of the day as well now guys i need to mention at this stage that this story starts off quite light and you're thinking okay nothing sounds too serious but there are a couple of updates to come down the line and trust me you are going to want to stick around to hear what happens at the end it is mental but for now, let's go back to the to the chillness. Over the last two months, my husband has completely stopped helping though. He dumps his clothes on the laundry room floor. His half of the bedroom is a mess. He leaves cans and wrappers all over the living room. And he's even stopped getting the kids up, which has upset them as they love their mornings with dad. He's also been coming home hours later than usual. I've been letting it slide as he seems very stressed out. But a few days ago, he snapped at me for being a trashy wife for letting his clothes go unwashed. I reminded him that he always did his own laundry and he hadn't asked me to do it. I've been doing it, I just hadn't gotten to it yet. He just grumbled and went to go and watch TV. Now, last night I made chicken Alfredo. We have it about once a week because the kids love it and no one's ever complained. Well, he bead and moaned through the whole dinner, saying that since I'm not taking care of the house, I should at least put a good meal on the table that I've just been letting the whole family go to trash and that I should be ashamed of myself for treating him and his children like that. He called me a bad wife and mother in front of our children. I told the children to go to their rooms and I snapped. I screamed at him about how much I do for the household. That if it wasn't for me, the place would be trashed. And he's got no right to treat me like this over chicken Alfredo. We went back and forth for a while before he left and I have no idea where he went. He's not answering my calls or texts. I feel bad now, as I shouldn't have reacted like that. Especially because I know he's just stressed from work, but it all just kind of built up and came out at once. I just want to know if I was wrong for freaking out on him like that. Now, there is an update to come, as I said. But before we get into that, guys, first of all, I want to pick out a couple of relevant comments, which OP has replied to. First of all, the top comments. I sincerely hope I'm mistaken, but your husband may be having an affair and setting you up to be the bad wife and mother to justify his behavior. OP replied, the thought of an affair hadn't really crossed my mind. I know that his job lost an employee, so the workload has gotten bigger. So I really hope it's just that. Another editor says, in the past two months, have you attempted to find out why your partner has changed so drastically? OP replies, I've asked him, but he tends to brush me off and says that he doesn't want to think about work. I do know they recently lost that employee and the workload has gotten bigger for everyone, but he's had co-workers quit in the past and never behave like this. Someone else asks, have you looked at his paychecks recently? I guess hinting that something else could be going on. OP says, he gets direct deposit to his account that I have no access to and then transfers the amount for bills into our joint accounts. I'm not sure what he does with his pay stubs as I've never seen them. And finally, one commenter says that something is awry and it's not you, OP. Couples counseling is needed now, but keep a watch on your money and protect the kids. It sounds like your husband is checking out. So guys, update is incoming imminently. But before we get into that, whatever platform you are on, if you have the ability to comment, I want you to get down into the comment section and type out what you think is going on here. Exactly what do you think the husband is doing? Now, I'll give you some options because it doesn't have to be that he's having an affair. There are a few things I think that could also have happened. Now, I've not read on, so I actually don't know myself at this stage. But what I'm thinking is that he could easily have also lost his job and is trying to cover that up. Now, just because he's leaving the house doesn't mean he's going to work. He could just be doing something else or who knows, sitting in his car, just groveling and, and just doesn't want to admit to you and the family that he's lost his job and the, you know, the financial implications that could have on your family. That's just my thinking right now. And he's trying to cover it up in some form but he's obviously just in a terrible mood because of that and that may be what's going on guys what do you think get in the comments i want to know your thoughts but don't cheat yeah don't just comment after you've already seen this update that i'm about to give you that would be bad practice and i wouldn't like that so be honest for me nonetheless here is the update i'm excited to see what happens i called my husband for the hundredth time because he still hadn't come home and the kids wanted to know where he was and a woman answered I didn't recognize her voice and he doesn't have a sister. I asked her to put me on the phone with my husband and she asked who I was. I said I was his wife and she laughed into the phone and told me he was busy. 
we went back and forth with her laughing at me the whole time before telling me she'll send him home soon and hanging up oh my gosh it's now the next morning and he's still not home i really didn't think he was cheating i'd really hoped this was just a rough patch but it looks like most of you were right i'm heartbroken and a little in shock and not really sure what to do right now my brother said i should come stay with him and i might or maybe just bring the kids so they don't have to see us fight i might update again or i might not but i'm sure you all know where this is heading anyway uh you know guys i I kind of wanted this not to be the case but i did have a little bit of an inclination if you said an affair was going on congratulations you were right but there is one more update update two he came home a few hours after i last updated i immediately confronted him about the woman answering he denied cheating saying it was one of his friends messing with me because he stayed at a friend's house and they must have answered his phone i told him i don't believe him and to pack some things and leave because i want a divorce he blew up at this telling me it was his home even though my parents bought us the house when we got married and that he was not going to leave we argued for a while until i called my brother My brother lives about 20 minutes away, so he got to the house very quickly. And once he got there, my husband calmed down and packed a bag. Once he was gone, my brother helped me contact a divorce lawyer. My brother and his wife check in with us every day. We're all safe and I've had very minimal contact with my now ex-husband. I probably won't update again. And there we go. A sad, unfortunate ending to this one. What I can't really wrap my head around is once you've been caught blatantly cheating, which is the only thing that can be going on here, why at that point do you still make excuses and say, no, I wasn't, man. I was doing something else. What? You can't kick me out. I didn't do anything wrong. This is my house as well. Like, come on. At least have the decency to when you've been caught, hold your hands up and say, yeah, I've been a jerk. I've ruined our lives great but no even in that critical moment you're like uh yeah what you're lying how can you say this get all angry the sort of person that would cheat and have an affair on your wife is the sort of person that wouldn't admit to it once caught i will say that so maybe it makes sense i don't know guys if you commented down below congratulations i hope you're happy you predicted someone being cheated on and their life being ruined well done i was i just thought someone had lost their job at work pretty minimal but no you guys wanted the downfall of an entire family are you happy are you happy you commented that i hope you are am i the jerk for not telling my girlfriend that my parents are gay i am a 25 year old man and i have two parents my birth dad john who's 48 and my other dad Dwayne, who's 45 i call my birth dad john dad and i call my other dad Dwayne pops my birth dad john was married to my mum for a few years then she left my dad and yeah They ended up divorcing and now she's somewhere in California. I don't know where or what she's doing. I haven't talked to her in ages. So dad and pops I'm super close with. They are the best parents any child could ask for. I love both of them and they've always been with me. My dad introduced me to pops when I was a little boy and they told me they were in a relationship and I was all for it because I saw my dad become lonely and sad when he was single. So seeing the fact that my dad loves someone and has a life partner made me super happy. Pops and dad got married and we've been living an amazing life. I'm probably more close to pops than my own dad due to the fact that pops is really cool and laid back. Of course, I love both of them equally and they love me as well and I'm blessed to have them as parents. For a few months, I've been dating this girl, Bella, who's my age. I thought she's pretty cute and I liked her, so we kicked it. And recently, she told me, my parents want to meet your parents and want to come over for dinner. I said, sure, I'll tell my family. So yesterday, Friday night, Bella comes in. Pops greets her and says, come on in, sweetheart. Dinner is ready. She says, you must be Opie's dad. So good to meet you. And she shakes his hand. And then she sees dad come out of the kitchen. He's holding the mac and cheese tray with the mittens and is putting it on the table. Then Bella says, who's he? I said, oh, that's my dad. She said, I thought he's your dad, referring to Pops. I say, yeah, that's my Pops and that's my dad. She pulls me to the side and says, I didn't know your parents are gay. Oh my God, why didn't you tell me? I genuinely didn't know why. Would that be an issue or something? Because you're dating me, not my parents and all. So it shouldn't matter. But I guess it's a concern for her. Her parents come to the door after they park the car. And Bella tells her parents, let's leave. And they left. I told my parents, I'm sorry. And they said, son, don't worry. This is nothing new. And then we all sat down and enjoyed dinner and went to sleep. So am I the jerk for not telling? Well, the saddest part about that story is the ending. Your parents saying to you, this is nothing new. Unfortunately, 
It's a fact. Homophobia is still rife in 2023. Very, very sad to see. I mean, look, no doubt there's been a lot of progression. My uncles, for example, were able to get married a few years ago. So that's great. However, we have to change the hearts and minds of so many out there that are still just disgusting people. I don't know what the problem is. I really don't. Yeah, maybe you could have told her beforehand, but there's no reason to tell her. Like, I wouldn't tell my girlfriend before meeting my parents, oh, by the way, my parents are straight. So I wouldn't tell her, oh, by the way, my parents are gay. Like, it's not a thing. It doesn't matter. As you said, she's dating you, not your parents. I don't know why that would be a problem. Yeah, just simple homophobia. And that's very sad to see. But at least now you know. That's always a positive. Am I the jerk for falsely accusing a veteran of stolen valor when she couldn't give any details about her service? I am a 34-year-old man and I served as a captain in the Marine Corps. I've left the service and right now I'm doing an MBA. One of my classmates, a 31-year-old woman who we'll call Jess, is very gentle, very soft-spoken and unassuming. Jess and I were working together on a case study once and I started opening up to her about my military service and all the lessons that I've learned from the Corps. Jess enthusiastically told me, that's so cool. I was a surface warfare officer in the Navy. I immediately felt suspicious about this claim. As I said, Jess is very demure and she doesn't really have the bravado that is required in the military environment. At least I feel like a certain amount of bravado is required. Yes, I still humored her, and I began asking about the details of her military experience, where she deployed, what courses she went through, what ship she served on, etc, etc. Suddenly, Jess got all tight-lipped, and she couldn't say anything specific about military life. She kept making excuses along the lines of, it just wasn't a good period of my life, and I'd rather not talk about it. Eventually, I felt like I'd done enough snooping around and I bluntly told her that she was BSing and that I'd rather not work with a phony. I talked about this experience with my friend Max at our school's veterans organization. I told Max to be wary of anything Jess says. Max responded by telling me that Jess did serve. He's seen her paperwork and ID and everything and that in fact, one of her MBA recommendation letters was written by a retired rear admiral who held Jess in high regard. Whoops. The next time I met Jess, before our class started, I tried to act chummy towards her and make up for accusing her of being a liar. She laughed in my face and told me to pan sound poorly. And for those of you who don't know, yes, she was being derisive here. So, am I the jerk? Yeah, this is just making me cringe horrifically. This is so embarrassing. You can just, I can just like see this in my mind. I can hear OP's tone of voice saying, uh, yeah, you're not military. I am, by the way, just gloating horrifically and trying to catch someone out when there's just no need to. It's just like, it's, it's giving absolute jealousy vibes here and just, you know, arrogance and trying to make your ego feel amazing and just, you know, feeling good about yourself for no real reason, putting other people down. I, I don't see the point. Why does she have to prove to you that she was in the military? She doesn't. Can't you yourself just be happy that you were in the military and be proud of what you did and that can be that and not just like be really cynical about someone else? It's just embarrassing. And yeah, saying pound sand poorly, take, take it, you know, you deserve it. I'm sorry. If anything, she should have gone harder than that. I'm sorry. It's quite embarrassing from your perspective that you are undermining someone who's put, you know, their country first and, and, and spent all those years in the Navy for you just to say, yeah, I don't believe you. I'm calling BS. And you're downright wrong. Embarrassing, arrogance personified. You are the jerk. Yeah, I've just read this comment right here. You're the jerk. And I'm guessing being a veteran is 90% of your personality. I'm sure he works it into every conversation possible. Exactly. Am I the jerk for telling my girlfriend that I told her so after one of her male friends tried to get with her? My girlfriend and I have been together for about a year now. My girlfriend has more than a few guy friends, and I'm not one of those guys that thinks men and women can't be friends. However, with two of these guys, it's very clear that they want more than just friendship with her. Like, clear as day, to the point where I don't get how she doesn't see it. If I can notice just by the weird energy they try to exude when I'm present, she should be able to get it too, right? Wrong. Anytime I pointed this out, she gets upset with me. She tells me that I'm being jealous and reading into things that aren't there. I argue back that I'm just letting her know, and as a guy, I can probably tell much better than she can since women tend to be a little slow regarding things like this. So, Two nights ago, she was hanging out with her friends and this guy was present. From what she told me, they were all drinking and he said some things that implied he'd want to be with her. She was made uncomfortable by this and the night ended shortly after. Fast forward to yesterday morning. She got a series of texts apologizing for what he said. 
but then backpedaling and saying he would treat her so much better than me and that she's wasting her time with me. She of course said no and was upset with him. After she told me, I just read the text and simply said, wow, who could have seen this coming? A bit sarcastically. This set her off and she got mad. She said that I was being such a huge jerk to her and she had no way of seeing this coming. She's been angry at me since. So, am I the jerk? Okay then, interesting one here. I actually don't think you're in the wrong here for for the overall context of what happened. You know, what you said did happen and you saw it coming a mile away and yeah, you were right. So I don't think you're necessarily the full jerk. What I will say is that the way you went about this was very jerk-like. I mean, first of all, saying that women are a little slow on things like this is just sexist, not gonna lie. And then gloating in her face, your your girlfriend's face after the fact, when she has clearly been in an uncomfortable position and actually didn't see this going on, it's not the right thing to do. Surely you'd be supportive there and you say, yes, you know, of course you saw this coming, but you're still gonna be there for your girlfriend and at least, you know, be nice, not just say, oh yeah. What a shock. Like, who's that going to help? It's funny because Redditors have said on Reddit here that you definitely are the jerk. And I don't completely agree because I think if you're in that position yourself, it can also be uncomfortable. And sometimes it's nice to be justified with your opinion by things like this happening. But I would say that there's no need to get all cocky about it. You're still in a relationship with this woman. You don't want to be a jerk to her. Am I the jerk for labeling all the bottles in the house because my adult children are idiots? I have two of my children living with me. One has graduated from college and the other is a junior. I have to purchase medicated shampoo because of a scalp condition. It's by prescription and it's expensive. It also comes in packaging that is meant to be stored uprights. Not on its side and definitely not upside down. My daughter has her hair products in the shower and I do not touch them. My son also keeps his Axe body wash, shampoo, conditioner, women repellent in the shower. I also do not touch it since I have zero desire to smell like a high school locker room. I keep my shampoo in there as well since it's my house and I can keep my stuff wherever I want. For some reason, the two of them cannot understand that not all packaging is meant to be upside down. They've already wasted an entire bottle of my shampoo by storing it upside down after they touched it for some reason. It all dripped out the spout, which it's not engineered for. I talked to both of them and I explained that they should not touch my stuff and that if they accidentally tip over my shampoo, it was meant to be stored with the lid at the top. I came home last week to find my shampoo leaking out of the bottle again, upside down. So I ordered 500 stickers that say this side up with an arrow pointing upwards when the words are upright. And I put them on everything in the house that might leak with my shampoo being literally covered in them. They had friends over last weekend and they noticed that the relish, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, etc., were all labeled. My kids were embarrassed when they explained why. They think I'm a jerk for putting labels on everything since they only screw with my shampoo. But since it's $80 a bottle, I said I'd take off all the labels if they agree to pay for my shampoo. Thus far, they have declined. I mean, this is just brilliant. Yes, it's very petty. Yes, it's patronizing, but... I think it's completely fair, especially when you're paying $80. I mean, that is a sizable amount of money for a prescription for medicine, right? And it's getting ruined by your children. It is your house. I say do what you want. The, the, the easy thing to do would say, listen, you ruined my, my product, my, my medicine. you got to pay me for it, right? I need to go and get some more. It's medicinal. I need it. You, you've you ruined it. I need the $80. So let's be honest, they can count themselves quite fortunate that you've not forced them to pay up. However, this, if anything, is a much better way of getting your point across. Lovely stuff. And yeah, as you said, if you're going to remove the labels for them, then they're going to have to pay you the cash, which they're obviously not going to do. So I love it. Am I the jerk for man spreading on a plane? A few months ago, I, a 26-year-old man, was alone on a long flight, roughly six hours. I had a middle seat between a young woman in her 20s in the window seat and another woman in her 30s on the aisle. Now, I'm tall and I'm never comfortable on planes. My knees always dig into the seat in front and it can be quite painful. I usually try to take a walk around the airport before flights to stretch my legs, but I neglected to this time. It was Spirit Airlines, so even less legroom than usual. About half an hour after takeoff, I found my left knee inching to the side for the sweet relief of open space, specifically the no man's land in between seats, level with the shared armrest. But I wasn't paying attention to my knee the entire time. I'll concede it's possible that at some point I was occupying space that rightfully belonged to my window seat neighbor. All was well for roughly two hours. But at this point, the woman in the window seat called over the flight attendant. She asked her something like, could you tell him to keep his freaking leg in his own freaking seat? With horror, I understood that she was talking about me. 
I instantly retracted my leg in deep shame. She added something about his enormous pee-pee. My understanding was that it was meant to be a snide reference to the idea that spreading your legs is about male genital comfort, but she wasn't speaking very clearly and the flight attendant didn't seem to understand her. The flight attendant asked her some sort of clarifying question, but she didn't answer and eventually the attendant went away. I'd been shocked into silence, but when the attendant left, I frantically began to apologize. However, she refused to speak to me. She acted like she didn't hear me. Instead, she started furiously texting on her phone. Yes, texting during a flight, I thought it was weird too. Our seat woman said she had some extra space on her side that I could use, but then promptly went to sleep. Oh well. I tried again to apologize to window seat woman, but again, she ignored me. I went from embarrassed to confused. I kept replaying it in my head, wondering why she didn't simply ask me to move my knee instead of calling over the attendant. I started sneaking peeks at her phone. My defense is that I was baffled by her behavior and wanted answers. I'll admit that I was being judgmental too, but here's why. She spent the last three hours of the flight watching TikToks about shaming obese people and texting someone she called Pappy. I didn't see all of it, but a significant portion was definitely about me. She wrote, men really do be too much sometimes with a laughing emoji. She ignored me the whole rest of the fly and I ignored her. I got a good but painful workout of whatever muscle it is that keeps your knees together. See, this is honestly a tough one. I, I don't know. Look, I, I, don't, I actually don't know what I think about this. Realistically, this bloke shouldn't be doing this, right? I hold my hands up. If you know you're tall and you know you're going to have problem in a middle seat, it, it's a tough one. However, like what now that you're in that position and you're with I mean, I just, you can tell i'm conflicted here right i really don't know if i put myself in that spot i'm quite tall i'm not I mean, i'm not that tall i'm six foot if i put myself in that spot yeah and i didn't book the middle seat i just booked a flight I, yeah i'm not super tall but i can be a little bit uncomfortable in small seats i don't want to spend extra money for something that i may not necessarily need and oh i got unlucky and i'm in the middle seat and i'm with two women and i see that there's a little bit more space that i can get at am i really gonna not use it i don't i, I don't know yeah it's not great I get it from a woman's perspective to have someone inching into your area. But it wasn't as if this guy was totally dominating. The middle seat is by far the worst. We all know this. You get, I think, in my opinion, less space anyway. Because on the window, you have that bit of window. Your knee can go down the side of the seat in front. You don't get that in the middle. And on the aisle, you can stretch out a little bit into the aisle as well if you really want to. The middle, you just don't get that. However, I do think that this guy could have done this, could have gone about this differently. He could have asked beforehand. I don't know what he was doing by snooping on someone's phone. I mean, that is just pure wrong. I, I don't know, though. Like, if it was such a big issue, wouldn't the flight attendant have said, yeah, we need to change this or something like that instead of just saying, oh, it's fine, leave it? I don't know. Like, this is one where I really think that you guys need to come in in the comments and let me know because it's a tough one. It really, really is. I, I, you know what? I, I know what the majority of you are going to say, that this guy is the jerk. He should have booked a bigger seat knowing that this was going to be an issue. I get that. I just think practically, is that likely? Again, I put myself in that spot. Is it that bad if I just use a little, a touch more space? Yes, ask. And yes, don't snoop and just be nice about it. But he did frantically apologize. He didn't know. Not not that he should have known. Like, you know, he, he, it's not the sort of thing where you go, oh, I didn't realize. Therefore, it's not my fault. I get it. I don't know. I really don't know. It's easy to say, pay for extra leg space. Do this, do that, you know, be more prepared. But let's, let's just be practical about this. In a real world, what's the answer? Is this guy the jerk? I'll leave that one up to you lot. I really will. Also, I need to just say, like, this woman has handled this awfully. What do you think? She's just being a Karen. I get it. It's not ideal for her, but there are better ways of handling this. Why is she not clarifying her points to the flight attendant? Why is she just going in on you? Surely, any reasonable person says to just you, hey, would you mind just, you're coming into my area a little bit here. I know you're taller. I know I'm smaller, but we pay for the same amount of space. That would be completely reasonable. And then if OP doesn't do that, then you say, okay, I'm gonna have to get the flight attendant because I'm not getting my money's worth here. But she didn't do that as well, which I don't know. It makes it, it makes it a little bit more debatable for me. But yes, as I said, get in the comments. Let's carry on. Am I the jerk for refusing to take my girlfriend to nice places because she eats like a kid? My girlfriend is an incredibly picky eater. Like I said in my title, she eats like she's 10 years old. In fact, I'll give a short list of things that she refuses to eat. Unflavored water, fish, excluding fried shrimp, anything with bones, cheese other than sharp cheddar, spinach, onions, garlic, pasta without red sauce, eggs, spicy food, aioli, ketchup, potatoes other than french fries, pastries with fruit, citrus, sausage, or any non-American food. 
This compares to me, someone who grew up in multiple different regions of the US and lived abroad for a few years, so I'm a bit more adventurous when it comes to food. Whenever me and my girlfriend go out somewhere nice, she ends up getting the same meals, usually either a burger or chicken tenders and fries. We could be going to an authentic Nepalese restaurant and she'll get the French fries and white rice. To me, it's kind of embarrassing to go to a restaurant where there's a dress code and for her to order chicken tenders and fries. It especially bothers me that since I typically pay, I end up paying 15 bucks for chicken tenders that I could get from the freezer section at Walmart for five bucks. Recently in our area, a very nice dinner place opened up and my girlfriend has been dying to go. I took a look at the place and the menu and saw that it looked nice, but the food was kind of pricey. She said she was probably going to get chicken tenders as per usual. I asked her what's the point of going then if I can toss some tenders in the air fry for her and not spend a ridiculous amount of money on it. She asked why I had an attitude about this and I told her that I thought it was a waste of time and money to go to a nice place to get little kids food. She interpreted this as me calling her a little kid. I clarified that I wasn't calling her a child. However, it is kind of childish for her to eat the way she does. I also said that if she's going to order food we can make at home, there's not any point in us going anywhere. This led to an argument about me thinking I'm better than her. So, am I the jerk? Okay, this is, I'm not going to lie guys. I'm being tested here today. This is another really controversial one that I think is super close and it could go either way. Right, let's go through this from the beginning. First of all, is it a shame that your girlfriend is an incredibly picky eater when you are not? I would say yes. And I would also say that as someone like you who clearly enjoys their food, experiencing different cuisines, has done so throughout their lives, it's a bit of a deep question. But are you really that compatible with someone that eats chicken tenders every time you go out? I'm not entirely sure. I feel like that's quite a big thing. If you can't enjoy that with your partner, it's a shame. It's not the be all and end all, of course, but it is a shame. And I can say from my experience, one of the nicest dates that I went on was going to some weird like restaurant and just trying all the weird food. I think it was Nordic food. It was all very strange and some of it was disgusting, some of it was lovely. But the whole point was you tried it and you, you, you know, you had a different experience together and it was good fun, right? Not being able to do this is a shame. And I, I agree, it is a little bit weird that she's so keen to go to a new restaurant in the knowledge that she's going to get the same old food. However, going to a restaurant is not all about food. It's also about the experience of being with someone. And who knows, she may love seeing you eat the food and hearing your thoughts about it. And ultimately, if you are in a relationship with this woman, which you are, then the food is just one small part of it, right? She may just love spending time with you and she knows that you love trying different food and different cuisines and she may just want to be a part of that. I don't know. There's a little bit of a lack of information here, but that is what I am thinking. I will say that you do come across as slightly patronizing as well. I don't think it's the worst thing for someone just to be super picky. Obviously, it's not ideal. And, you know, of course, in an ideal world, you would be able to experience these things with her. But is it the end of the world that she's going to have chicken every time? Is it really that bad that you have to spend a little bit more money on, on stuff that you could get from the shop to enjoy her company and being together? I don't think so. What I would say, though, is that there are some compromises that you could make here. For example, you could say to her, look, I don't particularly enjoy paying for things that we could get from a freezer and eat at home when we're out at nice restaurants at exorbitant prices for what the actual contents of the dish is. Would you mind paying for it? I think that's I think that's a reasonable request. If she says no, then yeah, it's a problem. If not, you go from there. Or you could say really why are we going to these restaurants if you're not going to eat the food and then you can actually get to the bottom of why she wants to go and probably there's a reasonable answer there i don't know i feel like there's a, a bit of information missing and there is an agreement that you could both come to and look, i get it it is a little bit embarrassing for you but this is the person that you are dating and at the very least she is eating every time you go out like imagine if she was the opposite and saying no i don't want to go to these places with you because i don't want to eat the food right at least you're going and experiencing this together and you're not having to go and find another friend or parent or whatever to go to these restaurants with i see some comments on reddit saying you can do this with other people nah i think it's a nice thing to do with your partner even if they're not eating the food and she's not stopping you from doing that and enjoying these new cuisines in fact she's encouraging it i don't know i think there's more to this more information required something you can definitely work on and now for our final post of this episode am i the jerk for leaving when my brother-in-law would wouldn't let me in the hot tub. My brother-in-law just bought a new house. He lives about four hours from us. 
Last weekend, my husband and I went to visit him for a few days and see the house for the first time. Long story short, I got my period while I was sleeping and the guest room sheets had a small blood stain, about the size of a quarter. My husband helped me to strip the bed and I went down to the laundry room to pre-tree and then wash the sheets. When they were done, the blood stain was 100% gone. But when we told my brother-in-law, he looked completely disgusted. He inspected the sheets super closely for a very long time. And finally, I was like, Jesus, if you're looking that closely and can't find a stain, can't you trust me that I got it out? He seemed really put out by the whole thing. That night, we had plans to hang out in my brother-in-law's hot tub in the backyard. But after dinner, he told me that I wasn't allowed in the hot tub because of my period. I was shocked and I explained that the nighttime leak was because I hadn't been expecting my period and I'd been fast asleep all night but that it was perfectly safe and sanitary for me to put in a tampon and sit in the hot tub for an hour, but he wouldn't budge. My husband had my back and told him that he was being ridiculous and it ended up turning into a big argument. Eventually, my husband and I decided to pack our stuff and stay at a nearby hotel and then we drove home the next morning. Now, my brother-in-law is fuming at us for leaving and for not respecting his home. He also Venmo requested my husband $100 for new sheets, which he's refusing to pay but trust that if the stain hadn't come out, we would have been happy to replace them. He told his whole side of the family who have decided to fully stay out of it. Now, I wish they had our backs, but at least they're not piling onto us. So are my husband and I jerks for leaving and not paying for the sheets? I mean, obviously not. What a way to end the episode with someone that is so dumb that I want to use stronger words to describe him. How thick can you possibly be? Right, how about this, right? Think about this. The Olympics, an amazing sporting event. An event that personally I absolutely love. Now go with me on this analogy. Trust me, do, because we'll get there eventually. Now in the Olympics, they have some things called water sports. Ooh, for example, swimming, diving, synchronized swimming, plus others. Water polo, for example. Now, if a woman, an athlete, who is gonna be competing in the Olympics in one of these water sports, gets their period during the Olympics, which by the way, last for two weeks. Oh, that's a real shame because they're not gonna be allowed to compete in the Olympics anymore because there'll be blood everywhere and it'll be disgusting. Oh wait, that's not what happens. I'm sorry, this guy is so dumb. I, I think like he needs a biology lesson or some sort of lesson on tampons or just periods in general. If women weren't allowed to go in water when they're on their period, then that would just be absolutely ridiculous. And frankly, the Olympics would have to be canceled. I mean, imagine, all female athletes on their period at once. What, what are you meant to do? Swimming's canceled. Synchronized swimming is done. Yeah, I don't care if you've got a ticket. There's no more athletics. It's a shame, isn't it? It really is a shame. But I mean, what? Cancel the steeplechase. If you know, you know. That is, that is, a, I don't know if that would, that'd be interesting. Yeah, all in all, a very, very stupid man. <laughs> Just epitomized by the fact that he wanted you to pay for sheets when there was not even a blood stain. Ugh. Anyone reasonable would just say, yeah, it happens. No worries, guys. And by the way, thanks for sorting it. I actually really appreciate that. But no, not your brother. What an idiot. Am I the jerk for taking up two seats on a bus? I ride the bus because I can't afford a car, insurance, gas, etc. I'm a 19 year old woman and I live in the US for context. A couple of days ago, I was on a bus that wasn't that busy. Not empty, but there were multiple unused seats and no one had to stand. I'd just gone shopping and had heavy bags that were hard to carry and hardly fit in front of my legs. So I sat in one seat and placed my bags on the seat next to me, essentially taking up two seats on my own. Since it wasn't crowded when I got on, I didn't see an issue. And like I said, the bags were super heavy and they hurt to carry, so I wanted to set them down. The bus ride was kind of long, and as it went on, more and more people got on the bus. It eventually got pretty crowded to the point where some people had to stand up. I didn't ever move my bag or offer the seat to someone. In my experience, most people don't want to sit next to strangers anyway, and a lot of the time, people will end up standing instead of sitting in an empty seat next to someone they don't know. Also, no one said anything to me. At the last stop, ended at the bus station where pretty much everyone was getting off, someone passive aggressively told me, you could have moved your bag and not been inconsiderate and rude. Everyone wants to sit, not just you, or something along those lines. I didn't really respond because I didn't know what to say. The person who said that never asked me to move my stuff, and if they did, I probably would have. So I don't understand how I was being rude. They could have asked during the ride instead of insulting me after it was already done. Buses are also generally first come first serve, so I think my behavior was normal. 
Am I the jerk? Wow, starting off an episode with someone that is just 100% a jerk. I mean, it's not even a conversation. It's not even a debate. You don't have to be asked to do something to be kind enough to do it. Uh, the given thing when you're sitting there is literally the done thing. You'd be stupid not to. If you're using two seats and people are having to stand, then you give up one of the seats. It's just a fact. You can put the shopping elsewhere. You said that, you know, you didn't have loads of space, but you make it work. You don't want to make people stand. That is awful. Also, it's not on other people to ask you if they can sit there. You should be expected to do that. It's just, it's just a nice thing to do. I do that all the time, by the way. If, if there's two seats and I've got a bag, I'll put my bag on the seat. That's completely fine. But as soon as it's getting a little bit busier and you know that people are looking for seats and people are having to stand, I mean, it shouldn't even get to that point. You move your bag, you offer the seat, obviously. I don't actually understand how someone can write this and think that that's even up for discussion. What a start to the episode. Am I the jerk for splashing women with water at the pool? I am a 31 year old woman and swimming is my hobby and how I keep healthy. My favorite swimming pool is the local university pool. As a graduate, I have access, but they also have community hours when people from the town can pay and swim. It doesn't do lane swimming, but typically everyone knows to stay away from those doing laps. I was doing laps at the far end with the pool wall on my side, so I couldn't move even if I wanted to. I was mid-session when two women my age jumped right in front of me and just stood there by the wall on the shallow end. I couldn't stop in time and I pushed from the wall between them, forcing them to move aside. I was being more careful next lap, but they just kept standing there. There was plenty of space on the other side of the pool where they could stand and chat without bothering anyone, but they chose to stand right in front of me. So I continued swimming, pushing from the wall. If they refused to move, I just turned in water, making sure to make a big splash. I took a break to drink some water and one of them started screaming at me how I got her hair all wet. I told her it's her fault and just continued swimming. She waited for me in the changing rooms and went on about how I was inconsiderate and I ruined her hair. I told her to F off. She started going off at me and started screaming, calling me a jerk and a female dog. I grabbed my stuff and went to one of the cubicles to have a shower and change. When I was leaving, they were talking to the manager. One of them was crying about her hair. I told my sister and she thinks that I was the jerk here, but I didn't think so before. But now with my sister agreeing, I worried that I might have been. So am I the jerk? Guys, before I give my comments here, Opie has added some updates. First of all, just to add, OP was the only person when the woman came in. They had the whole pool to stand. They chose to purposefully stand in front of me without swimming at all. Second, the pool is 25 meters long and you swim lengthwise from deep to shallow end and back. They had the whole shallow end wall free, except for the meter or so I was using for kicking off. I didn't take the whole shallow end. Who would do laps there except for kids? Also, while there's no designated lap lanes, lap swimming isn't forbidden. Typically during open swim, 75% of swimmers do lap swimming. They weren't older ladies. They are about my age in their early 30s. And finally, I didn't leave the pool to grab water. I had water on the edge along with my other stuff for drills or my earplugs, etc. This is perfectly normal and acceptable. Okay, you're definitely not the jerk here. I have no idea what these women are doing. They've gone for a swim and then they're annoyed that their hair's got wet. Like, in a public pool. What What did you expect to happen? If you're going to do that and you don't want your hair to get wet, first of all, probably not the best idea to go to a public pool. Second of all, don't go near the people that are swimming, like actively swimming and doing lengths. And thirdly, just wear a swim cap. Obviously, again. I would say that you could have perhaps asked them the first time, you know, taking 30 seconds just to say, by the way, ladies, I'm doing some lengths. Would you mind moving to another part of the pool? But then again, it is kind of obvious that you're doing lengths. And if the entirety the rest of the pool is open for them including the majority of the shallow end to sit and chat and do whatever they want and not get in your way and that's kind of on them for not doing that and they really can't complain that much am i the jerk for not being upset that my friend's dog could die because of me i was hosting a big garden party at the weekend i invited my entire friend group plus their partners now one of my friends takes her dog everywhere i told her no pets were allowed although it was a garden party we were in and out of my home and i have four cats my cats do not like dogs and neither do I. Anyway, my friend showed up with her dog. I told her that her dog was not welcome in my home or garden and I asked her to please take her dog home or elsewhere. Now I thought my friend left. I went inside to sort some things out. I went into my garden about 50 minutes later and my friend was standing there in my garden talking to our friends. She doesn't live that close, so I was confused. I went to ask her how she got back so quickly. She told me she just popped in and was going since her dog isn't welcome. 
I asked her then where her dog is and she shrugged her shoulders and said he was around I went looking and found him at the bottom of the garden eating my crops and making a mess I was angry and told my friend to get her dog off my property a few hours later She called me asking me what her dog ate. I had no clue My gardener plants and attends everything and I told her I didn't know But I told her he'd made a huge mess dug things up and clearly eaten things She shouted at me that her dog is sick and that I need to find out what the dog ate I told her I had no idea but I text my gardener to ask but it was really her problem I did send the text but my gardener didn't answer My friend then called again wanting to know what her dog ate, but I told her I still didn't know She told me I obviously don't care if her dog dies and called me a jerk Now I still don't know what her dog ate, but apparently he is very sick and might die I feel bad, but I told her not to bring her dog on my property So I don't feel responsible like she says I am so am I the jerk now once again We do have a little bit more information before I give my assessments First of all, after being unable to reach my gardener, OP says they took pictures of everything the dog dug up, which was a lot, and sent them to her friend. But OP has no idea what the dog ate and what it just dug up. And for all I know, what it ate isn't even pictured because the whole section is a mess. This wasn't good enough for her. She wants me to tell her exactly what it ate, and I just don't know. And I don't want to spend hours trying to figure it out when I don't even know if it can be figured out. Next point, my cats are house cats. They don't go in my garden and aren't at risk of getting sick from whatever my gardener is growing. My garden is huge, and what is growing changes often, so no, I don't keep track of what is planted. And then one final update. OP actually blocked their now ex-friend after dozens of nasty calls and texts, but got an update from a mutual friend. The dog is at dog hospital. The dog's pretty sick, but it is expected to make a full recovery. I managed to contact my gardener eventually. It looks like the dog ate some potatoes or something. A lot was destroyed, so even my gardener isn't 100% sure what was eaten, but he thinks that maybe the pesticides were the problem. All the info from my gardener was passed to my ex-friend. Oh, and finally, my ex-friend has seen this post and is very angry about it. Everyone say hi to Suzanne. Suzanne, if you're watching, um, first of all, Really hope you're enjoying the content and especially that last story. And second of all, uh, subscribe and follow for more because loads more stories about jerks like you coming right up. Speaking of which, you are a jerk. Uh, I know that's tough to hear, um, but don't click off. I need the retention. Thanks. I'll explain to you why in a, in a hopefully a, a kind, considerate way. Um, you're stupid. Is that is that enough? Are you still watching? Okay, well, look, I'll be honest. Um, you've been told specifically not to bring your dog onto private property and you've done so. That's all I need to say. Look, from OP's perspective, maybe you could be a little bit more, I don't know, sorry that this happened. But again, I, I do agree with you. What are you supposed to do? Say, oh my gosh, that's so my fault that my gardener sprays pesticides on my plants in a house that I've told you not to come into with your dog. You can be sorry that the dog is sick and could have died obviously it's good to hear that the dog is fine or, or getting better anyway and is not going to die and i think that you were to be fair at not one point did you say oh yeah i'm happy that your dog got ill however to go beyond that and take the blame and, and be guilt and like feel guilty nah i don't think so if anything the owner should should take the blame surely and feel guilty maybe they do and maybe they're just kind of putting that onto you passing the buck to make themselves feel better about themselves but yeah nonetheless your dog is your business right and if you've been told not to take it into a place and you still do then what happens in that place you kind of have to be responsible for am i the jerk for telling my wife that she needs to get over being upset with me for pulling a scare prank on our son last friday night i a 37 year old man was hanging out with my daughter who was 10 watching a movie my wife was working late while our nine-year-old son was hanging out with his friend. At around 8 p.m., his friend's mum texted me, letting me know that she was driving him home. I thanked her and then let my daughter know that her brother was on his way. She then suggested that we play a prank on him in which we jump out and scare him. I thought it would be a funny, practical joke. And long story short, she and I ended up putting on scary Halloween masks, dimming the lights, and hiding behind a couch. I then texted his friend's mum and told her that his sister and I were watching a movie and to send him to the family room downstairs when he got home. He got home and came in. We heard him come in and say, hello, and then come down the stairs. When he got close, we jumped out at him and shouted. Now, here is where I fully admit I messed up. I thought he'd just be startled for a second and then would laugh with us over the prank. But that's not what happened. We ended up frightening him way more than I'd anticipated. He first started running off and then ended up having a huge, trembling, crying adrenaline dump for a long time. 
I felt really bad and so did his sister. His mother came home not long after and ended up sitting with him, hugging and comforting him. Naturally, she wasn't amused by my antics, which I understand because, again, I screwed up. However, she has stayed mad at me for all these days afterwards. She'll barely talk to me. I eventually got tired of it and told her that she needed to get over it. I screwed up, but I didn't mean any harm. I just really underestimated how much our prank would scare our son. I also think that our daughter is seeing how she's treating me over it and is being made to feel way too bad over her idea that was just playful, not bad natured. But my wife just says that I should have known better and won't seem to forgive me. I get it. She's always been a complete mama bear, but it's not as if I don't love our kids too. Was my prank honestly so beyond that pale that I deserve to keep being punished over it? Ah, you know, this, I've got to just say it. I just think you're the jerk here, my friend. I'm sorry. I really do. I think with your kids, you have to be so careful with, with any sort of prank or, or thing like this. Because ultimately, and maybe this is a bit serious, but something like this could genuinely end up scarring your kid. Like, it genuinely could. We all know how, how important childhood is and how things that happen in a person's childhood can really shape the way they are in future and cause a lot of issues. Can cause some great things, but can cause a lot of issues as well. I don't know. I think the reaction that your kid had to this was so major that you probably should should have known it was a possibility you know your, your son's nine i presume you know them very well if there was ever any kind of doubt in your mind that, that this could have happened which i believe you should have had that doubt right given that it did and he's your nine-year-old son then you shouldn't have done it and like, i get it it was meant to be an innocent prank it went wrong and you know in general pranks recently at least on social media have got a lot of backlash for just not being at all funny but i still think personally there's a there's place in the world for for just casual pranks that aren't malicious like this maybe could have been but i don't know it just went way too far and i have to agree with your wife you probably should have known better and uh yeah she's gonna be angry with you for a while you're gonna have to take that don't worry though it's not gonna change everything long term you'll be fine just yeah i definitely don't think that she is in the wrong for still being upset over you literally traumatizing your own son am i the jerk for not trying harder to let my ex know our son passed both myself a woman and my partner a man were 28 when i found out i was pregnant together for years personally i didn't want the child my work was offering potential advances within my position and i was excited for it but after a lot of talking we decided to go forward with it when i was around 20 weeks just after finding out the gender he disappeared i couldn't contact him he wouldn't answer the phone or messages i got worried and messaged his mother and found out he was living back with her and was overwhelmed with the situation he kept paying his part of the bills over to my bank account each month but i received no contact I even tried going over, but nothing. By about 27 weeks, I gave up trying. I gave up crying, and I just got on with what I thought was a future as a single mother. I brought everything needed over the next couple of weeks, and I set it all up. At 31 weeks, I started having pains, but I put it down to Braxton Hicks. Just before 32 weeks, my waters went, and I went into labor, with the baby coming very quickly. He went straight to NICU. I messaged and rang my ex and his mother, but no response. Less than a week later, my son passed due to complications of early birth. I again tried to contact my ex and his mother. I left voicemails and messages, but nothing. The next few weeks were a blur, but with the help of my mother and father, his funeral was arranged. They tried to contact my ex and his mother also, but still nothing. I sent more messages, nothing. I'm assuming we were all probably blocked, but honestly, at that point, I didn't care. I was so broken. His funeral came and went. It was beautiful and horrible. I stopped messaging and I told my family not to bother after the funeral had passed. I couldn't deal with it anymore. Now, about five months after his birth slash death, my ex turned up. He let himself in. I wasn't at home, but when I got back, he was instantly hostile. The flat was clearly not set up for, nor accommodating a small child. He demanded to see his son. I broke down and told him what happened. I've never seen him so sad and angry. He stormed out, slamming the door on his way. Within half an hour, I got a nasty call from his mother, followed by messages from siblings and other family. How dare I not let them know something so serious? How could I hide something like that out of petty spites? I truly didn't. I tried, but I couldn't keep trying. It's been nearly three weeks now of them being awful. I was speaking to my sister this weekend and she said, to be fair, it was a bit of a bad move to not keep trying. They deserve to know. Was it? I tried so hard to let them know, but I was struggling so hard too. I lost my son too. So am I the jerk 
Should I have done more? Okay, this story is actually just insane. Like, it's actually nuts. Why is he coming back into your life five months later demanding to see his son? This is so weird. Like, he's the one that left. He's the one that just abandoned you. And yeah, let's be honest, almost definitely did block your numbers. Like, numbers plural, right? It wasn't just you trying to get a hold of him and his mum. It's mental. Like, surely, surely you know, right? Like, does he just not care? But then why is he making a show and dance and coming back into your life? And also, change your locks, please. Why does your ex still have a key? I know he's your, he, well, he was your, your son's dad, but, or your kid's dad, but still, like, he should not have a key to your house after, after you've broken up and been broken up for a long time. And given it was in this nature, the way that you broke up, him just dipping out. No, it's definitely not your fault. And also, you tried so hard in the first place and for an extended period of time. Ultimately, asking you to continue to try hard after all that time, it's just really tough on you because every time you're trying to get in contact with your ex, and his mum, it's just, you know, bringing up those same emotions of the fact that your your child passed away. Who would do that? To be honest, I'm impressed that you did it for as long as you did. And yeah, no way are you the jerk here. And now for our final post of this episode. Am I the jerk for ignoring my soon-to-be stepmom when she kept calling me by the wrong name? I am a 16-year-old girl, and my name is Andy. Just Andy. My mum's dad passed away just a few days before she found out she was pregnant. My mum was very close with her dad, and his name was Andrew. He also went by Andy. By the way, for those of you not watching, it's Andy with an I on the end instead of the normal Y. The technical female version of Andrew is Andrea, but neither my mum nor dad liked the name. But my mum wanted to honour her dad in some way so i got named andy now i love my name i think it fits me my parents got divorced when i was eight and i live with my mum most of the time but visit my dad every other weekend as well as holidays three years ago my dad started dating his now fiance kate now kate for some reason when we met assumed my name was andrea i explained to her it was just andy but she kept calling me andrea i ended up telling my mum about it and she told me just to ignore kate until she calls me andy well this past weekend i was at my dad's and we were visiting some of kate's family she kept calling over for andrea and of course i ignored her she got mad and said why am i ignoring her and i said because that's not my name and you know this her dad and brother basically laughed saying they thought i just went by andy as a nickname And I said, no, it is just Andy. They then asked Kate why she's been calling me Andrea then. Well, Kate later got mad, calling me a brat for embarrassing her. She went on to say I knew who she was talking about and that I should have just gone with her. But I was being a jerk. I honestly kind of feel like in that instance, I should have just answered to Andrea, but I don't know. Was I the jerk here? And there we go. I've left the dumbest one till the end. Obviously, OP, you're not the jerk. How hard is it to get someone's name right? Ultimately, this person knows what they're doing. It's a fact. Kate knows. Kate just knows. It's not that hard to get someone's name right. Fine, you're allowed one or two errors at the start, but then it's on you to make that change. And if you don't do it, you're just being pretty horrible, to be honest. Rude and just very ignorant. Andy is a very normal name. I mean, who cares if it's normally a guy's name or not? Like, any name. It's not that hard to learn, is it? And uh, yeah, you're just being rude by by not calling her her actual name. OP, that is. And then also, like, having that reaction is mental. Obviously, I'm going to ignore you. You're not calling me by my name. Imagine if someone just called you something that just wasn't your name. And you were expected to respond to that. No, I'm just not going to do that. Makes complete sense. OP, You're not the jerk, of course. Am I the jerk for giving away my friend's ticket to the Taylor Swift concert and leaving without her? So, a long time ago, I, a 20-year-old woman, bought four tickets to the Taylor Swift concert in our city that happened this past weekend. It was going to be me, Marissa, Hayley, and Aiden. We're all besties from high school. Everyone paid me for the tickets and planned accordingly. We were planning on getting there pretty early to hang out for a bit. Everyone knew this plan for a long time, but for some reason, Marissa couldn't slash didn't get off work. She is a server at a breakfast restaurant and normally doesn't work too late. This was all on Saturday, by the way. I also have an older sister who lives in this city who really wanted to go, but couldn't. She begged me to be a backup in case anything happened. We don't live very close to the city, like an hour drive, sometimes longer, so we planned on leaving at 2 p.m. At around 1, I started texting everyone to get ready because I had to start picking people up. Marissa told us she should get off at around 12, but she didn't say anything when I texted the group. I texted her individually and called her. No response. I started picking up everyone and she was the last person to get. I kept calling and we waited outside her house for a bit. I said screw it, so I went to the door. Her parents answered and said that Marissa has not come home yet. 
Together, we decided to then leave without her. We got 20 minutes into the drive when all our phones started blowing up. It was Marissa apologizing and saying there was issues at work and she had to stay, but she's speeding home and will be ready in 15 minutes. It was like 2.30 at this point. Aiden called her and explained what happened and I could hear her screaming her head off at him. He eventually hung up on her. My sister met us there and zelled the money to Marissa in the exact amount she paid me. We had a blast. I'm asking if I was a jerk here because none of us have heard from Marissa since even after apologizing. Oh, wow. I mean, this is shocking. This is really shocking behavior. You killed a friendship for 30 minutes of time. You were still there hours before the show. I get it. You wanted to be there hours before the show, but come on. What are you expecting? Your friend Marissa has told you that she has a shift. I get it. You have your own plans. And you want things to go according to those plans. But someone's at work. Things can always go wrong. They might stay a little bit longer. Isn't that part of the reason why you want to go so early? Because things could change and events could happen like this. You didn't even wait, though, for 30 minutes. If someone's not answering their phone and it's a big day and you know that you're supposed to be with them, it's clear that something's gone wrong or they're occupied and they'll get back to you as soon as they possibly can. You couldn't have just waited a little bit longer? Kind of embarrassing. And also, like, is she really even your friend if you don't want to wait a little bit of time? So poor from you. I mean, yeah, good. Your sister enjoyed it, but you also massively let someone down. Taylor Swift, let's be honest, probably the biggest artist in the world right now. I I mean, I don't really like her sort of music, I'll be honest, but if you're a Taylor Swift fan, And you had a ticket for that and it was pulled away from you at the last moment not even in your control you'd be absolutely fuming op you are the jerk marissa i'm really sorry and i hope you get to see her again without op in the near future am i the jerk for not attending my graduation party and telling everyone why when they asked my family has not celebrated anything to do with me since i was 12 years old my dad and his new wife had a baby that year and i was kind of forgotten about I'd get birthday presents and such, but no party or anything. I got used to it and started a tradition of celebrating with my friends. We'd go see movies or whatever. One of my friend's mums found out and started making me a cake every year for my birthday. When I graduated from high school, I'd saved up enough money to go on a week-long vacation in New York City with my best friend and her mum to see Hadestown. I just finished university and I'm starting my new job right away. I guess my dad had planned a big party for me as a surprise but I didn't show up because I went out with my friends instead. When my family started asking me why I didn't show up after my father had gone through all the effort for me, I explained that he hadn't celebrated anything of mine in 10 years and I didn't know he had planned to do so this time. He told everyone I was lying, so I asked him to post any pictures he had from my birthday parties, extracurricular activities, or high school graduation. He obviously couldn't and everyone started trashing on him. Now he's mad for talking about private family matters. I'm just going to go over there and pick up the few things I have left in that house and just move to my new city without dealing with this anymore. So am I the jerk? Oh, so embarrassing. Nothing worse than a dad trying to protect himself and trying to convince everyone that he's a good parent and just being completely exposed like that. It's great to see, but it's so embarrassing from his perspective. Shocking, really. Like, what is he expecting here? How dare you tell the truth about me being such a bad parent? Yeah, I'm going to. And then obviously that's the reason that, first of all, I didn't think you were going to ever throw me a surprise party or any party at all. And second of all, probably wouldn't have gone anyway because actually just don't rate you as a bloke. Simple as that. Suffice to say, OP is clearly not the jerk in this story. Now moving on to another post about graduation. Am I the jerk for wanting my graduation dinner to be about me and not about my impressive sister? I'm going to graduate high school. We are celebrating early since my family is down for my sister's college graduation. I've always felt my sister is better than me at basically everything. I got by with B's, but she was a straight A student and so on. No one ever says it, but I know my parents prefer her to me. My aunt is not an easy person to impress at all. She was a lot of first in the family. We were at dinner and my aunt started to ask about my sister's job that she got out of college. The whole rest of dinner was talking about my sister, what she's going to do and so on. It might as well have been a celebration for her. My uncle asked if I was going to college and I snapped at him saying, why does it matter? This dinner is about my sister, not me. The table got quiet and my mother told me to apologize. I refused. We got home and I got in an argument with my family who think I was being a jerk. Yeah, um, I think we have a jerk here, guys. 
uh, clearly, I don't really get what the point of this is. Like, you're graduating high school. Okay, great. Celebrating that. But if your family is down for your sister's college graduation, then obviously it's going to be talked about as well, isn't it? At the same dinner. Also, do you really want all the limelight on you? Do you want all your family members saying congratulations for an entire meal? I probably wouldn't want that. I'd want some general chit chat as well. It sounds to me like you're just acting quite spoiled. And ultimately, it's coming across as quite childish. I'll be honest. And also, the first moment that someone did actually say to you, oh, by the way, what are you, what are you looking to do after this? Congratulations on graduating high school. Your uncle, that is. You instantly shut him down and just say, no, we're not talking about that, are we? So, like, it's a lose-lose situation for you. I don't get it. You're in the wrong here. Am I the jerk for backing out of paying for my sister's wedding dress over a joke she made? I had an incident on my wedding day back in 2017, where my former fiancé abandoned me and ran away with his pregnant mistress. That image, those details are forever engraved on my mind and I'll never forget how I felt that day. This was truly a turning point in my life. My family have always been there for me, so I kept close to them. My younger sister is currently engaged and her wedding will be in a few months. She's struggling with money, so I decided to help her and her fiance and pay for the wedding dress. This allowed her to be able to buy her dream wedding gown that cost $7,000. Yeah, it's a lot for a dress, but she literally cried because she wanted it. This happened a few days before we agreed to go and buy the dress. We were eating dinner at my parents' home and my cousin and aunt were there. My aunt was asking my sister about the wedding and my sister said that everything was going according to plan and then casually laughed and said, let's just hope he won't run away with a pregnant mistress or something on our wedding day. I was blown away completely she laughed and my aunt laughed too as if this was a joke she was basically mocking what happens with me at my wedding it happened so fast i got up and i started screaming at her calling her an idiot but my parents asked me to take it easy and she said it was just a joke and she didn't think that i'd react so intensely my aunt remained seated and my cousin asked me to calm down and drink some water but i grabbed my stuff and as i was getting ready i told my sister she was getting zero dollars for her dream wedding dress then I walked out. I heard louder commotion as I walked away and my dad and cousin followed me outside trying to talk, but I asked to be left alone. My mum and dad spoke to me saying I was too harsh on my sister over a joke and said that I know this is how she is with her dark sense of humor. They said she's been crying after I decided to back out of helping her and said that this would ruin the wedding. They want me to reconsider my decision since it might damage my relationship with my sister. But I refused. Did I overreact? Now look, I'm not gonna lie, I love dark humor myself. I would say that my humor is pretty controversial, if anything. Uh, definitely dark, that's for sure. However, when it's a personal jibe like this, and you know how deeply it's affected somebody, and how much it's tormented and changed their life, and it's a situation that is just horrible and you wouldn't wish it on anyone, maybe at this stage is not the best time to make a joke. Look, I'll be honest, sometimes offensive jokes are funny, but... <laughs> But this one is not. Uh, this is like not even close to funny. Also, you're just at a family dinner. Like, surely this is not the place to make this sort of joke. And the main thing is that you know how much this has affected your sister. So, uh, yeah. Dark humor or not, a terrible joke. And no, you definitely did not overreact. Don't apologize. It's something that your sister has to apologize to you for. Are you mad? Now for our next Am I the Jerk story. Am I the jerk for recording my uncle's drink request? My uncle thinks it's funny to get me to run back and forth between the pool and the kitchen getting him drinks. He'll say he wants a Coke, then claim he asked for a beer, then ask where his Coke is. Can I just say straight off the bat, how is that ever funny? Like literally after two sentences, how could that ever be funny? He usually blames it on us dang millennials always being on our phones and not paying attention. For whatever reason, my parents don't tell him to F off. It started getting old a long time ago and I usually dealt with it by making myself scarce when he's over. He was visiting over Memorial Day and he caught me. He asked for a Coke, so I brought him a Coke. Then he said he'd ask for a beer. So I put up my phone and played the video I would recorded of him asking for a Coke. Like most of us dang millennials, I was on my phone when he asked and I knew what was coming, so I recorded his request. He asked me for a beer because that's what he really wanted. So I told him I'd be happy to get him a beer after he finished his drink. Because unlike his boomer generation, I don't waste stuff for the fun of it. He got huffy because he was just joking around. The next time he asked me for a drink, my phone was in my pocket. So I pulled it out and said I didn't remember what he asked for. Could he please repeat himself? He said he'd just get his own drinks. I told him that was a great idea. My parents think I was a jerk being rude to a guest and my elder. 
I thought I was just making sure he got what he asked for. So, am I in the wrong? Yeah, as I said, literally at the start, <laughs> none of this is funny at all. It's just completely stupid. I don't even want to bother giving my comments on this. Your uncle's a weird guy. Like, at what stage of this joke was this ever funny? It's just annoying. Like, if I was if I was OP here, I would have stopped immediately. I don't care about respecting your elders or that sort of stuff. OP has said in an edit that it's cultural to respect your elders and expected to fetch food and drinks for guests, etc. Fine with that. But if someone's just taking their mic like this, can't be bothered. Sorry, go and get your own drinks. I will, though, say well done for coming up with a good solution despite your parents' complete lack of awareness. Am I the jerk for making my brother-in-law pay for his son's meal after I said it was my treat? I don't see my sister and her family very often, so when I do, I tend to splurge on them. I'm child-free for now and the foreseeable future, but probably not forever. I took her family out for dinner and I said it was my treat. So it was my sister, her husband, his mum who lives with them, myself, and three kids, ages 15, 12, and 10. I took them out to a steak place in their city I always wanted to try. My 15-year-old nephew looks at the menu and says he wants the tomahawk steak. I said it was three pounds of meat plus three full sides and he should probably pick something smaller. But my brother-in-law says his kid can eat it all and said it was my treat and that I'm trying to cheap out. It's $190 for the steak. I said fine, but if he doesn't eat it all, then you have to pay for it. He agreed. We order and the waiter tells us the tomahawk is usually shared between several people since it comes with three shareable portions of sides as well. I asked my brother-in-law if he's sure. He looks at the kid, smiles and says, no problem. We ordered. And when the food came out, the tomahawk and sides took up almost half the table. The kid finished less than a quarter of the steak and only a little bit of the sides. When the bill came, I asked to pay for seven meals, all the drinks, and all the tip. The tomahawk steak was to be put on a separate bill for my brother-in-law. He paid with ill grace. My sister said that he used the budget that they'd earmarked to take the family to see the new Spider-Man movie. I felt bad, but I think that he was a jerk to try and waste my money. He thinks I'm in the wrong for following through and making him pay for something that mostly went to waste. And yes, they did take the leftovers home. Well, this one is a pretty open and shut case for me. You've explicitly said, yes, I'm happy to pay. In fact, I want to pay. But if someone's going to waste food, then I'm not going to pay. If they don't waste it, completely fine. There you go. And yeah, the good thing is that they have taken it home at least. But you're only paying for one meal out, right? A dinner. You're not paying for someone to have multiple meals at home after the fact. That's just a bit weird. The problem is that your brother-in-law said that it was your treat and that you're trying to cheap out. The steak is $190. Like, you know, let's just have a little bit of common sense here. You're already going to a steak place. Steak is expensive on its own, plus everything else, plus, plus the tips, plus drinks, whatever. But then asking your, your sister-in-law to spend $190 on a steak for your 15-year-old son, that's not cheaping out. Not paying for that. That's just ridiculous. Now for our final post of this episode. Am I the jerk for not using my husband's hilarious gift? My husband, a 29-year-old man, and I, a 26-year-old woman, have been married for four years. I had a great job in sales before COVID, but we found during the pandemic that things just work better with my husband at work and me at home. He earns enough to support us both. I never thought I'd end up being a traditional wife, but given that he's the breadwinner, I sometimes feel as though I should pick up a lot of the slack at home. I'm not a great cook, but I'm sociable and I enjoy being the hostess. When my husband has friends over to watch soccer, I prep a huge tray of snacks, keep the beers on ice and pop in with drink and food top ups during the game. I don't stay to watch, but I do ask the guys how they're doing, just polite chit chat. They all seemed into it and they often comment that my husband has done well to have such a great wife. It's a nice setup and said he'd got me a little something to wear when his friends are next over Now I do my best to dress nicely when they're around So I figured it would be a pretty dress or something. He had this huge grin on his face. So I was so excited I opened the box to find a red latex mini dress and a ball gag The gag was designed to look like a soccer ball and the dress is in his team's color I didn't know what to say at first. I was so confused He's never been into anything like that. He's very vanilla. I asked if it was a joke and at first he said no and told me his friends wouldn't believe how lucky he was if I walked in with the snacks like that. I can't remember what I said next, but then he told me it would be hilarious if I wore it and I should lighten up. I gave it a nervous laugh and told him I thought it was funny too. This morning, he'd put both items on my dresser and said he's looking forward to seeing me in them when the guy's around tomorrow. I reminded him that he said it was a joke. 
He got a bit sulky and said he can't believe I don't have a sense of humor. But from what he's saying, it sounds like he's expecting me to wear it. I'm so confused because one, I don't know if he's done this as a joke because his friends think I talk too much or two, if he get off on me being humiliated. He says I'm being uptight and call me out for being a jerk, but I honestly don't think I'm unreasonable. So am I in the wrong? Nah, you're definitely not in the wrong here at all. If anything, you're just being objectified. Sorry, it's kind of true. The problem is that because you're so nice anyway, to him and his group of friends, they probably, or at least he probably thinks they could just, you know, kind of use you. Not in a terrible way, but you know what I mean? Like use you and get even more out of you. I don't really see the joke here. Like it's not something that you can laugh at yourself about, right? It would just be for him and his mates. And yeah, the word that comes to my mind is just objectification. Very sad, if, if anything. Like, where's the respect there? You've done so much to help him out. His friends have openly said that they really like you being there and, you know, helping out and that sort of stuff. But if he's wanting you to do stuff like this, it gives me loads of questions as to, to why you're really there, why he wants you there. Then also you'd have those doubts that you're saying yourself about, you know, do, do his friends think that I talk too much? Am I there for one reason, one reason only, etc., etc. It's not nice. And it's definitely not a funny joke. Am I the jerk for begging my girlfriend to uphold a sexist tradition just so she can make a good first impression? I have a big family that's incredibly close. We have big family dinners every few months where we all meet at my great grandfather's estate and eat together. Typically how this works is that the women cook for the time they're there and the men don't, which I'm fully aware is sexist as hell. That being said, I am one of the youngest people in my family and my protests mean literally nothing. Some of these women choose not to cook. However, this is usually met with a level of ostracizing. The women who don't cook are lives and long-term girlfriends, so they kind of already have a good family relationship doctored in. When I've seen new partners not cook, it's gone bad. Like completely ostracized, not speaking, cattiness, rudeness, etc. This dinner will be in two weeks, and my girlfriend was asked if she would attend. Initially, she said yes, which is great. I want for her to meet everyone and for everyone to get used to her being around. But when I explained to her the tradition, she was understandably bothered. I told her that I understood where she was coming from. However, it was best for everyone if she just played along. I told her this isn't a permanent thing and I'm only asking her to do this so that she can avoid bad treatment from the rest of the family. This is her first impression and I don't think it's best if we cause waves. She told me that it's unacceptable and that if she has to do that, she won't be going. I've tried to find a compromise with her on this, but she won't budge and she's angry at me. She told me that if I think it's acceptable to make her do this, I'm just as bad as everyone else. While well, my point is that she needs to make a good first impression. So, am I the jerk? Listen, traditions aside, this one is very, very simple in my opinion. Unfortunately, you're being the jerk here, OP. The fact that you know yourself that you're in the wrong, surely that's enough to think, hang on a second, do I really want to do this? Or is it time for me to be the first one to stand up against this very, very archaic and ultimately very backwards tradition that my family is still running with in the 21st century? I mean, that alone is embarrassing. And the fact that you don't have the balls to stand up for yourself and your girlfriend is even more embarrassing. Sorry, but I think that's the case. What about your family making a first good impression on her rather than the other way around? Surely it's a two-way street, right? She's checking out your family and seeing if that's compatible for her in the same way that they're meeting her for the first time. I think it works both ways. And ultimately, this is just sexist. Am I the jerk for leaving my husband at home while I spend the week at my brother's because of how he buys groceries? I've been in a committed relationship with my husband for 17 years. And overall, things have been great. We've had a few rough patches, but... What's important to note is that while he earns more than me and is considered the main provider, I have a substantial trust fund that ensures we're financially stable. I work part-time as a teacher while attending university, earning less than him, and most of my income goes towards tuition. Our household income exceeds $200,000 annually, while the average in our area is below $50,000. One ongoing issue we have is my husband's frugality. He likes to control my spending and have the final say on how he uses his earnings. It's worth mentioning that I've never used any of his income and I have no intention of doing so. However, the main point of contention between us is his frequent visits to food banks. Despite having more than enough food at home, he insists on going to food banks to save money. 
He intentionally looks disheveled and uses our beat up car to blend in even though he's never experienced food scarcity I've explained to him the need for food donations in our community even showing him social media posts from local food banks But he remains indifferent. I suggested he volunteer or donate to gain first-hand experience, but he refuses The unfortunate part is that since we're never short on food most of what he brings home ends up getting thrown away Today I discovered our fridge filled with fresh produce and meat that clearly didn't come from our regular grocery store when I confronted him He admitted to going to a food bank after seeing a facebook post about a donation of fresh food People on social media were already asking if any was left and there wasn't I showed him these comments, but he brushed them off claiming people should have gone earlier Exhausted by the situation. I packed a bag and went to stay with my brother for the weekend Asking for space to think things over my husband accuses me of overreacting being vindictive and threatens to go back to the food banks Regardless of my feelings His family is also messaging me calling me a jerk and urging me to stop interfering with his choices I turned off my phone, but now they're bombarding my brother with messages Thankfully, he supports my decision and ignores them. All I want is to enjoy the rest of my week without being angry at my husband. Yes, I could let this go and not scold him, but the food he takes could have gone to people who truly need it. I'm not leaving my husband, but I need a few days to gain some clarity. Am I wrong for wanting this space? Okay, this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's clear. OP, you're not the jerk. The fact that your household income is 200K combined and you say you have a trust fund as well, but you're going, well, sorry, not you, but your family, I guess, is utilizing food banks is actually disgusting. Food banks, we, I mean, I don't even need to go into what a food bank is or why it's there or, or who needs it and, and what using it when you don't need to, the, the ramifications that that could have. They're just very, very obvious. Your husband is just a terrible person. I'm sorry. There's frugality, which is one thing. And I agree, sometimes you can be too frugal. Often I think that I can be myself, but there's also just downright, I don't know, ultimately stealing and, and that is what your husband is doing so yeah on the one hand maybe it's sometimes a good thing to, to be careful with money but if you're taking food from people who can't afford it then that is just that's just ridiculous am i the jerk for posting videos of my niece and nephew misbehaving in response to my sister's complaints that i did not want them at my birthday dinner my sister angel claims to use hands-off parenting with my niece sophia and nephew parker in actuality angel is entirely permissive and refuses to discipline them she expects other adults to step in when Sophia and Parker's behavior is getting out of hand. For this reason, I asked Angel to get a babysitter for Sophia and Parker if she wanted to attend my 27th birthday. I love Sophia and Parker as their aunts. And at the same time, I want a peaceful evening to celebrate my birthday instead of dealing with Sophia and Parker's behavior because I know Angel isn't going to discipline them herself. Angel acted understanding when I made this request and explained my reasons to her in person, but then she went online and made a Facebook post accusing me of hating Sophia and Parker and trying to punish Angel by only inviting our sister Jessica's kid, Megan, to my birthday dinner. Never mind that Megan is 17 and practically an adult herself. Several of our relatives and mutual acquaintances called me out and said that I was a jerk and was excluding a 10 and 7 year old. I responded to Angel's post by sharing two videos of Sophia and Parker misbehaving while Angel did nothing. The first video was a recording taken by Megan where Sophia and Parker were throwing tantrums and yelling at her. Megan was trying to calm Sophia and Parker down while Angel was on her tablet ignoring the situation. The other video was one that Angel took. Sophia and Parker were yelling, throwing toys at each other, and Parker even called his sister a bad word. Angel was laughing as if it were funny and was again doing nothing to discipline Sophia or Parker. I wrote alongside the videos that I love Sophia and Parker as their aunts, but at the same time, I want a peaceful evening to celebrate my birthday. And I don't want to be stuck disciplining Sophia and Parker because clearly Angel won't. Angel ended up not coming to my birthday at all. My parents told me that I was in the wrong for sharing those videos because everyone's children has acted up and posting those videos didn't accomplish anything besides embarrassing Angel. They also said I could have compromised by having a nobody under 18 rule for my birthday dinner. Megan would not be able to attend, but then Sophia and Parker wouldn't feel excluded. But I do not see how that would be fair to myself or Megan. So, am I the jerk for wanting to make compromises for my birthday dinner? Okay, definitely not the jerk here, OP. I actually think the way you went about this was brilliant. If you're being called out online by someone when it's completely just not factual, then you're well within your rights to do exactly what you did in this situation. 
The thing that I like about it is that you didn't just get really annoyed, which to be honest, I reckon I would have done and just posted the videos and left it at that and said, no, this is the reality. You actually came with a little bit of, you know, kindness and said, look, I do love you guys. However, this is the truth. And this is my birthday and I can kind of do what I want. And also, yeah, of course you could put in a nobody under 18 rule. But the fact of the matter is you want Megan to be there because it's your birthday and you want Megan to be there. So that's completely fine. It's your birthday. You can invite whoever you want. And um, yeah, for my 27th, I don't really want a 10 and a 7 year old to have very poorly behaved to be there either. Makes sense. Am I the jerk for lashing out at my family for calling my fiance my second wife? Years ago, I was married to a close friend. We were roommates, adopted a dog together, and lived together since college until our mid-late 20s, married at 24 and 25. However, we were never actually romantically involved. She wasn't interested in marriage and also questioning her sexuality at the time, but her family was ultra traditional and messy for many other reasons and kept pushing her to settle down. I'd just gotten out of a rough long-term relationship and we kind of both just said, screw it. We basically were kind of living like a married couple. Let's get married for the convenience. So we did the paperwork for it, but we never had a wedding. We were also never romantically involved. She just wasn't my type and I wasn't hers. My family knew she wasn't my wife in the traditional sense. They did heavily disapprove though. When I started getting back into the dating scene, we split up and legally divorced. She remains one of my close friends to this very day and I care for her a lot. It's been a few years and I'm now 32 with a lovely fiance who I cannot wait to marry. However, ever since I announced the engagement, my family has been making weird comments like, oh, so Roxy, my dog, is getting a new stepmom. Wife number two at 32, huh? That's a lot of wives for your age. Let's hope the second one lasts. It makes both me and my fiance uncomfortable. I keep on saying that my close friend wasn't really my wife in the traditional sense, but my family brushes me off by saying that they're just joking or she is technically my second wife anyway, so it's not like they're wrong. Today at breakfast though, I blew up at them and called them disrespectful and rude for belittling my relationship. My mum and my sister both said that if I didn't want to hear these statements, I shouldn't have married my close friend. I threatened to not invite them to the wedding and now things are super tense. So, am I the jerk? Well, I think that is three not the jerks in a row. Quite obvious ones in my opinion as well. I mean, there's just no way that, that you're in the wrong here. Yeah, you know, a couple of jokes here and there are fine. But if they're in front of you and your fiance, I mean, that's just not that funny, is it? If you make, like, imagine coming into that as the as the the new fiance, especially given that the first relationship wasn't even a real relationship. Like it wasn't really a marriage, was it? It was a marriage of convenience at, at best, at most. In reality, it was literally just signing a contract for the for you know both of your benefits. Because why not? I think it's just poor, isn't it? One joke once in a while, maybe that's enough. But if you've said to your family, like you know, this is actually making me and my fiance uncomfortable now. Can you please not? Then that should be the time to stop. And if they're getting annoyed by that, then I don't know. They've got issues themselves for sure. Would I be the jerk if I go around my brother and sister-in-law and buy my nephew the Lego Roman Colosseum after they returned his original one? It was returned after my nephew refused to build it with his profoundly mentally disabled sister. I mean, just off the bat here, what is that for a title? My family and my brother's family visited my parents at their vacation house for Memorial Day weekend. There, I noticed that my normally energetic nephew, a 14-year-old, seemed very upset at something. I pulled him aside and asked him if there was anything wrong. He told me that his parents promised to buy him the Lego Roman Colosseum. My nephew is a huge ancient history buff, if he did well in school. But when the package arrived, they said that he should be a good brother and let his sister, who is 11, help. My nephew told them that having his sister help was pointless since she's completely non-verbal and has a habit of kicking things when she gets upset. As a result, my nephew had his Lego set returned for talking back and being disrespectful. After we went back home, I asked my brother if what my nephew said was true. He said that it was. I then asked if my nephew said anything in particular. For example, calling his sister a vegetable beyond calling the idea of letting his sister help ridiculous. He said no. I told my husband that I'm seriously considering buying my nephew that Lego Roman Colosseum for his upcoming birthday in August as my brother and sister-in-law were being completely ridiculous. My husband agreed that my brother and sister-in-law were being ridiculous, but didn't like the idea of me replacing the returned Lego set. He said that I'd be undermining their parenting and provoking an unneeded conflict between our two families. Okay, the sentiment here is good, I think. 
Overall, you didn't feel like it was fair in the first place and you're you're being generous and you want to buy, a, you know, a nice gift for your nephew. But I think that's it. I think that's where the, the sentiment ends. And in reality, you are kind of going behind your nephew's parents' backs here, right? Because they're the ones that ultimately have to parent their child. And they've made that decision to say, look, no, you can't do this. You need to involve your sister. And if you're then undermining them and saying secretly, no, you can have it. First of all, that's going to completely screw with your nephew's mind. Second of all, it's just completely going behind your, your own sibling's backs, which is a terrible thing to do. And thirdly, it's just weird, isn't it? Like, at the very least, you'd ask and say, I know this happened before. Can I get this for him? You know, is there a lesson there? But doing it secretly is just very, very strange. And yeah, I mean, ultimately, wouldn't any good parent say, especially when you have a, a mentally disabled sister, yes, let her do it with you? I mean, surely that's just the fairest way of doing it, right? I mean, I'm not trying to parent here, but I'm just saying you've got to let the parents parent, whatever they want to do. And uh, yeah, definitely don't do it without asking. Am I the jerk for prioritizing my daughter's school performance over her emotional well-being after her mother's death? I am a 39 year old man and I feel conflicted about a recent decision I made regarding my teenage daughter, who is 16, following the death of her mother. I can't help but wonder if I made a huge mistake, so I'm turning to you, Reddit, to pass judgment on whether or not I am the jerk in this situation. Since my wife's passing, life has been tough for the both of us. Dealing with my own grief while trying to provide for her has been a challenge. My daughter has been extremely, extremely distraught and I can see how much she's struggling emotionally. However, when she asked me for time off from school to process her grief, I ended up prioritizing her academic performance instead. I'll admit, I've always been a stickler for education and my daughter is a bright student who excels in her studies, particularly maths and science, which are very important and I wouldn't want to jeopardize that. When she approached me, I couldn't help but think about how it would impact her grades and future prospects. I was concerned that missing school would lead to a drop in her academic performance and potentially hinder her chances of getting into a good college. So instead of allowing her to take some time off, I suggested that she continue attending school and told her that I believe that maintaining a routine and focusing on her education would provide stability and keep her on track. Apparently, my daughter was devastated by my decision. She accused me of not caring about her feelings and prioritizing her school performance over her emotional well-being. She believes that I'm being callous and unfeeling, dismissing her need for time to heal. So, Reddit, am I the jerk for putting my daughter's school performance ahead of her emotional well-being, as she put it, and the death of her mother? I'm genuinely questioning if I made the right decision and would appreciate your honest opinions. Thanks for reading. And there we go, guys. I've saved the best to last. And by best, I mean by, by, by far and away the biggest jerk of this episode. What the fuck? Like, sorry, what the, I, I don't want to swear, but I mean, ge generally, how brained are you? I, I really, by the way, I really hope this person isn't watching this video, but if you are, mate, like, you're just so dumb. What are you talking about? You know what's crazy as well? For those of you that aren't watching and are listening, the dad has put emotional well-being in, like, inverted commas or whatever it's called, inverted quotes, kind of like taking the mick out of his own daughter. Like, as she puts it, he's put in brackets, after the death of her mother. Maybe have a little bit of compassion. I don't know. Maybe say, yeah, don't just go show back to school if you don't feel like it because your mum's just died. These are the facts. Now, I do get his overarching point that, that perhaps routine is good in a, in a mortifying time like this. However, given the circumstances and saying that your daughter actually saying to you, look, I really need some time off here. You can't then say, no, you're going to school every single day. And also, by the way, science and math are important. Yeah, I mean, so is the fact that your mum's dead. How about that? And also, you don't seem to even care that much that your own wife's dead. I'm not going to like tell you how to grief, but you know, you need to you need to show a little bit of empathy for your daughter who, whose mum has literally just passed away. You absolute clown. Am I the jerk for saying I'll be driving myself and paying for my own room on the upcoming family vacation so I won't have to be a babysitter? I, a 23-year-old man, was repeatedly stuck playing the part of helper and babysitter on family outings. I had to move out of my parents' house because I kept being forced to help watch my three nephews. Last year, we took a family vacation in summer to the coast. I rode along with my parents and they paid for my hotel room. Only, I had to share that room with three rowdy boys because my sister and her husband wanted a room to themselves. I was promised time to do my own things on the vacation, but instead I ended up having to help with these kids. I complained to everyone about it and was reminded I was there for free. And then we pretty much just did only one thing I wanted to do, which was tour an art gallery. 
I like doing this whenever I'm at the coast, but the kids find it boring. This year, my parents have a beach trip planned for June, and they assumed I'd be riding along the same way as last year. But I refused. I said I'd be driving myself and paying for my own hotel stay to have my own room. My parents were shocked and tried to remind me of the cost. I said it was no worry. I've got a good job and a decent running car. I can more than afford it. That's when the but started. I stated the previously listed things as why I'll be driving myself and paying for myself. I want to be able to enjoy this vacation as an adult and not be treated like a child like last year. My parents told my sister and she called to blow up at me that I'll be ruining the vacation if I'm off doing my own thing while she has to wrangle her three boys. I ended up yelling at her that last year all she did was wrote me into her mess I didn't really get to do much of anything I wanted to do and I was treated like the bad guy for wanting to just go to an art gallery I'm a grown man. I deserve my own vacation too Now my sister is not speaking to me and my parents are still trying to convince me to just ride with them to keep the peace I'm still refusing but the pressure is getting to me. Am I the jerk for not giving in? I know they'll have a pretty hard time when they won't have another person there to help. Right, then immediately, let's get into this first edit. It's been barely an hour since I posted, OP says. But my sister is apparently a Reddit lurker in the mornings, and she saw my post. Not only is she furious with me, but she's also upset that no one in the comments is siding with her. To make it short, she went on a big rant about how it's so hard to be a parent to triplets, and the least I could do is help because I'm young and single, and she needs a break. I stood my ground on my decision, and now she's calling our parents to get them involved. I'm expecting a call from them any minute. And then a further update from OP. Well, I'm off work now, so I can tell you guys more as to what went down. I guess you could say it's over. My sister got our parents involved. They looked at my post and were absolutely horrified by the continuous influx of commenters. Yes, they're very angry with me that I posted here, but I told them that if they just listened to me to begin with, I'd have never needed to. Guys, for context, this post has over 40 thousand upvotes and over seven thousand comments and um, i'm pretty sure you guys can all work out who they're siding with i'm sick of the whole keep the peace mentality that sacrifices me to placate my sister they in turn went off on my sister and to make a long story short the whole vacation has been cancelled the hotel wasn't booked yet anyway but my parents are arguing with my sister my sister's blaming me and my nephews are crying because they aren't going to the beach My sister called me at lunch and basically implied I have no life, which is why I have time to help. I recorded that and told our parents, and that's currently what they're fighting about. And then one final small update. I wasn't going to update again, but here's a little more. Parents said that they won't ever push babysitting of my nephews on me again, and have agreed that what happened last year was unfair to me. Right now, they're very angry with my sister for telling me I should help her because she thinks I have no life. My sister, though, is playing the victim. And my brother-in-law is basically saying nope to the whole mess and spending most of his time at work. Well, I don't blame him. Thank you to everyone who's commented. You made my day. Now, guys, that is the end of r slash am I the jerk for this story. But it's just the beginning of this whole escapade. Let me tell you, this now gets... A little bit crazy. We're moving on now to r slash entitled people where this story continues, but goodness me, you're gonna wanna stick around. Here we go with the second post. So then, now moving on to the second post from OP. My parents apologized, my sister did not, at least at first. A week ago, I made this throwaway account to ask am I the jerk a question, in which I was found to be anything but the jerk. I have too much to say to post in there as an update, So a friend recommended I come here to r slash entitled people. Now, my posting on Am I the Jerk essentially opened a Pandora's box in the family. Basically, my parents and older sister have become very comfortable with me helping with the childcare of my young triplet nephews. I didn't leave home till I was 22 because I was trying to save money while also going to college. A scholarship covered a lot and living at home kept me from getting rising debt due to my working part-time as well. I'm very thankful for this. However, after college, everyone just seemed to act like I had endless time on my hands and convinced me along on a family vacation. In this so-called vacation, I was forced to babysit my three at the time six-year-old nephews. I even had to share a hotel room with them. And believe me, those kids didn't listen to a dang thing I said on the first night until I called their mother twice. And I was treated like the bad guy for wanting to do other things during the trip. Like, if it's something the family doesn't enjoy as a whole, then it doesn't happen. Which was extremely hypocritical, 
because I'm family but wasn't included in that vote. And you can bet I aired this grievance with my parents after my last post. And they've acknowledged being in the wrong. You know what? Fair enough. A lot of the parents I see on subreddits like this never acknowledge this, so that is a good sign. After that awful vacation last year, I decided it was time to move out and did so before the summer even ended, which surprised everyone as I gave them no warning. I'd landed a great job pretty much right after college thanks to an internship and used moving as an excuse to drop my commute from 45 minutes to just 15. My sister hated this the most because it meant no more free babysitting on weekends, but she still tried to make me do it. And I caved, sometimes, usually by being bribed with pizza. And this sort of became a new norm. But then last month, my parents announced plans for another family vacation to the same place along the coast, and they basically wanted it to go the same way. I immediately saw it for what it was, a trap. I knew that if I rode with my parents and let them buy the hotel rooms, I'd be screwed over the same way as last time. So I just casually stated I'd drive myself and pay for myself, and that is when this all started. OP then outlines exactly what happened and how they came about posting the Am I the Jerk post, and how his sister, lurking on Reddit, spotted the post in less than an hour. What followed was Pandora's box. At first, the family was against me. My sister called our parents and they called me when I still had a little time to talk in the morning. My parents were on the phone with me while also reading my post. I asked them if anything in it was a lie. They sort of steered around it and called the post an exaggeration, but I pointed out numerous details that made it pretty much on the mark. Then I told them to check the comments. There were already far too many to read. I was repeatedly refreshing the page on my home PC and telling them how many comments there were. Then I told them I was sick of their mentality of keeping the peace by forcing me to placate my sister. Then I said I was out of time and we'd have to resume this later. My parents were positively horrified that hundreds if not thousands of people were commenting in a matter of hours. And later on, I told them that the numbers had basically doubled and were still growing, which only added to their horror. So I guess they were forced to take a long look at their own actions. And that right there is the beauty of r slash am I the jerk and Reddit as a whole making parents reconsider their entire lives. I mean, it's unbelievable, really. My sister tried to call me to complain while I was at work, but my phone was on silent till my lunch break. So all she could do was leave messages and texts. But she was persistent and managed to get through to me when I was eating my lunch. The gist of the conversation was my post had taken our parents away from her side, and now they were mad at her. In the ensuing argument between them, my parents cancelled the entire vacation. Yes, they later acknowledged they just passed the blame out of embarrassment and have fully accepted fault. They told me no excuses could excuse the fact that they made me their go-to free babysitter when I wasn't even living at home anymore. They did try to backtrack a little by pointing out they never charged me rent while I was in college, but I reminded them that kids don't ask to be born and I was doing my hardest to make my own way. Then I pointed out that my father had the same kind of leg up from his parents. They let him live free of charge at home while he was in college. That basically ended any argument my parents had left. When my sister managed to call me at lunch, I presented the facts to her and she showed her true colors. She implied that I have no life and that my free time on weekends should be spent helping her because she's tired and unable to even go out without bringing her children with her unless someone is watching them. She is a stay-at-home mom with a husband that makes a decent salary. They live in a pretty decent house that's owned, not rented. And to be frank, my nephews aren't really my responsibility. They just forced them on me and expected it to stay that way. My sister angrily hung up on me, but I recorded the call and then played it to my parents later. They were furious and they basically went to war with my sister. My sister dug her heels in, blamed me, and then doubled down on her belief that my life should circle around hers. I told her that was the most narcissistic and entitled thing she's ever said about me. It took days, but her husband finally stepped in and forced her to apologize. I'd never seen her cowed like that by anyone, but she was on the verge of crying. It ended up being admitted that one of the reasons I was the go-to babysitter was because my sister didn't trust strangers. It was never about the money. Or was it? Actually, my brother-in-law thought my sister was paying me for my time watching her kids after I moved out of my parents' house. But she didn't even give me gas money just cash enough to order pizza for both myself and the kids and she pocketed the rest my sister had been shortchanging me 
for months. He blew up at her when this came out during her half apology, and she was forced to pay me what she owed me in cash entirely from her own savings, which she looked very sore about. Then my brother-in-law apologized to me for his own inaction in letting my sister walk all over me and promised they'd get a normal babysitter from now on. Yes, it will cause a bit of a drop in the bucket for them, but my sister will be getting date nights back. Then came the family meeting the other day's evening. We all gathered up at my parents' house and everything was laid bare. Apologies all round and whatnot. Then my parents reinstated the family vacation. And yes, I still plan to drive myself and pay for my own hotel stay. I'll even stay in a completely different hotel if my sister tries to revert me to childcare. And I've stated this. She's promised that won't happen. And if I don't update again after the vacation in another month or so, then you'll all know everything is fine. Now guys, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we don't have to wait until after the holiday for our next update. That came just a few days after the one I just read. Again, on our slash entitled people, now 26 days ago at the time of recording, my sister called me demanding I take my post down. Now she's more upset than ever to know how far it spread. Having a family that knows about your Reddit account has its disadvantages. Yesterday, my sister called me after I got off work to ask me if comments are still coming in. She said she cannot bear the negativity of looking at them herself because the comments are all so hurtful towards her. So I was brutally honest. At least 10 comments are still coming in daily and most of them more or less say the same things about her. She started crying and demanding I delete my Reddit posts, but I refused and told her she can cry to anyone she wants, but the posts stay up because they are my assurance she won't try to treat me like rubbish anymore. After all, she literally felt like my life should revolve around hers. She didn't pay me the babysitting money she was supposed to and pocketed it for herself and forced me to be the constant babysitter on last year's family vacation, so I had pretty much no fun the entire time. Is it really any wonder people are having so much hate for her when she treated me like that? Then I mentioned the posts have already spread to other websites as I was asked a couple of times to let an article be made about my situation. And there are some videos that were read as well. Yeah, maybe like this one. Well, my sister shrieked hearing that and hung up. My parents then called me begging I take the post down. I've refused, stating that I only did this because they didn't stick up for me. This would have never happened if they'd told my sister to treat me like an equal and not a servant. I'm not her butler, babysitter, or handyman. I'm her freaking brother and a grown-ass man. Wouldn't they be tired of this stuff in my shoes as well? They agreed, but still begged I take the post down. I again refused and said that I'll keep making more if they don't start sticking up for me more when my sister comes crying to them. Let her clean up her own messes because all the enabling of her has led to this. I didn't father those kids. I've got a life of my own, a career I'm still new to, and hopefully, soon enough, a girlfriend, as there's someone I wanna ask out. I'm moving my life forward and I won't be held back. They can either step out of my way or keep trying to enable my sister, but I assure them that the latter would end badly for them. The only way this posting on Reddit will stop is if the drama stops. I've kept things anonymous and I've got a right to vent my very valid frustrations. Well, that left my mother crying. My father just went silent and I said, tears don't move me. They know what it would take to end this and that's to stop enabling my sister. Well, my sister called me again to yell at me that our parents have told her they aren't dealing with this anymore and to figure it out herself. Oh, and they told her to be nicer to me too. I just pictured her eye twitching as she internally screamed after hearing that. Be nice to my kid brother? What is this? Do I look it up on Google? Yeah, I was that sarcastic to her. But it left her crying too when I hung up. My brother-in-law called me later to get my side of the story. He was mad I'm still posting and made his wife cry, but I explained everything to him and he said he'd have another talk with my sister. I'm hoping this drama finally ends here, but the family vacation is still on for late June. I've already booked my room and put it in for a day off work so we can all leave on a Friday. My room is also not near the ones my parents, sister, brother-in-law, and nephews will be using. In fact, it's not even on the same floor. And when we go to the coast, when it's not a family activity, I'm gonna go where I want and do what I want. And you can bet I'm gonna tour those art galleries, pick out on local food, and just enjoy being carefree for a change. And there we go, you're probably thinking, wow, that sounds like a good end to the story. But alas, as you can tell, there is more to come. That promised update after the family vacation was posted just 24 hours ago. 
let's see what happened. This is the conclusion for now of this story. Update after the family vacation. Well, the family vacation is over. Some things, both good and bad, went as expected. Good that my parents didn't enable my sister trying to make me babysit. Oh yes, she did try. But bad in that my sister did try to find out which room I was in. But that failed and got her in trouble with her husband again. Firstly, I made sure to tell the hotel in advance that they were not to give out any of my information to anyone who asked except for the police if something needing that were to come to pass. They assured me over the phone that they would not tell a soul. Then, on the day of the vacation, I left earlier in the morning than the rest of the family. I knew they wouldn't be able to get moving as a group until at least 10 a.m., so I left at 9. Check-in wouldn't be until 1, but I wanted to make sure I had a head start. I sent out an FWI group text and was off like a shot to make the three-hour drive. My parents were upset because they'd planned a family brunch on the way, but I pointed out I was never made aware of that, so it was cancelled in favour of fast food. Like I planned, I arrived at the hotel early. Too early for check-in, but I told the desk staff I was there to make sure my parents or sister didn't give them my information. They claim they don't do that, but I told them I know for a fact it still happens sometimes, so I'm covering my butts. When they happen to be dealing with my mother, sister, and three potentially crying boys trying to guilt them at the desk, they'd better not yield, and I wanted to know if they'd try anything. They awkwardly promised me no one but me would get access to my room, then I decided to go out and get something to eat. I came back more than an hour later, and there was my parents' car and my brother-in-law's big SUV. I went to the desk to check in after making sure the lobby was clear, and it was. Then I asked the clerk if my family had asked about me, and where I was staying in the hotel. Yeah, they did, but the clerk refused to tell them. My sister had apparently tried to push it, but her husband shut her up. I checked in, went to my room, and then called my folks. I didn't mention I knew what they tried with the clerk, and they conveniently didn't mention it either. Then we all met up as a family to go out and tour around. My sister at one point asked me to watch her kids for a moment, to which I replied, hell no, because I knew exactly what she was doing. She'd pretend to be gone for a moment and then be gone for an hour. I called her out and her husband told her to stop trying to make me watch their kids. So what did she do? She just started crying on the spot, saying that she needs a break. Her husband scolded her. He's a tired man, but he wasn't complaining. My mother gave me a nasty look, so I went right to her and said that if she tries to even think that I should be watching those kids, I would walk away from this vacation right now. It's not my job, and I'm sick and tired of her and my sister acting like this. Well, that made my mother start crying too, and then she just started repeating the words, you're right, over and over again. This is another old tactic of hers. She tries to look pathetic to guilt me, but I just said, I am right, and just let it go before walking away. Neither my mother or sister tried anything for the rest of the day. When we got back to the hotel after dinner, my family were all crowding the elevator, but I didn't get in with them. They asked why, and I said I'd wait for the next one. My sister glared at me because she knew exactly what I was doing. Then I just sat in the lobby watching YouTube on my phone for 15 minutes and took the elevator up. I was on a different floor and on the other end of the hotel. I had a splendid night and the next morning we all went out for breakfast, but I made sure they left first. I can't quite believe what I'm reading. The fact that you're having to do this on a family vacation, pretty much hide from the people you're vacationing with at the hotel is mad. But after all I've read, it makes complete sense. I was the last one out, just like I was the last one in the night before. Breakfast went fine. Then, I gave an FWI that I was going to be doing my own thing for the day. My mother tried to bring up plans to go to the aquarium and a couple of other places, so I said I'd meet them for those, but the rest of the day was mine until family dinner. They accepted this, and that day went fine too. But back at the hotel that evening, my sister caught me leaving my room. She must have been stalking the whole floor looking for me. I went back to my room to chill a bit before dinner as I was tired from walking so much and my sister was just down the hall when I left my room to meet them for dinner. She tried to corner me, saying that I'd ruined the family vacation for her because now it wasn't hardly any different for her than at home since she had to wrangle her kids. I called bullspit because my parents were helping her a lot. Then I told her that I'm sick of this song and dance of being her scapegoat and it's already over. So leave me the heck alone and get on with your life. Then I started walking with her yelling, hey, I'm trying to talk to you. I told her I don't care and was going to dinner. 
She followed me to the elevator and we both said nothing to each other I didn't stay silent and I told my parents and brother-in-law that my sister had stalked me to find my room She was scolded like a child. She had a pity party I told her to stop milking it and grow up the old days when she could force her will on me were over And then I walked out of the lobby and to my car This time I was the first one to dinner when everyone else arrived my sister looked depressed But not a dang thing was said about what happened and that was just fine with me My sister refrained from eye contact with me the entire evening And this time I didn't care about riding in the elevator with the rest of them And I told them bluntly that unless it was an emergency Nobody is to come knocking on my door I had a do not disturb sign for a reason the final day everything went swimmingly neither my sister or mother bothered me at all they'd fully surrendered at this point yes during the whole vacation i did play with my nephews a bit i'm not a complete jerk i didn't stonewall them i kept up being the fun uncle just not the babysitter uncle the kids didn't even seem to care they just wanted to play i even bought each of them one of those little baggies of crystals and polished stones to take home as a souvenir There was a bit of mild drama between my sister and her husband But that was just some small disagreements that I didn't bother to pay attention to all in all I'd call the vacation a win because it finally hit home for my mother and sister that the old way They did things involving me is over and I have my own life and there we go That is the culmination of that story. I guess so far The amazing thing about this post is that these four posts that i've just narrated are actually the only four posts on this entire account that op has made on this account anyway now they said right off the bat that it was a throwaway but nonetheless all the posts that have ever been made are those and that's it pretty cool pretty great to see that one story can traverse a couple of subreddits i don't know exactly what the title this is going to be maybe am i the jerk slash entitled people you don't get too many collaborations on episodes of mine between subreddits but hey there you go i just noticed that post and thought okay let's have a look back what's been going on here and everything seemed to align and and be good enough for just one episode so um there you go i hope you guys enjoyed it am i the jerk for pressing charges on a former friend for shaving my head in my sleep for context a relative of what used to be a close friend of mine whom we'll call gary for this story contracted cancer i a mid-20s male was sympathetic and even contributed $100 to a donation pool for their treatments. But Gary came to me one day and took his hat off to reveal a freshly shaven head. He told me that everyone in his family was doing it in support of his relative, and so were a lot of our mutual friends. Then he asked that I get on the bandwagon. I told him I didn't want to shave my head because I like my hair. My hair is black, regularly combed and well-styled. He said I could just get a wig or something, and had actually brought his shaver kit. He was unboxing it when I told him this was not happening. I don't even really know his relative that he's doing this for. So I'm not doing it. End of discussion. He called me a jerk and left angry. We didn't speak for a week. Then last Saturday, I got invited to a party at another close friend's house. There I found out that Gary had tried the same thing on several other friends and only a couple of them actually did shave their heads. Gary wasn't at the party, so I had a blast hanging out playing video games, listening to rock music. But I had way too much to drink and I couldn't drive home, so they said I could just sleep upstairs. I passed out on a bed and it was a blissful sleep till I was shaken awake by another friend who told me that Gary had showed up late at night and they caught him shaving my head while I was passed out. I saw what I looked like in a mirror and wanted to scream like I was in a horror movie. Gary even shaved off one of my eyebrows. Gary was still there and acting proud of himself, saying, now you're gonna have to shave off the rest. Just like me, lol. I was furious though and called the cops. When they got there, Gary fully admitted to what he'd done to me and even said he was justified. The police didn't seem to think so, as this classified as a form of assault. They asked me if I wanted to press charges and the first words out of my mouth were, hell yes. Gary cussed me out while they took him away in cuffs. I tried getting my hair restyled into something presentable, but there was no saving it. And now I'm bald too. Now, a bunch of Gary's family are telling me to drop the charges because Gary was off his meds and didn't mean to do it. I was like, what the frick? I never knew he was on meds, but I still refuse to drop the charges. It will take months to grow my hair back the way it was. But all of the calls and messages from Gary's relatives are starting to get to me. Just about everyone else in our friend group has cut Gary out though. And they say that I'm doing the right thing by not dropping the charges. 
So now I'm divided. Am I the jerk for pressing charges on a former friend for shaving my head in my sleep? Okay, now before we get into that update that I promised you, which was posted just a few days ago, firstly, my initial thoughts on this post, which was posted over a year and a half ago now. I just don't think in any way, in my opinion, this is, that you can be seen as the jerk here. You could argue it's a little bit extreme that you're going to that length to press charges on someone that's just shaved a bit of your hair and your eyebrow, but that is legally assault. And if that is the case, then therefore you are well within reason to press charges. And ultimately, if you've said to somebody, no, I'm not doing that, and then they've done that to you while you're asleep, that is just disgraceful, disgusting behavior, and they do deserve to be punished. So if something like that is punishable and you are up for it and you want to do it, yeah, I see nothing wrong with saying, you know what? No, I'm pressing charges. In terms of the meds, there's absolutely no reason as to why that can possibly be your fault. That's on Gary, or I guess the people helping Gary, his family, but yeah, mostly on Gary. And in terms of people that might think, okay, but he was doing this for a good means, sure, but it has to be up to the individual to decide whether they want to get involved in that. And as OP explicitly said, they barely even know the person that has cancer. If you barely know someone that has cancer, you're just not going to shave your head as much as it is a nice thing to do. And OP donated $100. Is that not enough? Nonetheless, here we go. Let's see what happened in this one. Here is the update. A friend of mine just showed me a video yesterday in which my old post had been read. Honestly, I'd nearly forgotten about it since I was only there to ask if I was the jerk or not. And since I don't want to go through the pain of trying to do an update on r slash ammo the jerk, I thought I'd just do it here since Entitled spells out Gary pretty well. This is, by the way, on r slash Entitled People. Other than that shaving incident, he tried to get us to partially pay for his food multiple times by combining the check and dividing it equally when he always got the most expensive thing on the menu. And once even pulled the I forgot my wallet bit. He was described as a neckbeard by multiple people, including women he flirted with. He tried to get a married neighbor woman that was older than him to have an affair with her and then later egged her apartment door when she refused. That one I only learned about a couple of months after my original post. And no, Gary never saw consequences for doing that. I also learned he stole several video games and DVDs from friends, mooch food and drink out of their fridges, and even went through a period as a squatter for two months by refusing to leave a house he'd been let into by a former tenant, and the landlord actually paid him to leave. Gary's also an extreme hypocrite who contradicted himself more than a corrupt politician. For example, one minute he'd be anti-vax, the next he'd be complaining about other people who weren't getting the C-19 vaccine. Pretty sure he never got it too. I can't believe I ever had any sympathy for this man. So then getting into what happened after Gary shaved Opie's head. Gary's family harassed me and tried to make me drop the charges. I not only didn't drop the charges, but I also reported that harassment to the police. Only problem is, it didn't bloody stop. In fact, it got worse, mainly from Gary's mother, whom I can see where Gary got his charming personality from. She showed up to my apartment a couple of weeks after the shaving incident to scream at me that I knew nothing about what they were going through, and a little hair wasn't a big deal. I told her my hair was a big deal to me, and what Gary did was inexcusable. Well, that earned me a slap on the face, followed by a swift kick to the nuts, followed by a few more kicks to my body after I went down. It was all recorded by a camera that I had watching the front door. The landlord wouldn't let me put in a ring doorbell cam. One of my neighbors saw her and screamed at her that they'd be calling the police. Gary's mum ran and I ended up going to the hospital with minor injuries, mostly just bruises, a black eye and a sore groin. Gary's mother got arrested and I filed a lawsuit against her for attacking me. I saw her in court twice for both her assault on me and the lawsuit I filed for her assault. This woman had taken several self-defense classes over the years, so she knew how to fight. That had the judge consider her a trained individual, and she was sentenced to six months in jail, given two years probation, and ordered to pay my medical bills. She actually cried to the judge about the money, but he wasn't having it. It took some time to see her in court again for my lawsuit against her, as she was out of jail by then. I was awarded 10,000 for the harassment, emotional damages, and lost work hours, and she had to pay all court and lawyer fees, which she cried about again because she didn't want to pay anything to the man who'd ruined her and her son's lives. But she had the money for both court cases because she had no problem paying. But around that time, I heard Carrie's relative with cancer passed away. I don't know any details, just that they passed on. I admit that was sad, but again, I never knew this person. 
but Gary made that condition his hill to die on when he tried to make an example out of me. Gary got some probation and community service for what he did to my hair, and he cut contact with our entire friend group and eventually moved away. Where to? I don't know. I don't care either. As for my hair, well, it grew back just fine. Took nearly half a year to get it back how it was. My boss had me put it out of sight for a while, and I was wearing a hat everywhere for at least a month. I did take that 10k I got in the lawsuit and combine it with my savings for a down payment on a house. So I've since moved into a much better abode. I also have a girlfriend now that's living with me. It was a bit soon for her to move in, but there were extenuating circumstances. We're making it work though, and I'm happy. So there we go then. Good to see some proper justice for something that, yeah, you could say is a little bit innocuous, you know, just shaving someone's hair, but hair makes up such an important part of someone's life, right? Hair gives you confidence, for people with great hair, they can see it as one of their best attributes. So to remove that from somebody for literally no reason when they're asleep against their will. Yeah, I mean, it is assault. And I'm glad to see, as I said, that there was some proper justice done to big old Gary. What I love as well that this became a family affair. Gary's mum, I, I presume that this is one of the reasons why Gary acts this way right now. His mum, clearly so protective and so enabling, saying, no, come on, it's fine. And by the way, I'm trained in some sort of combat and I'm going to kick you in the balls. Like, good, really good. Yeah, good to see them both uh, having some charges put against them. And that 10K going to good use. Great story. Love the update. It's very rare that we get a Redditor come back after almost two years to give us an update on the situation. But OP, thank you very much for doing that and concluding this story. All the best. All right then, now back to r slash am I the jerk. Would I be the jerk if I go on vacation instead of my brother's wedding? My brother, Tom, who is 36, and I, a 26-year-old woman, have never had a really solid relationship. Due to our age gap, we didn't spend much time together, and by the time I was old enough to develop a personality, he was moved out of the house. For the last two years, my brother and his fiancée, Sarah, have been planning their wedding, and it's coming up in September. I was asked to be a bridesmaid. I figured I was only asked as a courtesy since I'm her soon-to-be sister-in-law, but I still took it seriously. I've been a bridesmaid for the last two years. Just a few weeks ago, I managed to save up to buy the $800 bridesmaid dress. Overall, in the last two years, between group outings to parties, dinners, lunches, clothes, etc., I spent thousands of dollars. Eventually, all the girls in the wedding and I became extremely close, and I started to get hyped for the wedding. Sarah recently got close with her brother's wife, Becky. Last week, she dropped the ball on me that she no longer wants me to be a bridesmaid, and she'd prefer if Becky take my place. It broke my heart a little, but it's her wedding, and it's not my place to tell her how to run it, so I said, fine. Yesterday, I went to my brother's house to pick up the bridesmaid dress and was going to see if I could return it since it was within the time frame. Sarah was completely appalled and said that Becky was going to wear it since she and I are the same size. I said that would be fine, but they'd have to pay me the 800 for it. Sarah said that Becky couldn't afford it and I should just be nice and let her use it and said that I could keep it after the wedding. I explained that I'm not just giving away the dress and I'm not ever going to use it after the wedding. After some bickering back and forth, I just ended up taking it and leaving. My brother and Sarah tried to compromise with me and say that I could be the assistant flower girl and I felt offended at that offer. After I said no, they then said that Becky could give me 250 bucks for it. Again, no. And I returned the dress and got a full refund. I told them I understand that it's their wedding, but they're being extremely disrespectful to me and I don't need to deal with it. And I'm not going to the wedding. Today, my coworker says that she has an extra round trip plane ticket to go to Miami that she'll sell to me for half price. Plus, I would have to pay for half the hotel and I can go hang out with her in Florida. The only downside is that I'll be in Florida for the week of my brother's wedding. So, will I be the jerk if I just go party in Miami instead of going to my brother's wedding? Okay, immediate reaction here is no, you absolutely wouldn't be the jerk in this situation if you didn't go to the wedding. You've been absolutely used and abused for want of a better term. First of all, spent thousands on your dress and all of the bridesmaid stuff and probably like some hen do and that sort of rubbish. And then you've put loads of time into it. And for all that, just to be shot back in your face. First of all, saying, yeah, you're no longer the bridesmaid. Very soon, close to the wedding, that is. And then saying, you can be the assistant flower girl if you want, which by the way, as far as I know, it's just not a thing. That is just the ultimate disrespect. So I see no problem with you just going, you know what? Nah, can't be, can't be bothered. I'm just not going to come at all. Have a good one, lads enjoy and i'll enjoy miami now 
On the other hand, you could say, be the bigger person and just accept that these two are just kind of mugging you off, but it is still your brother. And in theory, you could just still go and just be like a, you know, a normal guest. But I don't know. Ultimately, I'd feel so disrespected. I'd just be like, yeah, I can't be asked. I'm just not going. I'm going to go have a good time with someone that actually wants to be with me. Maybe that's a bit too harsh. Let me know your thoughts down below. And now for our final post, am I the jerk for laughing at my brother's tattoo? This is a pretty cut and dry scenario. My little brother has been in a string of relationships since he was young enough to know what dating was. On several occasions, the relationships ended because he was caught cheating with another girl. These are just the ones that I know about. There could be more. In fact, his current girlfriend was the other woman from his previous relationship. He, I'll call him Danny, still lives with my parents, and I headed over on the 4th for barbecue. When he reached out for a hug, I noticed his arm was super red, and he showed me his brand new tattoo that he'd literally just got. In huge words, it said loyalty in cursive. Where I might be the jerk is that I kind of laughed as soon as I saw it, and I didn't try to hide it at all. It wasn't a dramatic laugh. He said, what's so funny? And I just said his tattoo was really ironic. He got angry and stormed off to his room and didn't join my parents and I and our sister for dinner. I told them what happened and they said that I was being a jerk. And my sister said that people are allowed to change. But I personally think that he's acting like a child by locking himself in his room and that I shouldn't be blamed for a 25 year old storming off. No. You have to laugh at that. And if your brother cannot see the funny side of his new tattoo, then that's on him. Like if I was in his shoes and I'd done those same things and I got that tattoo and my older brother, I'm 25 by the way, and my older brother laughed at me, I would just say, you know what? That is completely fair. Maybe I'd be a little bit annoyed by it and say, look, I'm trying to change. Please don't laugh. But I could have no qualms with someone laughing at me who knows that I've cheated multiple times in the past and then have the most ironic tattoo of all time. It's just a fact. And maybe the fact that you can't see yourself in that light and don't understand why this is objectively funny that you've got that tattoo is, is your own lack of self-awareness and the reason why you're still doing these things and cheating and probably thinking it's not bad. I don't know. Maybe it's time for, uh, for Opie's brother to have a look in the mirror and think, yeah, what I'm actually doing here is this tattoo... Have I got this to try and prove to myself that I can be loyal or am I just clutching at straws? I don't know. Nonetheless, it's a very funny tattoo to get given your history. And um, yeah, OP, you're not the joke for laughing. It's funny. Struggling to stay faithful and remain attracted to my wife after we experienced a violent attack together. Not sure what to do. However, like all posts, this has been reposted to r slash am I the devil with a new title. My pregnant wife is scarred and therefore less valuable because she defended me from a fatal attack. Please validate my need to cheat on her. So as you can see, that is someone else's interpretation. Let's see if we agree. I can't talk to anyone about this for obvious reasons. I even tried speaking to a therapist and they made me feel so low I haven't gone back since. My wife and I have been together for six years, married for three. We currently have a bundle of joy on the way and she's about five months along. My wife was always on the fence about kids, but I was adamant about wanting them. And now that it's becoming so real, I'm not sure anymore. I feel like I've just been on autopilot and after spending this whole week buying baby stuff, I need to figure it out. Last year, my wife and I were at the park relaxing like we do almost every weekend and someone yelled at us for speaking in my native language, Korean. My wife is trying to learn too because she's not Korean or Asian at all, but wants to only speak Korean at home to make sure our family is fully bilingual and they don't lose their culture. We were practicing out loud and sharing a snack and this guy just walks up to us out of nowhere with wild racist BS. He kicked our food and there was some arguing. And while I was calling the police with my back turned, he tried to hit me with a pretty large rock. My wife jumped in between and ended up taking the full force of the hit which literally busted her forehead open and knocked her out cold for almost a minute. I rushed my wife to the hospital and the guy ran off and was eventually caught by police a few weeks later. My wife needed 14 stitches right across her face and had two black eyes and blood in them. Her face was swollen beyond recognition for a few days too and when she fell, she messed up an old knee injury. So when she got out of hospital the next day, half her face was covered in bandages and she was limping but she was still cracking jokes in the ER. After the bandages and stitches came out, she was told she would need to wait at least a year before having her scar surgically fixed or whatever treatments. But now that the year has almost passed, 
I've started hinting at her scheduling appointments and such. This entire time, I've been struggling with remaining attached to her, despite it. But I didn't tell her since I didn't want to be cruel. She's now saying she doesn't think she wants to get anything done because she wants to save the money for the baby. I've offered to pay for half of it and she still hasn't really looked into having it done. I've also pushed back her meeting my parents again because of this. They live outside of our country, hence why they haven't met yet. And bringing her around my friends since it happened? Another part of me is also just sort of mad she even did it. I feel like half of a man now and i've had to delete myself off dating apps before making a mistake and i've been channeling it all into the gym but every time i look at her i'm reminded of all those feelings she hasn't changed a bit besides the scar she's obviously handled it way better than i did and somehow it's making me love her less this plus the pregnancy i don't even know what to do i thought about asking for a hall pass but i know without a doubt she will leave me I thought about taking care of my needs on the side so I can be the man she needs me to be, but I know she'll eventually find out and she'll hate me and make my life hell or leave me a single father and I'll never hear from her again. I just wish it had never happened, but I really need some other perspective or opinion on this. Okay, so hopefully after that, you guys can now understand what this subreddit is all about. It's people on Reddit taking other Redditors serious posts like this one that was posted in r slash relationship advice and just saying, oh my God, isn't this person horrible? This is what they're really thinking. I love the fact that they give it a new title, just so much more truthful than, oh, I need some help, what should I do? No, actually, I'm a horrible person. How about that? Because those are the facts. And I think this is a perfect one to start off this episode. Just clearly, this person is horrific. I mean, for all you know, your wife saved your life. And this is how you react to her? Unbelievable. Your wife's strength to go through all of this, you know, go to hospital, have her head split open, permanent scarring probably, all those stitches. And now she's like, no, you know what? I don't want to get cosmetic surgery or surgery to make it look better. I want to save the money for our child and our family. And she's been positive throughout the whole thing. And you're the one that's saying, you know, actually don't really like her anymore. Kind of lost attraction ever since she saved my life and got some scars on her face. Are you sure? There you go. I would say comment down below if you agree with me. But if you don't agree with me on that, you must be psychotic. Yes, you're absolutely the devil. Okay, now moving on to our next post. Now, the original here is posted in a subreddit called r slash anti-feminist, which, yeah, kind of gives you an inclination into what this person might be like. The original title is this. Have you noticed even chicks well into their late 30s and 40s think they can afford to be picky? I mean, look, not a great start. Now, another editor has taken this post, cross-posted it onto r slash am I the devil and given it a new title. Have you noticed even chicks well into their late 30s and 40s think they can afford to be picky, even though I keep hitting on them anyway? Ah, here we go. This is the post. I find this extremely irritating. I was talking to a pretty washed up looking 37 year old woman. I was 26 at the time at a bar once and could tell she was visibly attracted to me. I was a little hot on the trigger and tried to close after only talking to her for a few minutes and she responded, well, you just go right in there, huh? As if I'd broken some sacred rule or violated some mandatory 30 minute screening period that she was entitled to. Never mind that she was a hard 6.5 to 7 with tons of makeup, a divorced single mother with baggage and hanging out at a freaking bar well past her prime. Another example was a girl I met online. Again, very unremarkable, but a bit younger, 27 and very plain looking. Cute enough to screw, but not to work for. I again attempted to close without doing the whole song and dance I do for someone I'm genuinely attracted to and got a similar response. Women respond to this with, that's because they know guys are just trying to use them for sex, so they're weeding those types out. What happened to the hookup culture and girls de-hopping? I'm not a chad, but I'm well above average looking. Which is it? They want casual sex or don't they? I think this is just another example of supply and demand. Men want and need women way more than the reverse because they're hornier and this allows even the most average women to think they can afford to be this selective even though these guys just want to screw them. Wow. Uh, And yeah, if you didn't understand this subreddit after that post, then I don't think I can help you anymore.
I mean, that, clearly, just a horrific person. The f first of all, the fact they've gone on r slash anti-feminist is saying everything that you need to hear. But secondly, the post itself, my god, I mean, you've openly admitted yourself that you're trying to close, like, not that it's a business deal or anything, but close after a few minutes of chatting to someone. What are they going to do? Just say, yeah, you know what? Sure, let's go and have sex. Well, that's just not going to happen, is it? Uh, and also, let's be honest, this guy is probably very creepy, probably not that good looking as well. I think that anyone that references themselves as very good looking or not quite a chad but i'm pretty fit it's like yeah we, we all know that you're probably not going to be an absolute stunner pal uh yeah once again an absolutely terrible person that thankfully has been found due to r slash am i the devil okay now for our third post this originally comes from r slash marriage with the title my wife won't talk to me anymore cross posted of course to r slash am i the devil my wife won't talk to me anymore because I told her not to talk to me anymore. Ah, here we go. My wife, who is 31, and I, 46, have been together for six years, married for two. She used to talk to me all the time. She used to share her day with me, just randomly tell me her thoughts, stuff like that. However, she also used to want to talk about problems we were having. A lot. It felt like we were always talking about what I did wrong. She thought I spent too much time talking to exes. We were friends. I don't prioritize her over work. It's my career. Am I supposed to quit? And mostly that I didn't care enough about her. It was so many different ways that she came to that conclusion, but it was like we were just always sitting down for a serious talk. So I told her about a year ago that I didn't want to talk anymore. I was just tired of hearing everything I was doing wrong. I provide everything we need. Can I just have a break? I told her that if she had a problem with the way I did things, then she could get out of my house and we'd get a divorce. She told me that she was trying to communicate because she didn't feel appreciated and that I had one foot out the door. But I think that's ridiculous. I know it's harsh, but I was at my wits end. So now, a year later, she barely talks to me at all. When I ask about her day, she says, fine. When I talk to her about work or politics or my day, she says, oh wow, cool, and kind of walks away. Her attitude isn't bad. She's very sweet, but it's just like she doesn't care anymore. I didn't want to talk about our problems anymore, but I didn't mean stop talking, period. We really don't talk about anything that doesn't have to do with our life or household. In the evenings, she just turns on the TV and we watch something until bed. Now, I don't know what to do because I just found out today that she won a pretty big award at her job and she didn't tell me. Last Friday, she said she had to work late and it was cool. I didn't ask. Today I found out that she was really at a dinner where she was celebrated for this award. She invited some of her friends and her mum and brothers. I ran into her brother at the store today and he mentioned the dinner and said that he was sorry I couldn't make it. I asked what he meant and he said the dinner, how I wasn't able to go because I was sick. I asked him to explain the whole thing to me so now he knows too. What am I supposed to do? Is she punishing me or something? Do I tell her that I know? Why wouldn't she tell me? I didn't think she'd take it this far and now I'm thinking she's being petty. Does anyone have any experience here? I love my wife and I'd do anything for her, but I'm so confused. Well guys, get your comments in down below on this one. I think this one is not as crazy as the first two where the people were just outright like horrible people. This is more of a, you know, I don't, I, I honestly don't think that OP is a terrible, terrible person for this. Yes, clearly telling someone that you don't want to talk to them anymore is going to have this result. But I feel like with communication, this isn't over. Whereas the, the previous two were just like disgusting humans. Maybe I'm being a little bit too lenient here. It is pretty bad what he's done. Just saying, you know what? I don't want to talk to you anymore about anything. And to be fair, that is exactly what his wife did. So you can't really complain there. But yeah, um, I think you guys need to get back to, to, to some sort of normality and have a conversation. Like maybe in the first place, you shouldn't have just said to her, yeah, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Maybe just put your point across a little bit better than that. I don't know. I can't really get over the, the last comment here. I love my wife and I'd do anything for her apart from listen to her feelings. Like that is on you. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but I kind of get the impression that perhaps she is just kind of you know, fully out. She's just saving up some money or I don't know, just kind of living her life just on her own until she's ready to leave you. Bit harsh, but I think that kind of seems like what's going on. Opie's actually added a couple of edits where he said that he's tried to chat to her and she's kind of just shut it down and it hasn't gone well. So yeah, seems to me like it might be the beginning of the end or maybe for her, the end of the end. 
Who knows? Comment down below, guys. I want to hear your thoughts. Now for our fourth post. Now this was originally posted on r slash true off my chest. I cheated on my wife three years ago. She agreed to forgive me if we open the marriage, but I now live in agony every day. So basically my wife, who is 39, found out that I, a 41 year old, have been hooking up with a woman I met online who lived two hours away. When the woman visited, we checked into a hotel. This went on for three months and we'd met a handful of times by the time my wife caught us. She was waiting in the hotel lobby and saw us coming down from the room. She left me the next day. We separated for eight months and they were terrible on all of us, especially the children. Got a nine-year-old boy and two younger girls. We started talking about getting back together. My wife thought that since our sex life wasn't enough for me and that she was sure I would cheat on her again, we might as well open the marriage. I told her no because I've learned my mistake, but she wouldn't waver. I relented. We decided, well, she did, not to tell each other the when, where, and with whom. Now, over two years later, we are back to normal on the outside. But on the inside, I'm dying a little each day. Every time I see her happy, I wonder if this is just her old bubbly self or if she was thinking of someone. She is a very beautiful woman and I'm sure she has no problems finding men who want her. Whenever she takes a shower after coming home, whenever she rejects my advances, I think that she's been with someone. And that kills me. I've tried to discuss closing the marriage again, but she shuts these attempts very quickly with the divorce card. Before all this happened, we had amazing sex several times a week, but now we've probably done it four to five times these past three years. In fact, I've stopped asking because the sex is now painfully bad. I haven't slept with anybody else because the look on my wife's face in that lobby still makes me sick with guilt. I don't know how much more I can take. I love my wife and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Will she ever stop punishing me? Have you ever forgiven a cheating spouse and stop punishing them? What is going on in her head? Ah, yes. What a brilliant way to end this episode. I mean, it's just so good. It's so good. It's so perfect. This, this is karma. This right here is karma. You now feel terrible because you know full well that your wife is sleeping with other men. That's right, the exact thing that you did before when it wasn't accepted by both of you, when it wasn't an agreement that this was actually allowed in your relationship, you cheated on your wife, had no real remorse until you got caught, and now you feel pain because the same thing's happening to you even though you said, okay, fine, let's do it. Uh, like, yeah, stupidity. Congratulations, you're a cheater. And this is what you deserve. By the way, I've got to say that your wife is an absolute badass. Like, I'm sorry, she's probably been absolutely destroyed by this and is now living a much less happy life, I'm sure, despite the facade that she may have and the other partners that she may have found. No one wants this, really, do they? But at least she said, you know what? If you're going to do this to me, I'm going to do this to you. And that is the only way I'm staying with you. So from her perspective, I say unbelievable. From yours, you're an absolute clown if you thought this was ever going to be a good thing. Like you are a monk. I'm actually reading a comment here. Someone's saying the funniest part is that I wonder if she's even seeing someone or just keeping him guessing. I guess the point is there that she has now so much power in this relationship. She must know the mental torment that, that you, OP, are going through. And she also clearly knows how much you deserve it because that's exactly what she went through. Can you imagine that the months of her trying to work out what's going on. Is my husband OP cheating on me? Tracking you guys down, going to the hotel. Didn't sound as if it was just a chance that she saw you in a hotel. I reckon she knew you guys were in there. Terrible stuff. And now she's getting her own way. It's great to see. And OP, you are definitely the devil. Am I the jerk for how I, a 37 year old man, reacted to my son, who is 17, coming out to me? So, I've always known that my son had an interest in men. He was slow on the pickup of incognito mode, and from the searches he made, I figured he was at least bi-curious, if that's the proper term for it, since he hit puberty. Well, last year he started bringing a boy around, and it was obvious they were dating, to the point I figured that he knew I knew, and it wasn't a big deal to anyone. Well, apparently, I was wrong. After school yesterday, he and his boyfriend came up to me and said there was something really important they needed to tell me. My son said that they were dating and had been for a year. Well, I was surprised that he wasn't aware I knew and was a bit thrown off. My mouth moved faster than my brain and I said, well, that's pretty freaking gay. Now, I thought it was peak comedy since it is in fact gay. 
However, I understand using the word gay in that way gives it a very negative undertone, hence the mouth faster than brain comments. Now, my son and I are usually pretty edgy with our humor, this being fairly tame stuff for the stuff we normally joke about. While probably not appropriate for this situation, it wasn't not our norm for a conversation between us. However, he and his boyfriend were very, very upset and left. I'm probably the jerk, but I thought I would check and see if you all had some advice on what I can say to fix it. He currently won't respond to my texts or calls. Okay, guys, I think what I'm about to say is going to be very, very controversial. Now, it's not the first time on this channel that I've said something controversial and you have all disagreed with me in the comments down below. But what I will say is that I think this is just a tough spot. I don't think that this man, OP, has necessarily acted maliciously or has done something on purpose to hurt his son or anything like that. I genuinely think he's just made a very, very bad mistake in this one instance. And I don't think that he's understood his son really as much as he probably thinks he has. Now look, stay with me on this. And by all means, get in the comments down below and tell me that I'm just barking up the complete wrong tree and that what he's done is terrible. I'm not saying it's not, by the way. I'm just saying, with the context of knowing this son's relationship with his dad or, or this relationship entirely and knowing that it's, you know, pretty tongue in cheek, they like dark humor, they seem to have a lot of banter together in general. I can understand why in that split second, it just, it just came out, you know? The fact of the matter is, his son being gay is so obvious to his dad that he was just like, what, why are you even telling me that? And I think that is why he did this. Now, Obviously, it's a terrible thing to have said um, and just, just not the right moment to have done this at all or even made a joke about this. And given everything we know, the, the history of, of, of homophobia and the fact that the word gay has just been used very, very poorly for generations over the years. Yeah, it's, a, it's an awful thing to have said, but I just think it's just come out. I don't think it necessarily says anything about this man and that he's homophobic or is against his son being gay or anything like that. I just think it's, it's just come out. And do we have to like, hammer him for that? I don't know. It's not great. And I'm not on his side here. I'm just saying I can kind of understand why in that split second he just said it because he has that sort of rapport and chat with his son. He's like, what? Yeah, obviously I know you're gay. It's been obvious to me for over a year, for years. But yeah, obviously if he could have that moment again, I'm sure he wouldn't do this sort of thing. And for, for his son and, and his boyfriend, yeah, it's absolutely shocking. I'm not saying that's not. But hey, listen, you get in the comments down below. Tell me I'm just barking up the complete wrong tree. But yeah, it's a controversial opinion. Now, I may not be phrasing this exactly how I'd like to. And again, like it's, I don't even need to say that it's a terrible thing to have said. And like, you know, we're past that point. Obviously, this is not how this kid wanted his dad to react when he came out to him. Like, it's a shocking thing to have said. And I'm not surprised that he's in a terrible mood and is not speaking to you, ignoring your calls, etc., etc. That is, like, there's not even, not even any point of even, you know, wondering why that is the case or saying, is that the right reaction? It's obvious. However, let me get this comment up on screen because I think this kind of explains a little bit better what I'm trying to say. So this user has said, you're the jerk for the wording. I won't lie, as someone who's been out and proud for years, that joke made me laugh my butt off, but your son needed support more than humor. In the grand scheme of things though, I was expecting much worse from the title. Okay, fair enough. So I think if you just apologize and explain that you meant it in a humorous way and that you fully accept him and his partner, you and your son will be fine. Uh, you know, there it is. I think that's fine. What I'm trying to say is, I don't think it's like a crazy homophobic sort of slur. And I know I'm going on here, but yeah, this can be this can be resolved for sure. It looks like you have a little bit of a jokey relationship with your son in any way, and it's just not the moment to do it, but it's not the end of the world. Have a sit down with the lad and tell him, look, son, I'll be honest, I did have my my intuition that I thought you, you, you probably were gay. And that's why I said this. I do apologize though. And I support you so much. And I, I fully am behind the fact that, that you're gay. Or, you know, whatever, whatever sexuality you subscribe to, it's completely fine with me. I'll live forever. I mean, clearly I'm not a dad, but um, yeah, just make sure he knows that you support him. That's all you need to do. Am I the jerk for telling my wife off after getting our daughter to cut her hair off, even after being told not to? My wife is currently battling cancer, and one of the things she's told me she's struggling with the most was losing her hair. She's been given a near 100% chance of survival since we caught her early, but the chemotherapy has destroyed her hair anyway, 
and she had to shave what was left of it off a few weeks ago not long after that she suggested we attempt to get our 17 year old daughter anna to do so as well now anna has very long hair that she puts a lot of care into so i felt it was appropriate to ask her in private if she wanted to or would be willing to do such a thing She told me that she didn't want to cut her hair and i figured that that was the end of that however yesterday they came home from a girl's shopping trip something they do every so often and anna had a buzzed haircut that struck me as odd after what she'd said so after dinner i talked to her and she told me that my wife had said she would never forgive anna if she didn't show her support by buzzing her head I asked her if she was happy about it and she said that she wasn't when i went to bed i brought it up with my wife and she said it was anna's choice to or not i just told her how i'd see the situation i told her off saying she needed to respect anna's personal choices and that a 17 year old girl being against shaving her head wasn't exactly out of the ordinary however my wife simply said it was to show support for her i've been sleeping on the couch since Yeah, I love my wife and I understand that she's going through something traumatic. However, her attitude comes off as very manipulative to me and that's not behavior that I feel I can personally accept. I'm not sure if I can move past this to continue the relationship. So, am I the jerk? Okay, this one a little bit more cut and dry than the last one. (laughs) I'm really interested to see the comments from that. Nonetheless, this is uh yeah obviously just your wife's just done something terrible like fine going through cancer obviously pretty bad but you can't guilt trip your 17 year old daughter to chop her entire hair off something that she loves so much think about how that's going to affect her in life i mean who knows what that what that effect could have i don't even necessarily think it matters if if she's been given a near 100 percent chance of survival or whatever the decision of chopping off your hair has to be down to the person who the hair belongs to surely anna's not even happy with this i don't want to call it selfish because look going through through the the chemotherapy and having cancer is clearly a terrible thing and of course you want support in that moment and, and throughout that period but it's not ideal is it anyway op you're obviously not the jerk for for telling your wife off. Okay, now for our third post. Am I the jerk for telling my brother it's pathetic that he can't do the basics of what his wife did? I love my sister-in-law and brother. They have two kids and my sister-in-law Rachel was a kind of stay-at-home mum. She worked from home part-time but also took care of the kids and all the chores. I was over multiple times and the house was spotless. Really, I thought she was just extra cleaning when she had guests, but no. When I had my kid, she showed me her schedule. She'd be up at five for meal prepping for the whole day. Like she never stopped. And a lot of her tips helped me with my own home. Now my brother lost his job and it was decided that Rachel would go back to work full time and he would stay at home. The kids are in kindergarten and first grade. He has this on easy mode. I've been over to help sometimes since he just sucks at it. The house is always a mess. The kids are usually late to school. He asked me to drive them after the school talk to him and he doesn't cook. It's just sad. He got in a huge argument with his wife since dinner wasn't done and she had to make it. He was ranting about how it's unfair and that he's trying. I told him it's pathetic that he can't do the basics of what his wife did. He has eight hours free and he can't keep the house clean. I told him she'll divorce him if he doesn't stop being lazy and figure it out. He left after calling me a jerk and my mum is now on me for what I said. Yeah, no excuses in my opinion. If you're a stay-at-home parent and the other one's out earning all the money and working super hard and then especially given the fact that they did all that stuff that you're now supposed to be doing and just got it done, then yeah, no excuses. You've got to do the same. Simple as that. Now, of course, there's going to be a learning period, an adjustment period when you first switch roles, but you've got to get it done. It's going to be hard work, but your wife did it. Why can't you? Oh, actually, I'm just looking at the comments, and this is a great point. She works part-time, said a user here, and did it all. He has no job at all, and he can't do it. I mean, crazy. And also, it's just really, really poor form. If you can't do it in the eight hours of a day, then your wife has to do it after doing all her work, and then coming back and probably being knackered and expecting to just, like, chill out. She's then got to do even more work. It's just not fair, and ultimately, this relationship is not going to last very long if your brother continues on like this am i the jerk for calling my daughter's father spineless and his girlfriend creepy over their name choice for their daughter a little bit of context for you all i ended up falling pregnant with my 10 year old daughter during a drunken hookup with a friend in my mid-20s not the most glamorous or flattering truth but it's the truth all the same when we found out we decided to keep the child and co-parents while remaining friends 
We were never a couple and we didn't want to be one either Four years ago, he began to date his long-term girlfriend and they moved in together last year She fell pregnant and i've been supportive to them both as much as I could be without crossing any lines I've encouraged my daughter to help out whenever she's staying with them during the pregnancy and to behave I've also made it clear that I want the children to have a close relationship despite having different mothers I've even said that if they were comfortable with it on nights I have my daughter if they ever want time alone I'll babysit once they have the baby so my daughter can spend time with her sibling All in all I thought everything was great and I was excited for my daughter to have a sibling as she's always wanted one But I had no interest in having another child Three days ago my friend and his girlfriend had a daughter They asked me to bring my daughter to the hospital to meet her little sister yesterday alongside others of the family So I did exactly that But when they introduced us to the baby, I was shocked They'd named her using my daughter's name Wait, what? That is so dumb. I wasn't expecting that She didn't seem to have any issue with this when she introduced the baby bold as brass My friend seemed uncomfortable and wouldn't look at me directly I asked them what they were playing at at which point my friend's father said he'd take my daughter down to the cafeteria To get something to eat and left with her My friend told me to calm down and not overreact while his girlfriend told me she didn't see the issue and it was a pretty name I asked them if they'd name the baby for my daughter trying to understand the logic here But his girlfriend said that no, it was just a pretty name she liked I then asked if they planned to use a nickname or a middle name when addressing her on a daily basis And her response was that she didn't see a need for that I told them they were being ridiculous and that they couldn't do this I then told his girlfriend that I found this frankly creepy I told my friend he was being spineless if he was happy to go along with this He tried to claim our daughter could use a nickname or something But I shut that down immediately Asking why it was more reasonable for a girl who has used that name for a decade to shame her name Compared to a baby who had no concept of what a name was yet His girlfriend told me I was being a female dog talking to her like that after she just gave birth And asked the nurses to remove me saying I was being disruptive Maybe my temper is running a little too hot though And I was too harsh on her when she'd just given birth It's just so freaking weird Yeah, it's very weird No doubt about it As you can tell from me reading it right there just was not expecting that at all. I mean, safe to say, OP, you're obviously not the jerk. And funnily enough, I do agree with you. I do think it's actually more on your daughter's father, y- your friend, because mm, I don't know, may- maybe his girlfriend doesn't have too much of an affiliation or care for you. Who knows? Maybe she's just a bit of a weird person. But come on, as a dad, you can't have two daughters with the same name, even if they are from different mothers. That's ridiculous. If you're not going to put your foot down, then yeah, you're uh, not a man that I want to be associated with. That is for sure. It's very weird and I can't quite work out why this woman is wanting to do this or why this man is allowing it. Now, continuing on with the stories about names, here is post number five. Would I be the jerk if I don't change my son's name even though it may cause him to lose an inheritance? I, 24 years old, got pregnant while I was taking a gap year traveling. I met an older guy, nothing gross. I was 19, he was 23, we had fun. I was working in a bar to make money while I explored his city. When I got pregnant, he lost interest really quickly. I understood, but I am pro-choice and I chose not to terminate. I went home and had my son. I also made sure to get child support. He could afford it. He did fight it though. I had to prove paternity in everything. Through that, his parents found out. They are well off. They've met my son and they truly do seem to love him. They provided gifts for his birthday and Christmas. They helped me with extra money so I could complete my university without going into debt. They've taken us on vacation with them so they could spend time with him. They aren't my biggest fans, but we are cordial to each other. Three months ago, my son's father passed away. He got drunk at his bachelor party, tripped on the sidewalk and hit his head. And that was all she wrote. My son and I attended the funeral. We spent a week in that city so his grandparents could see him. They approached me with an offer. They had no other children or grandchildren. Their son was only 28, so he had lots of time to provide them legitimate kids. They didn't say this, I'm just assuming. So they never thought about my son's name. But they said that if I changed his surname to theirs legally, they would make him their primary heir. I think this is dumb. He's their only grandchild and they would deny him an inheritance because of his last name? I said I'd consider it to be polite and I've left it at that. I actually have a pretty good life as it is. 
My family has been very supportive. And because of the whole court thing, my son's father had to have life insurance with him as the beneficiary. Would it be nice for my kid to get a big sum of money? Yes. But do I want him to have the surname of a man who didn't want him, see him, or love him? No. I've been talking to my family about it, and a few of them think that I'm being a jerk for giving up this kind of money for my son. It is generational wealth, and I'm making the decision based on emotion. But I think they're jerks for thinking money is the only thing that matters. I think I'll tell my son's grandparents that they can talk to him about it when he is 16. He'll be old enough to understand the implications, but young enough not to be tied professionally to his last name. You know what? Fair play, OP. I think that last sentence or that last paragraph is actually very sensible because I'm not going to lie. If I was in the spot, I'd probably just say, no, shut up. What are you doing? I'm not changing my kid's surname just to get a bit more money, even if it is generational. I don't care. Like life's not all about money. If you are changing your name to get money, there's something just gross about that. However, yeah, I kind of rate what you're saying, you know, let your son decide when he's old enough to make a decision. Who knows? He might have a different opinion. And ultimately, it is down to him. It's his name. I would say that 16 is a little bit too young. It's just it's just risky, isn't it? I guess he could always change it back. I don't really know how that sort of works. But yeah, overall, it just seems kind of, again, gross, like just ugh, it makes me feel like you know, kind of goosebumpy and creepy that you have these weird grandparents that are just like, oh, we need an heir so badly. Change your name, we'll give you all our money. Like, there's something so horrible about that that I don't like. So I'd be inclined to say just sack them off. And now for our final post of this episode. Am I the jerk for telling my wife I don't care about her dreams? My wife wants to be an influencer on TikTok and YouTube. She's been creating mummy content and content about her day-to-day -day life. When she told me this is something she wanted to do, I didn't have a problem with it. I only said that I don't want our children, who are four and two, in any of her content. I didn't monitor her channel as it didn't really seem necessary. I recently had a look because I thought it would be cute to see what she does in her day-to-day -day life. And I found our children's faces in almost all of her content. I told her she straight up needs to remove all of her content. She said that she knew I wouldn't agree, but she doesn't think it's a big deal. Now, I don't like children content. I feel like a lot of the time, when you see that children make profit, they become less of your kids and more of a product, and your interactions become more performative. And I can see the same thing has happened in her because she posted a video of her getting our two-year-old out of a tantrum and how she deals with that. But how is your first instinct to record and hold a camera while our baby is crying. She started crying, saying that she built this up and this is her dream and deleting her content will ruin it. And I said, I simply don't give a dang. If you don't delete it, I'll consider a divorce. I know a lot of people have children on their social media and I don't mind an Instagram or Facebook post, but to make videos seems too intimate to share. She told her friends and even hinted on her social media accounts that she has an over-controlling and narcissistic husband that doesn't want her on social media. I'm currently being ridiculed by her friends. So am I being over-controlling or narcissistic? No, obviously you're not. Need I say more? Need I say more? If you have explicitly said, I don't want our kids on your videos, that's up to you. It's not one of those things where it's like one person does, one person doesn't. I'm sorry, but if, if one parent doesn't want their kids on videos, I mean, I agree with you. Instagram, Facebook is different. Photos are different. But videos like parenting and, and kind of like, you know, ace family sort of vibe content, then you, you just can't do it. I'm sorry, you just can't. I mean, let's be honest. What do we think of, of parents that make profits from their children? Personally, I think it's pretty disgraceful. One of the most disgusting ways to make money. Actually, I would put it as, you know what? It's, I mean, I don't know. It's not it's not awful, is it? Like there can be some really nice wholesome content. It's when it gets to the, to the stage which it's got to with, with your wife where she is filming first and then actually parenting later. That is when it's actually disgust disgusting, just again, like the last post. Very, very gross behavior. But yeah, do something else with your life, I would say. Or just do some more wholesome content. Not, this is how I deal with my kid when they're in a really bad mood. Oh, I get my phone out first. Pretty poor if you ask me. Am I the jerk for giving my son non-vegan food behind my wife's back? I am 32 and my wife is 33. We've been married for eight years and have a 12 year old son together. About six years ago, my wife decided to go vegan. 
She was sent the documentary Dominion by a vegan friend of hers and ever since has said that non-vegan food is revolting and refuses to eat it. After a long conversation, I agreed to go vegetarian and be vegan in the house and around her, which she was happy with. She also decided our son should be vegan, which after seeing a dietitian, I also agreed with. Things have been fine with this arrangement until a few months ago when I began finding wrappers from non-vegan candy and even burgers from McDonald's in my son's school bag, which he'd been buying with chore money. I had a conversation with my son and he confessed he felt lonely and excluded eating vegan around his friends and that they always had much better candy than he did and it wasn't fair. I decided I didn't want him spending his pocket money on snacks and throwing out the vegan snacks that we actually buy him instead of buying games, etc. It just made no sense. But I also know the way my wife feels about non-vegan products. So I began buying my son what he wanted on our way to football practice instead. Long story short, my wife recently found out what's been going on and completely flipped out. She called me an animal abuse enabler and a few other names and said that I was corrupting our son. Now she's not speaking to me. Our son panicked and told her that I had bought the snacks for him and he didn't know they weren't vegan. I don't blame him for that. He just doesn't want to be in trouble with mum. So am I the jerk here? Oof, this is a tough one to start with. First of all, I will say 100% I don't think that you, OP, the dad, are in the wrong here at all. Like it's a tough spot. I get that. And as much as you really want to, you know, support your wife and, and you yourself have subscribed to, to, to going veggie and respecting your wife being vegan and and having a, a vegan household it's really tough when you see that your kid's life is being negatively impacted i think we can all agree on that by being vegan like it's affecting him in school he's having to spend his own money to get food on top of the food he already has who knows it may also be affecting his relationships in school with his classmates i don't know he says he feels isolated that is tough i think to be honest it gets to a stage with your kids and you're probably at that right now where where you and your wife have to sit down and think really although your wife probably doesn't want to admit this your son doesn't want to be vegan and he's at that age now where it's up to him to decide if he wants to continue being vegan or not maybe he does maybe he wants to be veggie like you i mean you don't want to be vegan you, you said that you, you want to be veggie vegan in the house but you don't want to be fully vegan in, in in your everyday life i think you've openly admitted that maybe his son's the same or maybe he just doesn't want to be vegan or veggie at all and eat you know every food but i think at this stage now it has to be up to him really so yeah you're not the jerk it's a conversation to be had as a family am i the jerk for embarrassing someone by pretending to be japanese backstory i am a 20 year old woman and i have a japanese name even though i am not ethnically japanese my mum is korean and my dad is british they met and fell in love while studying in japan and had me there after marrying we lived there until i was 14 before moving to the states this will be important later today a group of my roommates friends came over to study with her and i happened to be in the living room when they arrived they were introducing themselves to me and when i said my name i have a pretty common japanese girl name so it's pretty hard to be mistaken about the origin one of the girls made a disgusted face and laughed at me saying that was so dumb she said that she was japanese american and i was culturally appropriating her country as a white person i tried to explain that i lived in japan for a while and that was why but she kept insisting i was lying and that if i was telling the truth i'd be able to speak the language since she put it like that i started talking to her in japanese basically explaining where i lived there and asking which prefecture her parents were from etc she then ends up stuttering through a sentence in an awkward manner before leaving in a half later my roommate told me i embarrassed her by pretending to be more japanese than an actual japanese person and appropriating the culture and that her friend expected an apology. So, am I the jerk? You know what, even if you weren't Japanese, I would say you're not the jerk here. Even if you had nothing to do with Japan, I would say you're not the jerk. If you make this person understand that they are being racist, uh, you know, every ist you can possibly think of, realistically. Like, they just are, aren't they? I mean, come on. That is good enough in my, in my opinion. Like, this person needs to be called out on this sort of stuff. Somebody's name, they were given at birth, not by them, doesn't mean that they are guilty of cultural appropriation. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So if you can call that person out and say you are being stupid, even if you're not Japanese, I don't care, call them out. And also, 
that just takes away from the fact that you're obviously not pretending to be Japanese. At, at no point did you say, oh, by the way, I am Japanese. You just spoke in Japanese because you can speak Japanese because you lived in Japan. Um, really, really stupid from this person, but uh, yeah, good on you and do not apologize, obviously. Am I the jerk for suggesting my wife lower her standards so that she'll be less overwhelmed? My wife and I have three kids who are 12, 10 and 8. She is in a constant state of overwhelm and very easily irritated, constantly complaining how it's all too much. I'm of course happy to help and do my fair share for the kids or household, but it's never enough because her standards are too dang high. She insists one of us has to be up at 6.45 every morning to make sure the kids are ready and make the bus, which comes at 7.45. I told her they're old enough to not need that much help already. They can all dress themselves and pour themselves cereal and milk. There's no reason we have to be up. She says that cereal isn't a good enough breakfast. They need something more substantial, especially the 12 year old, and that the 10 year old has ADHD and will definitely struggle without help in the morning. And anyway, she wants to see them off and kiss them goodbye for the day. So she gets up, I don't, then she gets upset that I never give her a morning off when all she needs to do is just take the morning off when she wants and then let the kids handle themselves. Also, she is super strict about screen time during the week and is exhausted and snappy from arguing about it with the kids and upset that I don't support her strict limit of two hours a day. I say as long as homework is done, why not until bed? She says it's not healthy for them. They need to play outside or with games and toys, read some books, just entertain themselves in more ways than one. I agree they should enjoy other things, but I don't see why we have to make such a rigid limit. She also likes to get out on weekends and do stuff like zoos, museums, etc. But then she complains about the planning for the outing and how grouchy the youngest gets by the end of it. And again, I say, let's just chill at home and voila, you've cut the work. I'm an engaged and active parent. I'm not trying to get out of it, but I don't think I should have to help my wife duke herself out of her own self-created holes. She creates the stress for herself and then turns to me to alleviate it, which I think is unfair. So am I the jerk for telling her she needs to do less and then she won't need this level of help? Oh my goodness me. Honestly, I just feel bad for your wife. I really do. This guy is just not helping himself, is he? Like, at no point is this mum saying, I hate doing all these things. Let's stop doing them, right? She knows the benefit of doing all these things. Like, she's making and creating a great life for her children. Imagine you wake up, right, with your, with your two other siblings. You've got to make your own breakfast, get clothes, get ready for school, all that stuff. You're eight years old. Your parents are still asleep. You're probably thinking to yourself, it's not ideal. Why don't they get up at the same time as we do and help us out, you know? That's number one. Secondly, the point this man's making about, oh, how about don't do these activities anymore? So you're saying in effect there that you don't want your children to go and do these outings. Yes, obviously the eight-year-old is probably getting a bit tired by the end, but what's the alternative? You sit inside all day on the weekend and just do nothing? I think that would probably be worse. I mean, you think of a good childhood. Do you think of going to the zoo and doing all these fun activities with your parents? Yeah, you might get a bit tired by the end of the day, but you don't remember that. Or do you think of staying inside? No, that doesn't sound fun to me. Let's be honest. Like what this bloke is really saying is stupid. Let's all chill at home every day, all the time, and you've cut the work. No, being a parent is hard work. That's kind of what you sign up for. Trust me, I'd know, right? As a dad of zero kids, I would know that. But seriously, parents down below, you get what I'm saying, right? Give me a comment, you know, back me up on this one. Parents have to work hard to make their children's lives fun and, you know, easier. That's the job of a parent. Let's be completely real. So to say, let's just stay in bed until our kids go to school, let's just do nothing on the weekends, is a total load of rubbish. I mean, you said at the end, I'm an engaged and active parent. You don't sound that to me, my friend. I'm going to be completely honest with you. You don't sound that engaged. And you definitely don't sound active. You do, though, sound like a bit of a jerk. Sorry to say it, but that's how I feel. Am I the jerk for going on vacation without my husband? My husband and I planned a week vacation to New Orleans in the US. We, but mostly I, have been planning this for months. Back in March, I told him that I would plan most of it where to go and what to do. All he has to do was make sure he had the week off and buy the plane tickets. I spent the last few months researching what to do. 
I booked the hotel room, made reservations at places we wanted to try. I made a list of all the sites I wanted to see. Every few weeks, I would check in with my husband to see if he'd asked off and bought the tickets yet. He would say he was waiting for the plane to get prices to go down. Three weeks ago, I reminded him once again, and he said he'd got off of work for the days, but had forgotten to get the tickets. He looked online and the tickets were close to one and a half thousand dollars each. He said he was going to wait some more to see if they go down. Last week, I asked if he'd bought them yet, and he said no. We looked again and the prices were still high. He said he wasn't willing to spend that much on them and asked how much money I would lose if I just cancelled everything instead. He offered to have a nice staycation instead. What a great alternative. I told him I wasn't willing to cancel everything because I spent so much time planning it. We argued and we didn't come to a conclusion. I wound up buying just one ticket for myself. And when I flew out on Saturday, I told him I was still going. And he acted all surprised that I didn't want to stay home with him. I am in New Orleans now, and he's blowing up my phone, saying that I'm a jerk for still going without him. He was trying to get a ticket to come too, but I told him if he came, he is getting his own hotel room because this is now my vacation away from him. Am I the jerk? Oh my God, maybe this is the same husband from the last post. I mean, Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. What What an idiot. Like, obviously you're not the jerk. It's just, it's just, what a clown. Everybody knows, by the way, that unless you get really, really lucky with some, some last minute prices to undesirable locations, plane tickets are pretty much always cheaper the further out from the date you are. It's just like a common, it's a common fact. Yeah, I know there's, there's times and there are deals when it's not the case, but the majority of the cases, that is the truth. So I don't really know what your husband was thinking there. Was he really after some last minute deal that was gonna save him probably like 10, $20 per ticket on what he would have got if he just paid for the tickets when you asked him the first time? No, he's just being lazy. That is the honest truth. And he's also not respecting the, the amount of time and, and effort that you spend into doing all the work for a probably really nice vacation. He's a clown and absolutely enjoy the holiday on your own. Am I the jerk for telling my sister it's her fault her son is being bullied? My sister, who is 33 years old, has two sons, Bracken, who is 13, and Neville, who's 11. My husband and I went to a basket raffle at our local library this past weekend with my sister, Bracken, Neville, Bracken's girlfriend, and my sister's husband. This raffle is held every year and has many local businesses and organizations donate baskets to help raise funds for the library. There are all sorts of baskets from free messages to gift cards to sports jerseys and so much more. Bracken got some tickets for all of the sports related ones. He plays baseball and has done this every year and he's been pretty successful in the past. Bracken then went around with his girlfriend. I was hanging out with my husband, sister, and rest of the family while looking at the baskets when Bracken and his girlfriend came back to us. Shortly after this, while still looking at the baskets, we saw some sciency baskets with projects and books for kids and adults. This type of stuff is what Neville likes. It was going fine until in that section, they had a few baskets that were aimed at girls in science slash STEM. When Neville saw the baskets, he called them stupid and started making some pretty awful comments about how girls are too dumb for science and that's why they needed special baskets. He made some more comments like, this is why robotics club is all boys. My husband and I just dismissed it, but we could see a few people giving us looks. And Bracken made a comment telling his brother Neville to shut his mouth. The raffle happened. Bracken won a lot, the rest of us didn't. On the car ride home, my hubby and I were asking each other where Neville could have learned that language, and we were stumped. Last night, I got a call from my sister, and she seemed stressed. She was telling me about how horrible Neville's first month of middle school was. She was telling me he was being targeted and bullied. I asked her to explain what happened, and she was just crying. I asked if she could give the phone to someone else. She gave it to Bracken, who told us that she wasn't telling the truth. He said that the kids were mocking Neville for what he'd said at the raffle. Bracken admitted that he had told his friends about it, who then spread it around to the sixth graders. Some of the kids in Neville's grade were calling him creepy and weird and were doing it to his friends as well, who defended his comments. My sister quickly grabbed the phone from him after. After she calmed down, she asked me what to do. I told her that this was on her and her fault for not correcting Neville's behavior. She said that she didn't know why he said it and said that she can't just take away his phone or friends when I mentioned both as a possible source. 
She just doubled down and said she needed to teach Bracken and his friends not to gossip. I told her she was being ridiculous and hung up. She tried calling back. I didn't pick up. Then I got angry texts. So am I the jerk? Yeah, look, I completely agree. You're definitely not being the jerk here. And it is definitely on your sister to, to teach her sons to not say stuff like that. Not believe stupid, archaic things like this. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. What she's saying at the end there, in saying that she needed to teach her other son and his friends not to gossip, that is absolute trash. If anything, Bracken is helping her out here. He's definitely helping Neville out. I mean, he's calling him out on his sexist remarks. That's what you want a brother to do. I don't know why you, as the mother, wouldn't be backing your son up on that one and saying to your other son, no, listen, you need to stop with this sort of stuff. Again, I'm not trying to like blame the mum for, for saying these things to him in the first place, but it is her her responsibility to, to make sure that she is, you know, looking after her son. And part of that is obviously monitoring the opinions that he has, the friends that he has, what he does online, and making sure that he knows that those sort of opinions are just ridiculous. Don't have them. Oh wow, just looking at a comment here. I thought this was going to be about bullying because she named her son Bracken. <laughs> I mean, it's completely irrelevant to the, to the post entirely, but yeah, fair enough. Any Brackens out there? Get in the comments. Big respect to you and your name. Am I the jerk for shutting down a girl's attempt to diagnose me with an eating disorder? I lost my left leg when I was very young from a hospital acquired infection. I have a prosthetic leg, which I use for walking, and another one for running and exercise. When I was on my parents' health insurance growing up, I got refitted regularly as I grew up. Now I'm too old to be on my parents' insurance, and while my company's insurance is considered very good, getting a new leg or getting adjustments for body weight changes is still expensive. I expect to be paying a fortune if I get pregnant. So I try my best to stay the same way. And if I gain some weight, I can immediately feel it becoming less comfortable to walk. Anyway, a friend's girlfriend and I were talking and she began remarking on how I'm not eating much. We were out to dinner and I was just having a soup and salad and everyone else was having baby back ribs. I stolen a few off my boyfriend's plate, but generally I was trying to eat light. I said I was trying to lose a few pounds and she immediately assured me that I was beautiful the way I was and I didn't need to lose weight. I told her, I know, but losing weight helps me with my mobility. She then began diagnosing me with an eating disorder, saying I must have a delusion. I was very heavy and having issues walking. I was fuming. She sounded super condescending and I blurted out that she had no business talking down to me about my weight, even if it was to tell me not to change it. The other people overheard and the girlfriend got really embarrassed and left with my friends soon after. Now, my boyfriend thinks that I should have explained why I need to keep my weight the same, but I don't think I should have to pull out my disability to get her to shut up. With long, loose pants, it's often hard to tell that I have a prosthetic leg. I don't know if she knew, but I didn't feel like justifying why my weight needed to stay the same. But am I the jerk for shutting down her attempts to diagnose me with an eating disorder? Ah. Uh, there we go. Um, pretty stupid one to end, to be honest. Why is this person commenting on you? I just don't understand. You're obviously right. And again, obviously not the jerk here. You do not have to tell anybody ever about your disability or explain it to them if you don't want to. Yes, I concede that it might have helped her to understand why you were doing what you were doing. But also, she has no right to even ask in the first place or even question it in the first place or comment on it. That is the truth. So it's completely up to you if you want to do that. It's also not up to your boyfriend to suggest that. It's up to you. It's your body at the end of the day. Now, with that being said, I do actually think if I was in this position, I mean, who knows, right? This woman could have had so many questions over the years about oh why are you eating this da, la, la. oh you got a prosthetic leg etc etc what happened so she's probably sick of it she is probably sick of it i think that personally i would give someone the benefit of the doubt and explain it to them the first time but that is me sort of standing here without a disability that i've had to explain to people over the years so i don't know if, if that's the case but i think if someone was was genuinely asking me legitimately oh by the way, why are you doing that? You look in good shape. You know what's going on. How come you're doing that? Then you can actually explain to them, oh no, it's not really because I'm out of shape. I just have to stay in this shape. Otherwise I'll get extremely uncomfortable. 
which is abnormal, right? I think it's okay to explain once just so people understand, but I don't know, it probably does get really frustrating over the years. And the way that this person has asked it means that I probably wouldn't even want to explain it to them when they're saying, oh, you must have an eating disorder. Yeah, to be fair, at that point, I'm shutting down and I'm saying, nah, I'm not explaining anything to you. You don't deserve any sort of explanation. Am I the jerk for giving a fake name at Starbucks? All right, so I am a 22 year old man and I think this whole thing is ridiculous, but my girlfriend is really angry at me. So here we go. I don't like giving my real name at places like Starbucks and similar stores where they shout out your name when the order's ready. I can't tell you why. I have a normal, reasonably common name that I like fine enough, but for some reason it majorly creeps me out when a barista shouts my name through a room full of strangers. I guess it's just some harmless quirk I have, at least to me. So whenever I'm at a store where they want your name, I say it's Tom. That's literally the name I use. Nothing inappropriate or outlandish, just plain Tom. I know I am meant when they call it as I always use the same one so there's no confusion or anything. They yell Tom, I get my drink or my food and it's never been a problem until now. A couple of days ago, I was at Starbucks with my new girlfriend and ordered our drinks while she sat down. I gave them my fake name as always and when our order was ready and they shouted Tom, I went and got it. My girlfriend was a bit confused and asked me if I went and got someone else's order, which is fair enough. So I explained the thing to her and thought that was that but she got really angry. She says it's really disrespectful to lie like that and that I am making everybody in the store out to be creeps who will do something bad if they know my name, which is not at all what's happening. I just don't like when they yell my real name, so I found a harmless way to get around that. But she can't see it like that. She thinks I'm a pathological liar who is way too suspicious of everyone and I need to stop. I really can't see the problem she has. It's really not that deep. I don't think I'm hurting anyone, or am I? So yeah, I'm really confused by her reaction and asking myself if I'm the jerk after all, for some reason I can't comprehend. So Reddit, am I the jerk for giving a fake name? No, in my opinion, you're not. It's not as if you're giving a stupid name, right? If you were taking the mick and just trying to be funny and cool and trendy, then I say, uh, yeah, you are in the wrong because there's no need to do that. However, nobody is getting offended by the name Tom, are they? That's completely fine. Your reasoning is completely fine. If you fully explain this to your girlfriend and she doesn't get it, then suck her off, mate. She's clearly weird. It's very easy to understand why you do this. And by the way, it's fine if she doesn't agree. Your reasoning makes sense. If she doesn't understand that, that's on her. Am I the jerk for telling my vegan sister she can't serve only vegan food at our family reunion? Hey all, I'm genuinely torn about this and I need some clarity. Every year, our family has a reunion where different members host. This year, it's my younger sister's turn. She's been vegan for about three years and is quite passionate about it. We all respect her choices and make sure there are a good variety of vegan options whenever we have family gatherings. When she announced she'll be hosting, she also said that the entire menu would be vegan to align with her beliefs and that it's a chance for the family to try something different. Some family members were excited, but others, including many of the older folks, were pretty upset and felt like they were being forced into her lifestyle, even if just for one meal. I spoke to her privately and I asked if she'd be open to including a few non-vegan dishes for those who aren't keen on a full vegan menu. She got quite defensive, saying this was her chance to showcase veganism and that for one meal, everyone can give it a go. Now, I respect her beliefs, but I also think that forcing an entire family to adopt her choices, even if just for one meal, isn't fair. She's now upset with me for not being supportive and says I'm not respecting her choices. So, am I the jerk? I mean, yeah, you definitely are. How can you just not have one vegan meal? once like she's completely right what you're doing pretty much by saying this is that you just don't really respect vegans Uh, surely is that not what you're saying because it's just like you just can't be bothered to do it for just one meal it's not as if you're being forced to eat food that you don't want to eat by the way like it's not as if you're a vegan and your sister is forcing you to eat meat or something that would be wrong this is fine like all the stuff that you're going to eat is probably part of your normal diet anyway and why not just embrace it and say oh this is really cool you know let's kind of understand what my sister's cooking is like to a more deeper level and see if i like this food crazy am i the jerk for making my oldest pay back a three thousand dollar dress that she ruined my oldest bethany who is 16 has a step sibling maria who is 14. bethany and i are white while my husband and maria are mexican descents they've been in each other's lives since they were six and seven and overall the relationship has been good 
until recently. Maria's quinceanera is coming up and my husband and his ex-wife took her to get her dress. The dress and other additions came to around $3,000. My daughter has been very jealous of the whole party. I've informed her it is part of the culture, just like when she had a huge sweet 16 party with her friends. I spent more time with her to try to make her feel better about it and got her own much cheaper dress for the party. The party is supposed to be in two weeks, but my daughter, after an argument with Maria about the TV, scribbled Sharpie all over the expensive dress and ripped the back. Long story short, everyone was fuming. I gave money to my husband and his ex to try and get a new dress ASAP. I informed my daughter that she will need to get a job and pay back the full price of the dress as punishment. We got in a huge argument over it with my daughter saying the whole situation isn't fair that I'm choosing Maria and being a huge jerk. So, am I being a huge jerk? Now, some of you might be thinking that um, $3,000 is a lot of money for a 14, almost 15-year-old girl. However, you've got to learn these things, don't you? You simply have to. Now, look, there's an argument to say that you don't want to put a young teenager in, in debt or, you know, a serious amount of debt. But, surely, after doing that and working to, to make $3,000, she will never ever do something like this again and will understand that her actions have repercussions so yeah it's a lot of money but it's it's her damage that she caused so yeah she she owes the money oh sorry i just realized that your daughter is 16 maria is is 14 15 she's done it to someone that's younger than her as well i mean that's awful she's getting jealous of of a, of a younger half sister it's a bit weird isn't it now that i've realized that she's actually 16 yeah she's definitely old enough to to have this sort of punishment put on her ultimately it's not even a punishment she owes the money simple as that am i the jerk for telling my husband i find him disgusting and i want us to sleep in separate beds my husband and i welcomed our second child four months ago with having a new baby i'm extra cautious about germs and cleaning this got me thinking about my husband's shower routine he would take a shower in the morning and go off to work he's a chemist so mostly desk job but sometimes he walks outside from one building to the next they're less than a block away we live in humid hot florida so of course that adds some inevitable perspiration to the equation he's also a manager so he deals with people all day long i've tried to bring up the subject of him taking a quick shower when he gets home from work or even just before bed he says that he does not need to take another shower since he showered in the morning I try to explain that I don't feel comfortable with him laying in the bed because I lay our baby there sometimes and I feel like the bed sheets are dirty by him laying on them. Same with our comforter. No, the baby sleeps in a bassinet safely next to me, but during the day I will lay him on the bed while I do chores around him, like folding laundry, etc. I realize that everybody has their own routines, but I've washed my hair in the morning, showered and gone through the day. At the end of it, I'm feeling dirty, grimy, and I'm in need of a shower before bed. How could he be okay with having gone through the whole day and not feel like he should shower? I finally told him I'm not comfortable with him laying in bed dirty, so he should sleep in the guest room. I have OCPD, so it's really hard for me to not have things be the way I feel they should be in my mind. In my mind, it's disgusting for him to lay in bed dirty, but what do you guys think? Am I the jerk? Sorry, saying that you have OCPD is not a, that's not an excuse. That's just, that's just, sorry, it isn't. A lot of people have that. That's not OCD. That's just liking things done the way that you like them in, in order, which the majority of people like. I mean, maybe I'm getting that wrong. I, you know, I'll have a quick look at what OCPD really is, but I would say myself that I have that. And you can't say, no, you have to have two showers a day because I have OCPD. That's insane. The primary difference is that OCD includes obsessions and compulsions while OCPD does not. That's kind of what I think. Like OCPD is more of just a, a preference, really. OCD is you you are characterized by intrusive thoughts. So having OCD is one thing. That is a you know a mental disorder. Having OCPD and liking things done the way that you like them. I mean, come on. You can't force a man to have two showers a day. I have a shower once a day in the evening and that's it personally i don't really understand the morning shower banter i know a lot of people do you want to get up but you want to get fresh for the day maybe maybe you disagree let me know in the comments down below really interesting discussion there about the the benefits of showering at different times of the day that is what i love to bring to you guys on this channel but um nonetheless the way you've gone about this and, and telling your husband that you find him disgusting because he only wants to shower once a day yeah pretty crazy also why not just put your kid somewhere else if it's that much of an issue there, there are workarounds here you don't have to say i find you disgusting sleep in another bed am i the jerk for kicking out my girlfriend and her son after she invited her ex into our home me and my girlfriend Sara, have been together for four years she has a son nathan who is nine with her ex mark 
Sarah has full custody of Nathan, with her ex having scheduled visitations one weekend of every month. Sarah and Nathan moved in with me a little over a year and a half ago, and from my perspective, it was a little rocky at first. I've always been pretty protective of my space, so making room for two other people was difficult for me. When Sarah moved in with me, we agreed that the visitations for Mark would be held in our apartment as long as I'm home. The main reason I wanted this is because I don't know Mark that well, and I don't really want him wandering around our apartment without me there. When we proposed this idea to Mark, he was fine with it. Now moving on to the real issue. Three weeks ago marked four months since Mark's last visit. So I'd ask Sarah when he was planning on visiting Nathan. My girlfriend replied by shrugging her shoulders and telling me she'd ask. She never followed up with it. So a few days ago, I asked when Mark's next visit was and Sarah said she'd tell me when she knew. Nathan was in the living room but had apparently overheard us and shouted something along the lines of Dad was here last weekend, remember? Sarah's face immediately dropped and when I asked what Nathan meant, she wouldn't give me a direct answer. Eventually, she ended up telling me that for the past two visits, Mark had been to our apartment when I was working. When I accused her of going back on our agreement, she kept telling me this was her home too and she could invite whoever she wanted and that it was fine because she was here and watching. I told her that was besides the point and she violated my trust. It blew up into a huge argument which ended in me telling her to get out of my apartment. She packed up and left with Nathan. Last I heard, she was staying with her parents. I've gotten several messages from both Sarah and her parents calling me a jerk for kicking her and Nathan out of their home for something so small. She's even been blasting me on Instagram and Facebook about how horrible I am to do this to her. It's got me thinking that I might be the jerk, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Am I? No, you're definitely not. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You had an agreement, a verbal agreement, sure, but an agreement with, with your partner and she's gone against it simple as that you're allowed to get angry at that like she's been lying to your face for a few months it's terrible form and yeah i kick her out too i think that's completely fair i really do i don't think there's much more to say than that i think importantly as well you said that it's your apartment that they've moved into now look, obviously you're in a, in a relationship and and by you saying that you are kind of you know cohabiting and it has to be their apartment as much as it's yours and well definitely your girlfriend's as much as it is yours but you do own it at the end of the day it is yours so if there is some sort of conflict and and it, it comes to you as, as to a decision as to what you want to do in terms of your living space and if you don't feel comfortable living with with your girlfriend at this moment in time then you can say sorry you need to move out i'd like you can't be the jerk for, for kicking her out sorry and look it sounds as if she can go to her mum's for a bit as well but it's not ideal she's been lying to your face for a few months Get a gun. Am I the jerk for not fighting for my daughter to be valedictorian? My daughter's school did not choose her to be valedictorian for graduation, and she is still salty about it. Her high school normally goes with the highest grade point average, but it can be between the top five students if one demonstrates high academic achievement, like winning a competition. My daughter was the leader of and won a national robotics competition, and being the top one to two students, she was sure she would get valedictorian. But the school broke away from their criteria by choosing a girl who'd been in a car crash caused by a hit and run driver. The girl wasn't badly injured, but her mum died from the accident and she went on to finish the year with good grades. She wasn't in the top five students and only took one AP class, whereas most previous valedictorians came from the IB or full AP course load. My son was valedictorian four years prior and also did full IB. So my daughter was really angry when she found out because she felt like it was unfair and also thought it was racist because kids and parents have been complaining that only Asian students ever got the award. According to her, the last eight years, it was always an Asian who had won. And while my daughter is half Asian, so is my son, the school was trying to find a non-Asian to appease the families. She said she would have been okay with the other five top students winning, but to give it to someone with just above average grades when the criteria was about academics made her feel like she and the other five, which according to her were all Asians, were discriminated against. I don't know if this is true and I understand why it's unfair and even agree with it to an extent, but the girl lost her mother and still finished the year with good grades and that should be recognized. Also, the valedictorian has been made public, and if my daughter tried to get it overturned, it would make her look like a sore loser. 
I did explain all of this to her and I told her that she was going to MIT already with a partial scholarship and everybody knew she was smart. She needs to accept sometimes that unfair things happen. She was extremely angry at me for not going to the principal about this. And my wife was also angry because she felt like the school discriminated against our daughter. She's now in her first semester at MIT. And while she likes it, she says that most people in her classes were valedictorians in their high schools. And she feels like she was robbed when she worked so hard. I thought she'd forget about it but she seems to still be angry and not as close to me as before. So am I the jerk for not talking to her school about this when I could? That right there is called life. Life is not fair. It sounds like she deserves to be valedictorian. Fair play to her. She worked very hard and I can fully understand from her perspective that it's quite sad to to not get this. And yeah, maybe it's a little bit strange that she's still going on about this despite the fact that she's now in college and surely you would have thought she got over it but moved on to better things but, but clearly not however i can i can understand that she's worked very hard for something that she feels like she's owed and she hasn't got it and that's that's irked her but she's not the first person that's that's happened to and she won't be the last not just with valedictorians but in life i'll be honest i don't know how important or meaningful valedictorians are in american high schools you'll have to let me know in the comments down below but I mean, we have something similar, I think, which is like head boy, head girl in in school. And people really want to get that sort of stuff. But sometimes they don't, even though they deserve it. And by the way, the person that did actually get it is pretty astonishing, right? I would say they deserve it more than Opie's daughter, to be completely honest. Like, your mum was killed. You were in the car, yet you still do really well in school. Is that not more deserving of someone that had a nice, normal life? Their parents are still alive and they did better academically? I don't know. It's a tough spot, but I think for this argument, it seems reasonable. The only thing that I could say was that if you really wanted to, you could ask a question about the the Asian thing and the discrimination. I mean, I don't see how it can be, but who knows? I mean, we're missing context here. I think really your daughter is clutching at straws a little bit with that, but who knows? I mean, there could be more to that. But yeah, I don't think that's reason enough to say that, no, you should have really gone to the school and and protested and said, what's going on here? The fact of the matter is someone else won it. And that's, that's life. I mean, can you imagine though, if you did protest, how bad that would look? You're protesting against someone who's, I mean, I don't know why, it's not not funny. It's kind of funny. As in like the the irony of the, the whole situation. You protesting against a girl that did so well after her mum was killed in front of her about her being a valedictorian because your daughter got better grades. How bad would that look? So yes, good thing that you didn't do that. Let's be completely honest. And uh, yeah, as I said, that is life. Am I the jerk for refusing to be paired up with the Down syndrome kid? I am a 16 year old girl and I'm in a special class in my high school for special needs students. It's not purely for disabled kids, but mostly for people 16 to 20 who had drug or mental health problems that led them to dropping out of school. There's one kid in the class, Daniel, who is 17, and he has Down syndrome. I have an autoimmune condition that makes me miss a lot of school because I'm in hospital and I use a cane or a walker. Our class coordinator, Brenda, likes to get us to do different activities during the day because our classes are structured differently from the rest of the school. Mostly trying to get us to socialize by doing activities like board games or helping out in the school canteen. Daniel and I are the only two physically disabled students in the class. And because of this, we keep getting paired up. I hate it. He's really rude to me and will do stuff like take my cane and give it to his other friends as he thinks it's funny. I've told Brenda that he won't quit harassing me and I don't want to be left alone with him. But she just tells me I'm being prejudiced against his condition and lying about it because he has downs and not a mean bone in his body. I'm now refusing to do anything with him and I walked out of the kitchen when we were both rostered. So am I the jerk for this? Everyone keeps saying that people with downs don't know how to be mean, So I don't know if this is actually discriminatory. Okay, well, thankfully, the title isn't as bad as it sounds then with the context provided. When I first read that title, I thought, oh my goodness me, that is awful. OP is obviously the jerk. But with context now, it's clear that you're not. I mean, first of all, people with Downs definitely know how to be mean. Second of all, it sounds like this kid is just horrible to be around and to be honest, is bullying you. And thirdly, why isn't Brenda doing her job and listening to you? That's insane. Like, she's just doing a terrible job there, ultimately. If I were you, I would go straight to your principal, explain what's happening, and uh, yeah, try and get the justice you deserve, because this is ridiculous, and of course, 
You are not the jerk. Am I the jerk for telling my stepdaughter that her birthday is cancelled? My husband has a seven-year-old daughter from his previous relationship. My husband and his ex had a bad breakup since she was also in a relationship with someone else and thought that my stepdaughter was his. She broke things off with my husband. He and I were already in a relationship when he had to take a paternity test and found out he was her father. Her mum also has a problem with me because she thought that my husband would get back together with her. The ex has three other kids with her partner. When she was pregnant with her third one, my stepdaughter came to live with us because there was no room for her at her mum's house. At the time, we had a lot going on. We just bought a home and we're in the middle of renovations. We stayed in the house to save money. It wasn't a livable situation for a four-year-old, but we decided to take her in anyway. We went through tough times with her during these three years and everything just became stable. Our home is finished and financially we are doing very well. I am currently five months pregnant and though it wasn't a planned pregnancy, my husband and I are happy about it. However, my stepdaughter is not very excited about a new sibling. She even asked my mum if we would send her away now that we're having a baby. Someone at her school told her that she might be sent away as we wouldn't care about her with a new baby in the house and she's worried that everything will change again. My husband and I decided to throw a big birthday party for her to make her feel special. Everything has already been planned and paid for by my in-laws and parents. Her birthday is on the 22nd and her party is on the 25th. She had her weekend with her mum, and usually she gets dropped off at my in-laws home, so I'm never in contact with the ex. This Sunday, the ex dropped her off at our home and yelled at me about the party. She said a bunch of horrible things about my family and that she would send people to disrupt the party if my family was there. My stepdaughter asked if her party would be cancelled because that's what her mother said. I told her that honestly, we might have to cancel it because we want to make sure it's safe and fun for everyone. I told her we would still celebrate her birthday no matter what. Now, my husband is a bit upset that I told her. I just wanted to be honest with her in case we did have to cancel the party due to her mum's threats. Her mum has done this before and I just didn't want her to feel disappointed again. I, of course, didn't mean to upset her. I just think it's awful to lie to her. And then we do end up having to cancel. All the party does end up being disrupted. I don't know. He told me he understood but was still upset. My stepdaughter is still very distraught. I just didn't want her to feel disappointed. So, am I the jerk? See, I don't really know about this one, to be honest, guys. I get it. You want to be honest with your children and and you don't want to give them false promises however i feel like in this situation although i understand your point yeah there's a chance that this doesn't happen surely the most likely thing is that you get this dispute sorted and the party will happen or you'll just have it anyway and you know hire some security or something i mean what are they really gonna do you've got to have the party that you can't you can't live in fear of, of other people that you don't like coming into your life and ruining things I don't think. Anyway, all that to say that I'm not sure that you had to tell her this at this moment in time. Yes, if closer to the event, it it was looking like it was going to be a serious safety concern. I think you tell her then. But at this moment in time, I don't know. She's obviously devastated, as you can probably expect. But uh, yeah, I just don't know if you had to tell her right now. Ultimately, you're just going to be vindicating her mum if you do cancel this. Why don't you just say to her, look, we're going to celebrate your birthday no matter what don't worry about that there's just a little thing the adults need to sort out simple as that don't say your party's not going to happen to be honest i'm not even sure that you believe that right surely there's a good chance the party will happen it feels like quite a glass half empty mentality to be honest and if you're that concerned about safety call the police i mean to be honest the thing that stands out is this girl's life is kind of sad because of this situation her own mother didn't even want her and she seems like she still has so many abandonment issues i mean that's a bit expected just very very sad something needs to happen not just with this party but with this family as a whole am i the jerk for telling my sister-in-law how much my brother owes me when she tried to tell my nephews that i was an example of why they should stay in school i am a steam fitter and i work a lot of overtime i work a lot of overtime because i hate working so i usually work like a madman for seven months of the year and take the other five off My brother is a teacher and the first person in our family to graduate from university. I've always been proud of him and he's actually pretty awesome. He married another teacher and they have two boys. 
His wife comes from a family of educated people. I think most of her relatives are college educated. My wife and I are expecting our first child, and we had my parents and my brother's family over so we could announce it. I spent the day getting my smoker going early, and we set up for what I thought was going to be a nice visit and announcement. Full disclosure, my wife and I currently live in a manufactured home, a mobile home. We keep it tidy and it has city water and power. I'm not sure why, but my sister-in-law decided that before dinner was the perfect time to tell her children that they needed to stay in school if they didn't want to end up like me and my wife. I saw red and was about to let her have it, but my mum and brother told her that she was being rude and that she needed to apologize. She didn't though. She doubled down and said that we were doing okay for the two of us, but what if we wanted a child? She just didn't want her kids to end up like us. I told my brother he needed to tell her to shut up or they needed to leave. She said that she was just thinking about our future and our children's future. I told her then that my kids would probably be okay as soon as her husband paid me back for his education that I paid for. My brother has no student loans because I paid for his education. I told her that my current house wasn't great, but that the construction across the road was our new house that we were having built since my wife and I own the quarter section of land that our trailer is on. I then told her that since I make more money than her and my brother combined while only working a little over half a year, I think we'll be okay. I would not actually call in the loan to my brother. I know that they are living just within their means and do not have the money to pay me back. She got embarrassed and they left. I told my parents about the baby and we had a load of leftovers since four people left. My parents, my wife and my brother all said that I didn't need to lose my cool with her and that she meant well. My mum said that I was vulgar to point out how much money I make. I don't know. I hated myself for pointing out that my brother is poor compared to me, but I didn't start the conversation. Wow, let me tell you guys, uh, the way that you've reacted in this OP is exactly the same way that I'd react. It's all good and everyone wants to be humble. And if you do really well for yourself, that's great and all. You don't have to flaunt it. Um, I'm, I'll be very happy just chilling out if, if people think I earn less money than I do. That is so fine with me. However, when you're getting kind of personally attacked and other people in your family are kind of belittling you and, and making your their children feel a certain way about you and, and that sort of stuff, and also kind of really being quite degrading and devaluing the, the life that you lead right now, that I couldn't stand for. I'd have to say, no, no, no. You're just, you're just missing things here, guys. Like, come on. And also, the point about your brother's loan. Yeah, I mean, that's such an easy win. And it just completely kills your sister-in-law's entire argument right there and then. Yeah, it's, it's kind of jerky to bring up. But she's the one that started this in the first place and is ultimately just being really horrible to you for no reason. Am I the jerk for telling my 14-year-old daughter that she's average looking? I am a 39-year-old woman. And I have a very insecure 14-year-old daughter who has a depressingly unhealthy obsession with her looks. She often avoids mirrors and pictures because her mood instantly drains when she sees herself. She constantly asks her father and me if we think she's pretty, and we always tell her the same thing, that she's a beautiful girl inside and out. As I understand how most teenage girls are with their body image, as I was one at some point myself, my daughter's vanity is not only becoming exhausting to those around her, but I fear it's causing her to slowly lose herself. Yesterday, I decided to sit her down to chat with her about this, to discuss what's bothering her, and to see if she's willing to visit a therapist. She told me she didn't want to talk about it, but as her mother, of course, I'm going to be worried about her, so I insisted. She finally agreed. A few minutes into this conversation, she asked exactly this. Mum, I want you to be completely honest with me. That means no sugarcoating. The kids at my school think I'm ugly and say I look like a bird because I have a big nose. Do you really think I'm beautiful or are you just lying? I am an honest person, so I gave her the most honest answer I had. I told her she was average looking like most people in the world are and that it's not a bad thing to have an average appearance. She immediately got up and left without saying a word and just went into her room for the rest of the night. Today, she's been cold and distant. And I think I upset her, which wasn't my intention at all. So, am I the jerk? Okay, here we go. We have our first out and out jerk of this episode. You could argue that the woman who told her daughter or her stepdaughter that, that her birthday might be cancelled was a jerk as well. I think she was, but not an out and out jerk. I don't think this was malicious. Whereas this, I, what? 
what could you possibly be gaining from this? It is not your role as a parent to ever say to your kid, yeah, you know, I've got to be honest, you are pretty average looking and just completely destroy their ego. Like you have to build your kid up, right? Obviously, you don't want them to become spoiled, but with everything else going on that, that she said, kids in school calling her ugly and stuff, you saying she's average looking, how's that ever going to help? You've got to build her up. The, the kids at school and other people in her life are always going to, on the whole, kind of put her down. So to get to this equilibrium, you as a family member and a parent have to be doing this as everyone else is doing this, surely. Because if everyone else is doing this and then you're also doing this, then we're going down here aren't we? Now for the audio listeners, I'm doing some very strange movements with my hands. That's all you need to know. I'm an honest person, so I'll sit my child down and tell them how ugly they are. You're the jerk. Am I the jerk for not telling my boyfriend I own the building we live in? When I was 18, my dad gifted me a house with two stories. I am extremely thankful. We're not upper class, but my dad bought this house for a cheap price a long time ago. It was his grandmother's cousin's house. I know that this was an extreme privilege and I am forever grateful for this. The layout of this building is like an apartment, but it's a house. So basically each story has its own separate entry, its own kitchen and bathroom. I live upstairs while I rent out the downstairs. My boyfriend, who is 25, moved in with me about three months ago and we've been together for six months. I've not asked him for money, neither for utilities or to pay me any rent. The only thing he contributes to is groceries. We split them 50-50. I've not brought up that I own the building as it's not something I tell many people. If people ask me, I of course tell them that I own it. But if they just assume that I'm a renter, then they can believe that. The topic of a landlord, the renter downstairs, or the owner of the building has not been something that we've talked about. This last Tuesday, the renter below came up to tell me that her freezer has stopped working. I answered the door and my boyfriend heard us talking, I suppose. I went downstairs to take a look and we came to the conclusion that she would buy a new one, send me the receipt and I'd give her the money. She was very grateful for the solution. When I went upstairs, my boyfriend asked if it could be fixed. I told him no, but she was going to buy a new one and I would pay for it. He looked at me like I was crazy and asked why the heck I would pay for her freezer. I told him that because I am her landlord and the freezer was there when she started renting, I would stand for the cost. He just asked me if I was serious to which I said I was. He began screaming at me, asking why the heck I would hold this information from him and that I was an evil person. I said I was sorry for not telling him, but I didn't think it would matter. He said he could not believe he was together with someone who was a landlord, that all of us just use people for money and that the only thing we people care about is money and would rather have people be homeless than offering affordable rent. The downstairs is one kitchen, one bath, and four other rooms. I charge $500 in rent. Oh my goodness, if you guys know how much I pay for rent in the UK, for much less than that, you'd be shocked. Nonetheless, let's carry on. I understand that many people have had trouble with landlords, but I try my best to be a good one. He demanded that I give him 50% of the money that I make from rent, or else I was just as bad as he thought. Was I really the jerk for not telling him? He hasn't talked to me since Tuesday and I've tried telling him that I'm truly sorry, but he doesn't answer me at all. Now, I think this story really is pretty similar to the previous one in which only at a certain point did a certain user, OP, want to speak about their wealth. Now, this one I feel like is a little bit different because it's not kind of wealth that, that you, OP, have, have created for yourself. Whether that means too much, I don't really know, but it, it, you can't really go around flaunting something that you didn't necessarily earn. I know it's, you say you're privileged, you're extremely privileged and you're very grateful. So I understand that you're not doing that, but there's a little bit of a difference there. However, no, you don't have to tell your boyfriend that you own the building that you live in. It's just, just how can that be relevant again? Like, like I get your point. You don't want to flaunt the fact that you own the building. You want to just be sensible. He's just clearly got a, a weird thing against landlords. Personally, I don't really understand. I know a lot of people do hate landlords in general, but I kind of see it from a business perspective and just think that, you know, if you can make money from renting your flat or your house to other people, why wouldn't you do it? Yes, I know. Maybe the prices are a little bit too high, but also that is how the free market works. Let's, let's not go into economics here, but and if, if, if people are willing to, to pay that much, then why would you not put it at that price? That is my thought, you know. Shoot me in the comments down below. Your boyfriend is a disgrace. I think we can all agree. And actually, thinking about it now, if he had offered 
to pay you half the rent, then surely he would have known that the money was coming to you eventually, right? I'm sure you would have said that at some point because it would have, been, would have been a bit weird for you to just keep that money and then not tell him. That would have been a bit weird. So the fact that he doesn't know that you own the building means to me, I think, that he didn't offer to pay you half the rent. And one thing is for sure that he is living with you rent free. Um, so even if that was the case, he must have thought you were paying the entire rent. But yet he's the one that's angry at you for not disclosing this information. How does he deserve half of the tenant's money? Where is that argument or, or, or logic come from or lack thereof? Please reconsider this relationship, my friend. It's time to go. And uh, you are not the jerk, obviously. And now for our final Am I the Jerk post of this episode. Am I the jerk for telling my sister to stop saying I have pretty privilege and it's her fault she looks ugly? I have a sister who is 25. I'll call her Tessa. I'm just going to be blunt and say I look better than her. It's due to her not taking care of herself at all. When I was staying active, she was not. I spend my money to get skincare and keep my hair nice. She doesn't and she doesn't dress nicely either. She's always in sweats, even going somewhere nice. Overall, I just look better than her. She has the money to do these things, but she just doesn't. Now, every time I see her, she will comment something about the way I look. If I tell a story that turns out good for me, she will tell me it's because I am pretty and so on. I assume that she's jealous and I've talked to her about it. Now, I just passed my test to get my license for my job. I was telling the story at dinner and she told me that I only passed since I was pretty. This makes no sense. I had enough and told her to stop saying I have pretty privilege and that it's her fault that she looks ugly, not mine. She left the table after calling me the C word and my family is now split. I mean, to be honest, you could have even gone a little bit harsher and just called her fat because that is kind of what you're implying. Now, just calling her ugly, if it's true, there you go. There's a difference, isn't there, between like someone that has great genetics and it's just it is just a very good looking person because of their genetics and someone who keeps himself in good shape you know looks after themselves from a, a physical appearance but also from a you know just general well-being compared to someone that perhaps doesn't as much not saying that that's more pretty or not even though objectively it is okay contentious point there but you get what i'm saying you know people people in general will value one person person a as more pretty than than someone who doesn't look after themselves as much. That's not pretty privileged though, is it really? Because if you've worked on that and, and you know, it's not just like you were born with all that stuff and you compare it to someone that has a lot of DNA similar to you, but is just not in good shape and doesn't look after herself. It's not really pretty privilege, is it? It's just you look after yourself. Congrats. That is the reward that you get from, from keeping in shape and, and having a good skincare routine, I guess. I think really the whole point is that your sister just seems extremely insecure. I, again, as you said, that you, you passed your test to get your license for your job. How can that ever be due to pretty privilege? I mean, unless there's an interview there or something like it, it, that literally makes no sense. So clearly she's got an issue and she's just taking it out on you. And ultimately, if she's being that insufferable, which clearly she is, then yeah, it gets to the stage where you have to call her out and I think you did the right thing. You're definitely not the jerk. So there we go, guys. That is going to do it for this one. Those were the very best posts and stories from r slash am I the jerk of 2023. What a year it's been. I feel like that subreddit has completely exploded in the past 12 months and rightfully so. It's definitely one of my favorite and I hope you guys enjoyed the very best that it had to offer this year.